power can be found in any number of places. Scientists will tell you that it comes in Newtons. Gamers will say that it can be found in silky skills. We will say that the power lies in real thrills. In the play with perfect ping. In the runes and crystals. In every frag and gank. In your personal winnings. Lock and load for PGL Arlington. Good morning from Arlington here as we kick off another day of group stage. Lacoste joining me as always as we get into LGD against Outsiders. Uh, this should be a hype one. Uh, you and me we were talking the other day, you know, who might be able to take the game off PSG LGD? Uh, Sonic, Sonics definitely <laughs> didn't come up when we did that talk, but I said, you know, Outsiders, I think they might be able to take the game off PSG LGD. It's uh, very difficult considering how strong PSG LGD is at the, every single role. Their drafts, they always make sense. Like, I, I think this is the example of like perfect Dota, what Dota should look like. Yeah, it's always crisp, clean, there's very little sloppiness here. A, a small hiccup against Sonics, they did still go 1-1 one, one against them, but their first loss of the group stage so far. And we'll see you know, if, if that momentum has now halted or if LGD can pick themselves up. New day, new drafts, new games up against Outsiders as we can head finally, into the draft for game one of this best of two and get things underway. So, you know, Outsiders, they, they, they look good themselves, haven't they? Uh, they? They do, they do. They're top four right now in the group, PSG LGD. Uh, having that first place, but not guaranteed uh, the upper bracket yet. Remaining. The only team who is uh, guaranteed is Team Aster, but they're from uh, Group B. Okay. So we need to see how this Radiant one's going to be played team. out. Uh, I want to see Outsiders going for something a little different PSG than what they LGD. usually do. Because you know that PSG LGD, PSG they do the research. LGD. It's very difficult to draft uh, against them. And uh, look oh, at yes. what PSG LGD's got. Uh, they are taking the one from OG's book. Uh, Marcy plus a lone druid sidekick on Radiant bear. Uh, OG back. usually does pair it up with Io to have even more attack speed and uh, have uh, some extra buffs on top of that. But... Uh, yeah, so far so good. Great, I, I love this. It, it's a very strong opening. It's it's so strong. Yeah, I mean, uh, OG the ones to kind of exploit this at this tournament. We saw LGD in Riyadh oh, do it on uh, on LGD day one, I believe. They pulled out this lone druid, which we haven't seen Arme play. I think we looked at the stats for for two years or something, and they pulled it out of the bag. Had some exceptional victories with it, and like you say, with a, with a sidekick on the lone druid bear, incredibly potent. While o outsiders, Doom and Dazzle, two of their favored heroes. Doom still reasonably flexible, right? They played across a number of roles, and Dazzle there is a, a very, very solid support. If we look at through Five the numbers, remaining. Doom is not having a good time this tournament. Was it like thirty percent uh, win rate or something? Twenty-five oh, over sixteen games. Uh, I think uh, teams did realize how to play against it, and also not allow Doom to get to that point where he has a Refresher, uh, Shiva's Blink, uh, Shard, maybe even Aghanim Scepter on top of that. Uh, uh, becomes very difficult to play in the late game and um, yeah, be able to like split up the fight, have a decent amount of healing. Uh, if you talk about like one of the better heroes against Doom, I'd say Vyvern is that hero because you do have a heal. You do have ways of just buying time for the rest of the team so they're not able to catch up and kill Ten Doom seconds, target. Really? Well, yeah, if someone gets doomed, you curse, you run away, yes. you heal them up. But I, I, yeah, I'm thinking seconds, back to the position one and two Doom. I, I think they have not seen that much success, but we did see Collapse play Doom in the off lane against the Lone Druid in particular and have some very good success because of Infernal Blade against the Bear, right? It's insane. Even level one Infernal Blade deals a ton of damage to Bear. As uh, time progresses, one that's maxed out, uh, it gets uh, even more difficult, but 
at the later stages of the game, you can't just sit there and then try to attack the bear with the infernal blade. <laughs> like, it's not. It's not your job. It's gonna hit you first, kill you first. That bear does a tremendous amount of damage with that, that Mask of Madness, Deso, Basher, AC, all of those right-click attack damage items we see coming in towards him. Bands coming out from outsiders, the Beastmaster and the Pango, removing a lot of the zoo there, along with the Chen, who is definitely one of the hot heroes of this tournament, up at like 70-80% win rate, remaining. as TA, Bat, and DP, the, the removals from LGD. Some focus on GPK. Batrider has been on the rise lately, where the hero has seen more play from the offlane. We did see some Batrider from South America during Stockholm Major, but other teams didn't experiment uh, too much with it, and now we he see it uh, more often. LGDs. Oh, a Tusk. I was wondering where this hero was the past couple of days. We've seen Earth Spirit pop back up. Uh, a lot of double ranged supports being drafted as well, but Outsiders, still a fan of the Tusk. So what is it going to be? Hakuda Dazzle, Tusk for Yamich. And this Doom still yeah, potentially flexible, but I would like to see that in the hands of DM, leaving, of course, GPK and Ramsey's heroes. Five That's the last two remaining. to be picked up for their draft. Tusk, that does give them ability to kill the bear when they group around, and also gives them ability to kill Roshan. Because right now with Dazzle, Doom, like Dazzle oh, yeah. does provide you with some minus armor and sustain, but other than that, lineup... Uh, doesn't look too good at killing Roshan compared to PSG LGDs. Like, these two heroes can solo kill Rosh. Is, is this, I mean, it's, it's early in the draft, but I'm just thinking about Doom and the creeps he's picking. Do we still want to see that kind of blink Centaur War Stomp, or is, you know, like an Ogre Ice Armor against the Lone Druid Bear? Is that going to be useful for them? Uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Ogre Ice Armor, armor, especially in the laning stage, if you can get that. This is... Uh, one of the creeps. We, as we've seen, uh, who was it? It was uh, Solo. Remaining. Uh, no, it was Batrider against the Satar Purge creep. Five ah, right. Remaining. Yeah, where you like, oh, you got that creep. Uh, I think the same thing could happen here if Doom gets the Ogre Vampire Mage. It's like a hidden counter. You don't think about it until it until it comes out and happens. Yeah, some quick thinking there. It was Fly on the Chen, They're saving his Arteezy. Cottle and Tiny for LGD now, though, so this, this Tiny can have so much mana pumped into him by the Keeper. ESG but what, what are the roles looking like? Admiral for Conker. Marcy? Mi is this a mid-Tiny for nothing to say? Hmm. Is there a five Marcy? Considering that Outsiders picked Kunkka, they also want to keep this Keeper of the Light uh, potentially out of the mid lane, because mm. Kunkka does work so well. You're forced Ten Keeper of the Light to buy like second, third item BKB, which he does not want to buy, Five and I, th I think it might be mid-tiny instead. Looking at the... I, I like how PSG LGD approach the draft against Dazzle, against Snowball save. You can toss people back, you can dispose them, so he's not going to be able to close the gap and uh, get those saving um, saving spells off, which uh, also blinding light as well. If you yeah. push them back, <laughs> a savage roar. Uh, PSG LGD, they're on to something. There's so many like displacement and forced movement abilities there. Uh, yeah, against, like you say, against X Mark, against Ice Shards. These Radiant ways that outsiders kind of want to trap people or drag them back. You do have that maneuverability from LGD to save people. You know, not just casting spells on enemies, but the ability to cast Toss and Dispose on allies as well. And Juggernaut out. Removing that Ramsey's hero. And outsiders. And we, we're looking at the Arme Lone Druid. You know, like you said, tiny, probably in the hands of nothing to say. Five is, uh, seconds remaining. Yeah, Jin Q Marcy always comes to mind. It feels like that's one of his heroes. So is it ESG, maybe a Faith Bian as the last pickup for them? Uh, yeah, looks like it, but uh, then you need to pair him up with most likely Coddle. Mm. Um, if it's Keeper of the Light, Lone Druid Lane, that doesn't scream synergy to me. I would love to see if they swap things around. Like Marcy still can be played by Jin Q, and they play the lane together. And then uh, Keeper of the Light can play that five, but he needs, I would say, Ten like remaining. a strength offlaner. But th they don't necessarily need an five initiator if Tiny's remaining. gonna be played from the mid lane because you do have that covered. Yeah, I mean maybe something. You know, what what can spam their spells consistently in the offlane? Because you're gonna you're gonna have the Chakra Magic being put into that offlane hero. And the Necro, pretty <gasps> solid ban there against Doom and Kunkka. Now the Visage being removed as well. That would have been a lot of damage with Illuminate, Soul Assumption. Also, Sidekick on birds mm. is pretty insane. Yeah, some nice stuff. Radiant Last pick for LGD. 
going to be the Winter Wyvern, so that's maybe a nothing to say hero or Cottlemere. Very versatile. We, we don't know where you know, three, four of these heroes are really heading. Hmm. It's difficult for outsiders here to read the draft and figure out what they need. I guess it's kind of set seconds, in stone yeah. what they have already. It's just a Ramsey's hero that won't know what his laning matchup seconds, opponents really. are going to be. PSG LGD camouflaged their draft really well. That's a good having word. Having multiple, uh, multiple heroes that can be played at multiple roles, so you don't know where they're going to go. I did mention Wyvern against uh, both Doom. Uh, not so good against Dazzle, but they Ooh, have multiple ways of uh, repositioning people. And PSG LGD, they will Ooh. need to show us what they're going to play. Outside is taking a leaf out of Thunder's book there, the Dazzle Kunker combo. Curious to see if he goes for that armlet heart rush that we saw coming out of Pakaz. With Dazzle, yeah, that was the same thing because yeah. uh, Grave amplifies healing, uh, the lower HP you have. I, I did look it up though. I, I was wrong on that. It doesn't. It says on the wiki it doesn't work with HP regeneration. It's only healing, like coming from healing sources. So it would be Shadow Wave and Urn and stuff like that. I don't believe the heart actually is buffed by the Grave amplification. Okay then. So nothing to say. We'll be playing Vivern off lane, Keeper of the Light, keep the distance with the Jin Q. A lot of kill potential, especially on Hakoda's Dazzle. And Lone Druid played by Ame, why we'll be playing Marcy. This is something that we mentioned. Marcy plus Lone Druid, uh, it, it's a good lane combo, where Lone Druid, Spirit Bear does deal a ton of damage, and uh, nothing to say on Vyvern. I want to see how this matchup works. I, didn't th I don't remember seeing it recently, but uh, should be Lina favorite in my opinion. Okay, yeah, the ability just to shove out waves, farm small camp, a little easier for GPK. But yeah, I think the Dazzle Conquer combo is it's primarily about the armlet with the grave, so you're, you're able to toggle that off, get low HP, have more of that heal amp, and of course Coco's Rum, super useful pre and post grave, especially when Dazzle gets that talent for the burst heal. There's so much sustain on Outsiders. Both Tusk Snowball, Dazzle Grave save, and these heroes do get tanky very early on. Yeah, they sure do. There's great ways to keep uh, you know, a glass cannon like the Lena alive. Curious to see what GPK goes item build wise because we've seen seen a bit of a shift away from the norm, right? No, you know, it's, it, the Yule's days are long gone. We're seeing much more of these boots of travel, BKB, going like Shiva's, Daedalus, things like that. Uh, you, you were talking about Somnus going for the Falcon Blade. We've seen other players buy Soul Ring to keep now. that mana Your regen going. On board. We're definitely going to keep our eyes open for GPK's Lena as we get ourselves out onto the map for Prepare game one. For yeah, Somnus definitely one of the more greedier Lina's I've seen in a while, going for Falcon Blade into Boots of Travel, then getting a BKB. I've seen Lina's, if it's necessary, if they want to hit the certain timing, go for Soul Ring straight into BKB. Yeah, it gives them that mana sustain and team fighting ability. Outsiders with a long smoke move, going all the way through that bottom jungle into Dire Triangle, it looks like. Yamich leading the charge. This, this takes me back. Reminds me of the, the Screen Squad days and the God Black days with these five-man smokes roaming into a target. Faith Beyond is spotted by the ward. Poison Touch comes, but a great avalanche from Jin Q. Tries to hold them back, but the ice shards are there. Trapping the couple inside for GPK. To come in and slay the Keeper. This one's gonna be a scorcher. Why? We'll get out of trouble. But this should potentially be dewarded. Because uh, uh, it was a... An aggressive move from Outsiders. Who got the first blood? Oh, it was Lina, of course. Of course it was, yeah. yeah. you want to give it to Lina anyway. And he is uh, bringing something, so instead of saving for bottle, getting full magic wand. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's nice. The battle begins. Well, he's going to be up against that. I went to Wyvern, right? Spamming out split blasts and keeping things going in that lane. Some good stats as well for GPK. A wander across into their side lanes as well. GPK in that mid, 1v1 against nothing to say. Very high-skilled players. Both of them trying to head into that bottle reasonably quickly. Like you said, probably Lena favored. Light Striker Ray and Dragon Slave. All right. This is security on the range creeps. Outsiders, aggressive try lane, keeping Doom here. Bottom alone against Tiny and Keeper of the Light. So DM will need to play a little bit uh, more careful here. 
Tusk in a tri lane is extremely strong. Once they hit level two with Torrent, uh, with an extra heal coming out from Dazzle, this is, uh, I'd say, good response from outsiders. Yeah, coming and playing aggressively into the bear. Hmm. Yeah, you might lose their Marcy here. The shards and the poison touch keep the damage going. And Yi, oh, he's completely out of position. Tries to rebound, does get it over the top of the bear. Well done by Arme to put his unit there, allowing the jump into tier one. Spirit Bear does have 490 move speed when you cast rebound. Oh, really? God, he's speedy, isn't he? Yeah, those numbers are gonna get to there for sure. It's yeah. 45 movement speed at all levels. That's pretty ridiculous. GPK, eight and one. Slightly out ahead, I've nothing to say, but does have another wave coming into him. If you can get all this CS, you'll have a, a nice nice lead up against the Winter Wyvern. I did spend quite a bit of his HP, his resources, just battling away with him. As it looks like LGD going to bring the tri lane top to match outside. Keeper of the Light trying to blast down that pull across. Denies coming in, potentially from outsiders. Range creep, the important right. one. And that's the one they get. They want to have Amis Laundruid against Doom. And because they TP first, outsiders will do the same thing. Ramses already bottom harassing both Bear and the Spirit Bear. And we can see. Two Ooh. people rotating immediately. Oh, they're coming into mid. The toss across. Jin Q makes a name for himself in the mid lane, allowing nothing to say to battle GPK. Pops the water rune and finishes off the Lena. With these lane rotations, they've left that, that mid lane wide open for a quick little move from the tiny. You need to pay attention because you don't know if they're swapping the lanes if someone's steeping or if he's uh, checking the rune potentially ganking so good move allowing nothing to say to give him a little bit uh, more advantage because this hero doesn't have that much damage doesn't have good attack animation compared to lena who does have more attack speed more damage so a bit difficult and they they needed to buff winter vibrant up somehow and with this rotation from tiny pretty top notch and now he's even uh, making some stacks with Tiny being very efficient. Because there's not much they can do right now. On the bottom lane, they have farm underneath the tower. Small camp is... Uh, that's not blocked. Uh, that's not it. Oh, yeah, just looking down bottom, but DM up at top. Struggling against this Cottle Marcy. Being disposed back into Illuminate. He's got Salve and Stick, though, and Boots arriving now, so he should be able to dodge some more of those blasts. Far more effective. Look how careful Am is playing. Farming that stack <laughs> that Jin Q made will resummon the bear. He is farming underneath the ward though, so outsiders are very aware of what's happening. Yeah, it's giving up the lane to the Kunkka though, isn't it? Free farm for Ramses. Oh mate, trying to get what little he can, not wanting to show his face down there. And uh, this is all working out for outsiders, you reckon? This tri lane that they're forcing. Oh, hang on a second, it's GPK getting found out by Yi again. Disposed back into the Winter Wyvern. Oh, God, up comes oh, in no, with the Shadow Wave, him. but Ooh. he doesn't save the Lena, and he's put himself in harm's way now. Back behind the Tier 1 and will be all right. But GPK dying twice in this laning stage. I was going to ask if Outsiders feel comfortable with this, the way the tri lane's working, but mid lane not going well for them. This is something that PSG LGD does extremely well, checking the four-minute runes and also ganking both of the supports. We're there, ready to take a fight. Uh, Hakoda, TP. Oh, this is gonna be another one. He, it's a level two dazzle. Well, yeah, LGD aren't laning bottom anymore. The bear comes in. Jinkyu and Yi both in that bottom jungle. They're roaming, they're ganking. Uh, this is the, the fastest I've seen a laning stage break down in a long time. What, two, three minutes in? We, we don't have this 2 1 2. We've got tri lanes. We've got roaming tiny, jungling lone druid. Yamage misses his shards in the mid lane. But you can see GPK very skittish. Trying to play defensively under his tower, not happy with the way that these LGD heroes are rotating into his mid lane all the time. And every single time lane is pushed, Ame will come back to the lane, farm it up while two supports holding hands together for PSG LGD and trying to make something happen. Well, the CS, of course, Lena is up at the top still, so even with a couple of deaths, out farming the Winter Wyvern just through that, that raw natural hero power. Kunker, 31 and 15. Stacking up the denies on Ramses. Got his phase boots done. And we can only expect that that armlet may be the, the BKB to come on afterwards. Nice 
Tracer first. Just that little bit of tankiness. Give him the potential to maybe play aggressively now. He's hit level six. And Lone Droid back up to top lane. Swapping things around again, LGD, as the Keeper of the Light is jungling at this point. That they're so good at adapting and finding these weird pockets of, of area on the map that they can call their own. Again, we're just not seeing this natural laning phase. They're being forced. There is no situation. laning phase. Yeah, there isn't. Laundroid back to the top lane, jungle keeper of the light, <laughs> while Y is blocking any kind of uh, aggression that outsiders could potentially make. The only one who's been consistent, I would say, was Kunkka. He started top, but TP'd bottom, and has been here for like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Outside of the mid laners who are just planted in the mid. Well, Hand of Midas, not too far away for DM. He's got his 33 last hits, devour level 3, so he's stacking up the gold, counting coins. LGD spread pretty wide across the map, and they've got some very defensive wards on their side of the river, but they've also got this one into the Radiant Triangle, and looking towards any potential stacks that are being built up for the Conquer. Obviously, one of the, the better heroes with Tidebringer to come in and clear Ancients very early on. Because they were moving so much, there are no stacks being made in the triangle. Well, Laundroid still on the top, does have phase boots completed, going into Mask of Madness next. This hero hits extremely early timing with just Mask of Madness, then getting a Deso, which uh, will open up the Roche for them. Fate Beyond not being greedy on Keeper of the Light. This is offlane Keeper of the Light, but wants to finish off Spirit Vessel. A bit different than when you play Keeper of the Light because you want to get the boots of travel first. From the uh, mid lane, yeah. Yeah, a little worried for Outsider's ability to initiate a fight, especially post like 15, 20 minutes, because Lina's not that hero, and neither is like Kunkka can do it with X mark the spot, but their lineup is really good at counter initiating with Snowball, Grave, uh, like both, and then trying to take a fight. Yeah, like a blink war stomp from the Doom. You don't necessarily want to be doing that as the primary form of initiation unless you have perfect vision. Or a perfect target to go on. Of course, that won't come until a little bit later on when he does get the money coming in from his Midas and Devour. Neutral items. All being picked up by outsiders, though. As the, the little wild wing sends the tornado towards the Doom. Sitting defensively mid. Hakoda gets initiated on by Yi and nothing to say. Can he get off a grave? No. Doesn't even have it leveled up yet. Shadow Wave doesn't keep him safe, and now Snowball back towards the neutral creeps. Yamich still being hunted down by LGD, and a double kill for the Winter Wyvern as they snap into action. All of a sudden, LGD flick the switch and say, right, we're ready to play here. Kunko will catch in Q bottom, though. The boat crashing on him, and the tide bring a slap down. I don't know what Yi can do. Try to suppose, but didn't have the backup quite fast enough. A bit of a difficult kill to get there on Kunkka. A problem for Outsiders is going to be that both supports are extremely underleveled. Level 3, 9 minutes in. D Dazzle doesn't even have a point in Shallow Grave. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. I was like, I can get the Grave off now. No, he's level 3. Doesn't have it yet. Oh, so you're going to see a couple of stacks in this bottom jungle, but the Snowball, X mark. So many ways here for Outsiders to catch and kill. Backup arrives though, as LGD brings Jin Q and Faith Piano oh, and the toss Kunka. back, aiming Kunkka. Spirit Vessel's there completed, and the jump in with a rebound. Some good shards, but the blinding light pushes him back into the waiting arms of the Disposer Marcy. And still no grave for the Dazzle means the Kunkka falls flat, and Hakura are gonna get hunted down in the trees. The Tumblr's toy toss back, Jin Q finds the angle, and there we go, a double for Faith Piano. <laughs> this Tumblr's toy, allowing him to get good initiation twice and also having a Vindlay, so a bit extra movement speed there on top of it. Uh, I was surprised that they decided to go for Kunkka. I yep. thought they're not going to have enough damage to kill it, but uh, with no boat. And now, on the bottom lane, they will start to put some tower pressure. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Ame continues to farm up. Doom is available, but he needs plus one. Oh, yeah, he needs better help. The catapult wave is arriving bottom, but it's uh, a wave too late. Maybe they can defend it and keep that push going. But up here, Arme finishing off the Mask of Madness. Will be delivered out on the Courier in a few seconds. And he can just continue farming to his heart's content in that jungle. 
Is it, is it at all surprising that the two offlaners here are the top net worth, Doom and Cottle? They're both very heavy they, farmers, they, they, aren't they? <laughs> it's one of those games where you, a lot of people are swapping lanes, and then you end up on top of the net worth. Yeah. Doom? Any He's gonna be okay. Claws, not, not gonna get any more. But the rest of the team is connected. Nothing to save. Which play done? Jin Q smoked. 437 move speed. And with that Tumblr's toy, places an observer ward, so that's gonna give him good vision. He knows he's here. Yeah, they've scanned him. They know he's still back in the trees. The TP cancelled out. Jin Q right on time arrives to kill off DM. And this should be the tower. Outsiders, they have. Other than Lina, very bad heroes at defending the towers. GPK was thinking about getting Boots of Travel on Lina, soaring into bots, but understands that he needs to do something. They might be overran, so going for BKB next. There's that tier one. Unlocking the triangle, which Arme is going to come and farm, take away a slice of that pie that outsiders would have been saving for a rainy day. Faith Bian aiming towards Ramses again. It's Kunki. He's meant to be a tanky hero, but look at how quickly he... 100 move speed on him. He, he can't move, and he just loses like 800 HP in a blink of an eye. Good grave TP, though. Should get him back to Fountain. The Spirit Vessel in the final touch. He dies before he lands. Absolutely beautiful from PSG LGD. Understanding just how much damage they need to get on this Kunka, even with the boat. The Solar Bind, like one level in Solar Bind is what allows you to get a kill. He was not moving. I said 100 move speed. Which play plus Solar yeah. Bind? Nothing to say. Already around the mid lane. Does have that double damage in bottle. And now the, the dominoes topple. Lone Druid from top through triangle into mid. And look, look, they're just straight down towards bottom lane, aren't they? Tier this one is, after tier one. This is Dead Tower. Uh, they, they need to run away from it there. And GPK immediately TPs out. Just do not defend. GPK under dire vision does get spotted, so they know, uh, LGD know absolutely there is no defense being made down bottom lane. Two supports, still level five on Outsiders. Like, if oh. you think about Tiny being under level, you don't care that much about uh, if Tiny's not having a good game, because it doesn't matter if it's Toss level one or two, if Avalanche is like one level less, but uh, on Tusk, it really matters. If he's not level six on Dazzle, you want to have your like shallow grave, more points in it. And Ame is gonna solo push this tower. Yeah. LGD pretending that they're behind him. Because he, he, he's playing super aggressively, and now they make a move on mid. That's the thing, they saw the Lina right, so they know there's no one bottom. They can go into Ramses, and here he unleashes. Snowball there towards nothing to say. Still trying to catch up to this Kunker with a Solar Bind. TP out from Yamich. Always cursed, caught out, and Ramses pummeled down by White. Poor little Tusk dead as well. LGD starting to run away with this. And like you were saying, the, the low levels on the supports, is, is that now a failure, considering the tri-lane and the lane moving around from outsiders? Oh, they're baiting with the rune. Why? What a play. He How's saw, he done that? He saw Doom coming, because they do have an observer board. Uh, he knows something was cooking and decided to show up uh, when the Doom came into his vision. Disposed, takes a rune. PSG LGD, they're on another level. This game looked uh, very even because uh, GPK and Ramses do have a lot of farm on their heroes. Plus, you also have extra gold from Devour. You do have uh, gold from Hand of Midas. But in terms of this game being even, it's it's not even close. Outsiders, they can't make an aggressive move. They're going to probably wait for BKB on Ramses and then try to take a fight. Double BKB, Lina, Kunka, try to do something. Yeah, you, you can talk about... You know, net worth and item progression, all you want, but LGD have been the ones controlling the map. Their macro gameplay is. It's just from outer space. Now, I've seen a couple of posts on Reddit talking about the stats, the win rates of different regions, and they're all like, yeah, we've, we've kind of separated LGD from China because, yeah, they're from that region, but they're so damn good, we've got to put them in their own category. Yeah, we have seven regions. Yeah. Six plus LGD. <laughs> Pretty much. Because they're, they're not from this planet. That, that's how they, well, they play Dota. They're so about to be done. They will try to go and uh, potentially get a pickoff play top part of the map, so they're close to Roshan and transition that into Rosh. And now onto DM. Jin Q and nothing to say. Play from the trees. He tries the War Stomp Infernal Blade, but he's still dying to this Winter's Curse and Arctic Burn. Nothing to say on a mega kill streak. Dazzle not close enough to use the Shallow Grave. That was a shift, Shadow Wave, so he. 
Gets it immediately off. Why? Can he get the rebound off? Ooh, not quite. Good chain stuns from outsiders. Kill on a support. Still a kill. Bit of XP, bit of gold. Maybe it slows down LGD's aggression. Now, especially with Ramsey's getting his BKB. They will have triple BKB on outsiders. They need to win the next fight. If they lose the next fight, that's a really bad sign. We still haven't seen Doom being used, because both supports were very underleveled, mostly rotating between mid and bottom lane. Scan, they know someone's hiding in the trees. GPKs? Is he just gonna solo die He's here? Dead. Jin-Q just jumps in! Lena dead, yes, you can laugh about it all you want, but 45 seconds with no Lena now. And you were just saying, this is meant to be one of the pivotal moments for Outsiders, with all their BKBs starting to roll in. They need to pick up momentum in some way, somehow, but an incredibly difficult prospect for them. Maybe a smoker's four from the mid lane. Ramses clears the wave. But yeah, they're, they're not comfortable to go make any moves without the Lena. The vision game, as always, from LGD has been top notch. You see, how, how many sentries can we count from outsiders? I, I don't think we, they've caught many observer wards, but there's like seven sentries out there on the map. Yeah, it feels very inefficient. A lot of gold wasted and expended. And it's Savage Roar, beautiful execution. Catch the Kunkka, kill him off. Hakuda again, just out of place, can't get the grave. And that's Roche. 40 seconds without Kunkka, you know that he doesn't have a BKB. Without him, uh, when I say BKB doesn't have buyback, without him, they really can't contest this. And they also don't have the heroes, like a clockwork that could potentially go in, steal ages. This is getting really rough for outsiders. Yeah, it's at that point in the game where, you know, we see from LGD any any pairing of hero, the Wyvern Tiny or the Lone Druid Marcy, these heroes can make plays on the map together, find a kill, make a push happen. Whereas it, it really feels like outsiders need every single hero there. They need a five-man fight or nothing at all. With no Kunkka, can't fight. They, no they can't, can't fight. With their heroes, it's uh, almost impossible to get. Yamage holding on to Philosopher's Stone, trying to farm a Blink Dagger, so that's going to be a sort of initiation, but also another way of saving tool, which is might be a bit uh, too difficult to execute, considering the all displacement tools with Tiny Stoss, with Dispose on top of it. Still a chance for Outsiders to you know, maybe outplay, get a good team fight under their belt. They've got... The ability to catch and kill with Kunker Doom. Great ways to jump onto a target and kill them off, especially you know, if, it's, if it's a Wyvern or a Cottle. Outsiders not having a good read where PSG LGD is at the moment. Yeah. Finally, Ame on top of the network, because Fate Beyond was holding that for a very long time. Drums, four staff, full spirit vessel, level 15 on him. And LGD's got that Martian tech, right? The, it's not map hack. They just know, they see into the future. Very good feel of what outsiders are doing. Cottle. Four staff, can he do it? Let's see. Right striker right hit. The disposed, still with the Laguna play. GPK blows up the Cottle, but Yamage is rolled straight into the middle of them. Gives them a freebie. That's his blank dagger. He got last hit, 500 gold, holding that Philosopher's Stone. We still have not seen Doom. Yeah, we haven't 19 minutes in. Yeah, he's, he's trying to get himself a blink dagger, 200 gold away now for DM. Devour off cooldown, but he can't use it because Ame shows up in the lane. There's an angry bear there, right in front of your tier two. Outsiders will have everybody alive in a second. A boat, Laguna Blade, not the longest of cooldowns, so maybe they could go for another crack at this team fight against LGD. Oh, is Jin Q hiding in the trees down south? Yeah, he's, he's waiting in that little tree line, looking to jump, Keep but the quiet Gary, the, he's the gonna find round. him. Uh, they, oh, he showed. They jump the he's Lina. dead. Oh, they jump the Lina oh! now. Oh, he misses the avalanche. Oh, a chance for outsiders now for the turnaround. They can come in from that top side. They did a smoke in here. They're looking for the angle, and they doom the Wyvern. Good catch, on nothing to say. The toss back, Ramsey sent in towards them, but the Savage Draw pushes them out. DM is BKB'd up and sprinting away as Outsiders kill two, but they want to bail. This Lone Druid Bear, Laguna bladed down, GPK. He destroys the Spirit Bear, while Faith Bian will focus Yamich. The Grave and the Heal, the Snowball, and, well, oh, Blink Dagger ready means Yamich will survive. Nice done. Jin Q in, in again. Blows up Hakura, but X mark. No torrent. And no follow through from outsiders. 
Good fight for fight, Outsiders. Though. Being able to get that first Doom on Vyvern. And uh, no real saves coming out. The fight was already split. I thought Jinku is going to be able to jump in and uh, get the initiation on Lina into Savage Roar, something that they've done before. But yeah, a little not executed perfectly, which means that those three BKBs from Outsiders finally coming into a play. Yeah, it gives them something. Wind beneath their wings. Opportunity to fight again. LGD wants to try and close this one out, though. Still holding Aegis for a minute and a half. Another tier two tower. Post bottom can be claimed. Oh, uh, it's already been claimed, sorry. And they're thinking about the high ground. Sloan Druid with a, a sidekick on the bear. Look at him just munching away at building. damage on him. It's gone. The torrent will slow him down a little bit, but he moves straight towards the melee barracks. Ramsey's looking for the X. Is he going to focus? There's a resummon on the bear in five seconds, so even if they kill it once, it will come back again. And Fapion has been using Chakra Magic on bear to lower the cooldown. It's it's like using it on Terror Blades meta, because mm. bear is his ulti. Yes. You can think of meta as ulti, but uh, yeah, still works with Chakra Magic. That's a good point. Nothing to say. Oh, he's got Aghanim Scepter, 100 gold away, basically. Such a good item up against these these tanky strength heroes, the Doom, the Conquer. There's outside of smoke with only three members. And another situation where it feels like they're desperate to get something. They want one hero to show in the mid lane. They want a single isolated target that they can jump on. But LGD, are, they're all holding hands. They're, they're on a family vacation up top lane. Every single tier two tower already gone. Now the map becomes even more difficult for outsiders to play. And look at that dire vision as well. The one down in that bottom jungle sees them. They'll get up here with their own vision, Yamic. Sentry, spotted. Jinkyu tosses him down. Snowball will only delay the inevitable. Oh, maybe not. A good blink out from Yamic and the ice shards blocks them. So he does make his swift escape back up to high ground, but Yi is having nothing of that. He places a sentry for the, the flash of vision. Lone Druid back up to Barracks. DM tries to get in with an Good Inferno Blade, but a toss back into the middle. Forced to BKB, War Stop, and bashed up, stunned, and killed off. No buyback on Doom. And Lena trying to hold her ground here. Blows up Yi's Marcy. Forced to BKB herself. Pummeling into Jin Yu with that crystal listen there. A right click attack damage coming out of Lena, but that Winter's Curse, the reset button. LGD got what they came for. Building they want to disengage. Forcing a buyback and. Uh getting damage done, the melee barracks gone. Also, a thing to point out, Jin Q, he does not have a point in tree crap. This, is, no. I, this might be the first time I'm seeing it, because he does go for stats instead. I guess he just wants to be more tanky. Yeah, I guess he's the one that's breaking vision, jumping in first. Yeah, interesting though, even one point in tree grab seems like a, a value point. Usually on these position four tinies, we do see Level 1 tree crab recently. Yeah, we do. But I guess with no laning stage, he was never tra he's never trading with anyone. He was never in anyone. the lane, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Every single rune is controlled by PSG LGD. I've seen Vyvern having like 3-4 arcane runes, haste rune, multiple double damage runes. It's been a tough one for GPK. Oh, look at that, an ethereal blade for the Keeper of the Light. That's going to condemn uh, he, one of these. He's too far. It's illegal to be this farmed as offlane Keeper of the Light. <laughs> he's ahead of the Lena who has boots. Uh, that's just that boots of travel. But the ability to flash farm and shove out waves. So you got brown boots. Chrysalis, Dragon Lance. I'm so used to seeing boots of travel on Lena. So, yeah, surprised. Is under GPK never grabbed it up. It's too expensive considering how the game's going. I don't think you can invest into boots of travel. It would be a waste of 2,000 gold. Just trying to scale as quickly as possible. Oh, look at that. They're all lined up for it. Yamich is spotted. Savage roared, and they've got the curse on Lina. Down to half HP immediately. The bear just rips apart the tusk. Oh, man, this is not a, a bar fight brawl that you can battle in as Yamich or the outsiders. Arme gets a double kill, and Hakoda slowed by the Arctic burn. Pummeled by Jin Q. And it looks like this game coming to a close. They potentially have one more fight. No buyback on Lina, no buyback on Tusk, uh, nor Dazzle. So this is going to be a set of barracks. Setsu, the bear, dealing way too much damage. Yeah, 
shout out to Setsu. Tier 3 tower. Yeah, tower, tower protection. Back to a regen. Ah, doesn't matter. Sidekick, does drums. Oh, they've got a catch. Went to Wyvern, it's doomed and boating. Four staff not going to save him. Jin Q will get the two man Avatos in there, and Wee Yi does jump back towards Ramsey's, focusing DM's doom at the same time, and Ramsey's BKB TP will complete. Successfully back to Fountain. Not to say, wants happening. to close it out. After being doomed, uses buyback. He's like, I don't give a crap anymore. I just want to end this game. Put them out there, misery. Back. Take the buildings. Because he's been Doom's target uh, every single time. And now to the mid lane they go. It's range barracks. Fate Beyond will pop that charge of drums. And back to the bottom lane they go. Doom does have a buyback, but no Doom available. One last chance for outsiders to show us what they've got. See if they can make it happen. Yeah, kill on nothing to say here. Could maybe turn the tables. Did just buy back, but his Aghanim Scepter allows that free pathing to fly over Ramses. He's gonna he's gonna go to the shop and buy something. He, what's he doing? Nothing to say, just hiding in the trees. They toss back the Kunkka. He's feared and caught and held oh. in place, disposed they back catch him. Laguna Blade's there. They're focusing the wire, but nothing to say. About to die, and they grave up Yamich. Outsiders, maybe with a chance now, but Kunkka dead for a minute, and the rest of their heroes crumbling. Lone Druids come out here, and they'll Savage Roar, and Tangling Claws, kill off the leader, and GG's called. PSG LGD is just uh, very difficult not to crack, not just uh, in this tournament, in the DPC. They did have a couple of losses, but uh, feels like they came here to play. Also at the Riyadh Masters, uh, th this team just looked uh, one level above everyone else. One level? Two, three, four levels? Or some ridiculous it stuff. It was difficult. The, the, how quick they adapt, because uh, there was an aggressive tri lane from outsiders, and they immediately swap things out. Uh, they TP, uh, so do outsiders. Yeah. And then they mess things up, because Tiny goes to the mid lane, he gets the kill on uh, GPK, then uh, gets another kill when Y makes a rotation. And there's no, there are no lanes anymore, as you said. And then he's farming the jungle. Jinkyu's stacking. It's all about the efficiency. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like they've got you know Oracle or Doctor Strange on their team or something. They're, they're seeing these 50 million permutations, but they always choose the correct Doing one. The math. They, they know you know that math meme guy, yeah. the crazy one. <laughs> they know exactly which direction, which parameters they need to fulfill to have that perfection and efficient gameplay. Game one, LGD looking incredibly strong as we'll take a break and return with game two after this.
can be found in any number of places. Scientists will tell you that it comes in Newtons. Gamers will say that it can be found in Silky Seals. We will say that the power lies in real thrills. In the play with perfect ping. In the runes and crystals. In every frag and gank. In your personal winnings. Lock and load for PGL Arlington. back on form, even when faced with a tsunami of aggression, the trial in from outsiders ride the wave and get themselves to Vic. I mean, what does what does outsiders have to do here against LGD to win the game? Uh, they need something different. They tried. They gotta set up an aggressive trial lane, maybe get the LGD out of their comfort zone. It did work out for a good 30 seconds and then the LGD is like, well, we know how to adapt <sighs> yeah. to this one. Yeah, it was incredibly difficult, especially when they open with that Marcy alone Druid. You know it's going to have ganking, team fight, pushing power. And they rounded it out with a beautiful Cottle Tiny as well as LGD. But I was saying, looking back at the drafts, outsiders, a lot of their victories have been off the back of, of Marcy and Tiny, these abilities to dispose and toss people Five around. Both of those heroes banned, not allowing outsiders to get the first pick on either of them. PSG LGD, they saw an opportunity. In the previous game, we got both of those, and we'll see how they approach this pack opening. Gonna be with the Void Spirit, the classic yeah. one. Um, it seems like this this is just an answer. During the European DPC Tour 3, because people did start to pick puck quite a lot, we did see Skyrot Mage plus one, like instant stun. Most of the time it was Dragonite to be able to lock him down, play into this long duration silence. Very difficult for puck to deal with, but also, I think Rise of Chen, because Chen has been super popular in this tournament. Uh, last time we checked, he had uh, about like 65% win rate. Yeah, and 18. now it's even higher. 18 games, 72% win rate. We're both looking at the same page on Dota Buff, aren't we? <laughs> we both opened it up at the same time as soon as Chen's picked. Definitely one of the, the hot Ladies heroes of this tournament. Back. Timbersaw, though, for outsiders, going to give them at least one solid lane and maybe the ability to snowball out of it to get that tempo going. Not picking it into any LG any strength heroes though. It's a, uh, you can ban out the three heroes against Timbersaw, so it's not a bad place to do it coming into the second phase. Yeah, you gotta get rid of the, some of the counters for Timbersaw. Um, as Monkey King uh, definitely out there, so outsiders uh, will get rid of him. Next one, I know I Ten say seconds, Ursa three. quite a lot. And PSG LGD is one of the teams that do play a lot of Ursa. So Five you should potentially remaining. try to get rid of him because mm. Chen does stabilize the lane, provides you with the extra region. Ursa at the early PSG level is not the strongest LGD's hero. For back. now, we'll remove Templar Assassin. Okay. We had a lot of focus from LGD onto Yamich's hero pool. We, we mentioned the Marcy and Tiny now. The Tusk is gone, getting rid of a lot of those roaming heroes that can enable outsiders to play into mid lane, give GPK a better Ten time. It, it feels like GPK very often is you know, the, the pivotal hero that's making moves Five and making seconds. calls, Remaining. being a carry from the mid. If you're not controlling runes and allowing that mid laner to flourish, definitely can be a struggle for you. We saw what happens when they rotate him, rotated on him twice. Uh, they kind of kill his momentum as well, because what outsiders wanted to do is get these uh, two BKB potentially three at the same time and play from there because all these three heroes are kind of rushing the BKB. Uh, Doom gets Midas, but because of the extra gold, they could sync up all three of them. And uh, they still need some kind of counter for this Timbersaw. You, you can't just allow Timbersaw to roam around freely. I think there's also, I believe it was 
at, no, it was RNG who did have a bit of a different approach against the Timber Saw. They did have OD, oh. which is pure damage. But since they already picked Buck, I, I don't think that's uh, that's doable. Maybe from the off lane, because Fate Beyond does play whatever it's needed, whatever it's necessary. He's like, oh, I never played it, and then goes godlike. Yeah, any hero, put it in his hands. Magic appears Five in front of you. Remaining. Faceless Void, a ban coming out from LGD. An interesting one there. I mean, what's, what's the thought process behind Void ban at this stage? Uh, can't say yet, because I don't know what uh, PSG LGD is thinking or trying to pick. Uh, it's a guaranteed lockdown for Void Spirit, but other than that, uh, just doesn't strike me as a good Void game, because they, they, yeah. they do have like decent amount of damage inside the Chrono from Puck, uh, from Timbersaw. Time dilation is what Void Spirit doesn't like to play into, but it's more to that. It's not just, oh, the time dilation, let's ban the uh, Faceless okay. Void. Like, so that, that's, that's the track my brain was going down. Time dilation against Invoker, Bristleback. Are these the heroes that maybe they're aiming towards? We'll see, though, it's LGD. Gonna grab up an Earthshaker. That's your Jin Q hero. Has already been su very successful on it this tournament. We showed Seb how it was done in a previous series. Up against OG. So that's your two supports and your mid laner for LGD. Once Earthshaker picks up the Blink Dagger, you will have instant initiation against Puck, something that he Five is afraid of. You can pull the lane back, of course, always as an Earthshaker on the Radiant off lane. Team pick. Snap, uh, Snapfire has known the rise. This hero has been forgotten in the previous DPC tour, and suddenly the hero is doing extremely well. Even after all these nerfs, it still feels uh, one of the better position for heroes, sitting at a 63% win rate, 22 games picked so far. Seconds. Yeah, one of the tools that EG have used recently to you know, come out of the dumpster in their you know, day one, Five day two performances, remaining. coming back with a, a number of wins with the crit snap. And we've also seen Sea Smile playing the Snapfire mid again for oh. Beast Coast, as outsiders grabbing the solid, stable Juggernaut as their position one carry. And to go back to Snapfire, you will always he have kill opportunity on uh, anyone, especially Void Spirit, with Mortimer's Kisses plus Coil. This is going to be deadly at every single stage of the game. And also having a cookie against the Earthshaker. You get blocked, you will jump over it easily. Yeah. And they didn't ban it out, uh, something that I mentioned, Ursa Ten against the Timbersaw. Ursa good against the Jug, because uh, Juggernaut's not going to feel too comfortable ulting Ursa whenever he has ulti available. Yeah, he's got, got that Enrage. He's got that uh, shock abilities maybe to catch up to these these elusive heroes, Radiant the Timber and the Puck back. with the Chain and the, and the Orb. You can keep moving forward with your Blink and your Abyssal Blade as they come out later on as well. The outsiders now aiming towards some of these Faith Beyond heroes. Yeah, I, I wouldn't gone. mind seeing a Beastmaster because he's still available and I would love to see some kind of a BKB piercing ability against the Juggernaut, because right now he he's really not contested. Yeah, spin TP completely free. Beastmaster is a good shout. Also gives you a lot of that pressure with a Chen. Not a great amount of uh, of stable long range wave clear outside of the puck. If you've got a massive army of a Chen and a Beastmaster pushing a tower, Juggernaut doesn't want to show. Snap doesn't want to get into range to scatter blast. You would need to have this Timbersaw and Puck putting their, their bodies in harm's way. That OD doesn't sound too bad now from the offline. Even though they would definitely appreciate a bit more tower damage, I would say, because they don't have that much. It, it it gets a bit more difficult to close out the game with Ursa lineups. Uh, you might get Aegis, but sieging the Tier 3 tower could be a bit more difficult. But I'm still down for Beastmaster as well. Yeah, it wouldn't be too bad. And what else do we have there for for Faith Beyond? Any any other pushing heroes that he could he could pull out? Uh, difficult from a position three role, other than that Beastmaster, Nature's Prophet maybe. PSG LGD. They ban the Beastmaster now, outsiders. <laughs> Scarath Mage removed out by LGD as they are looking for. They they heavily support. committed on banning position four heroes. It's one two three for five of those. Yeah, have fun, Yamich. <laughs> what's what's left in your pool? Is, is he an Earth Spirit player? Is that something he can pull out here? Oh, uh, he could. I wouldn't mind seeing that. 
five seconds remaining. Looking at some other heroes, if they want to get like Shaman, I think uh, Shaman e might be a good idea. Ooh. Okay. Enigma four, it looks like. Okay, time to time to think differently. I think. Uh, what did I suggest? Maybe bang out something like a vengeful spirit Ooh. on the off lane. Could, could, could they fit a warlock in here? Like a three earth shaker? Warlock Five Chen as a support yeah, dude you're right. just feels really weak. You're right. That's not uh, best, outsiders having a really good adjustment in the game too, because they use this faceless void ban that PSG LGD did. And that means you can't get anything that pierces through magic immunity from the safe lane mm. pretty much. They did ban out that Beastmaster that we mentioned. And now you have now you have two problems. You have Juggernaut and Enigma. Does does Doom solve both of those problems though? With refresher, yes. Doom the jug, Doom, yeah, Doom the Enigma. Have they refresher. still have a full minute to think about it. It's a long time to think, but the options, like you're saying, kind of limited. Ah, uh, the other one is Night Stalker. I th Night Stalker is still available. It's not a BKB piercing ability, but it does give you kill threat on Juggernaut. In terms of laning stage, I think whatever they pick might be a bit difficult to lane into because Earthshaker is not a strong laner. If they want to think differently, I put out Vengeful Spirit to be able to swap out Enigma, swap out the Jug, mm -hmm. and uh, the hero scales well, but uh, I, I think it might be the option that I said before. What about an offlane Phoenix? Percentage-based damage against Timbersaw, big supernova. Into Jug, just into Jug Snapfire, it's a suicide. You are right again. Yeah, a little shredder and a spin. Can't be doing that. That's a difficult choice, and you nice. call the Night Stalker. The best they, option uh, comes out. They didn't have many options left because uh, it's good against the timber, so it's great against Buck. Um, uh, you can, you will always have something to kill the Juggernaut with, and uh, unfortunately, they don't have anything against like BKB Enigma. But that's gonna come in la at later stages of the game, so we might see some Diffusal Blades. Uh, sorry, uh, Abyssal Blades. Good draft from uh, Outsiders. I, I like it. I like what they drafted. A lot of different approaches. Um, How greedy is it, though, with a four Enigma? Not necessarily. You have Timbersaw. That means that Enigma uh, can get some farm. He can leave Timbersaw alone. Uh, Timbersaw will need to play between Tier 1 and Tier 2 Tower here because he is playing into Ursa Chen. Uh, can't really pressure Ursa in this lane. So is this maybe going to go back to the old days of Enigma almost jungling? Get Timber to maybe like level 3 and then ditch the lane completely? Yes, pretty much. Because Chen doesn't provide you with any kind of control unless he gets a good creep, maybe some mana burn on Timbersaw, and then if Ursa has Orb of Venom, plus Boots of Speed might be able to run him down. I'm looking at the mid. I want to see Void Spirit against Puck matchup. Seen it like 10 times in the last couple of days. Uh, I want to see who gets on top because GPK has been... Amazing. Like, he, he's been one of the best mid laners in the Eastern European region and playing against Nothing to Say, a matchup that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, because we, we've seen this go a, a number of ways. You know, some people say it's Void Spirit favored. We've, we've, we've seen Puck outplay Void Spirit's control runes, have help from his position fours, and actually get the upper hand in that laning stage. Definitely want to keep our eyes out open for, for as outsiders. They're the ones smoked. Coming out onto the map, and a long line drawn from LGD. It looks like they want to head into Radiant Triangle very early on. I guess getting a good ward there against the Enigma could be very important for them to scout out and maybe allow the Chen to follow the Enigma around while he is jungling. Looking at items from Yamich, that means he will try to potentially pull the lane back after using the Monic Conversion on the first wave. Not sure if they are aware of this ward that he just placed, and the Boots of Speed actually saving him. Yeah. They're not able to catch him. If there was not Boots, I'm pretty sure Ursa and Earthshaker with Boots would be able to run him down. Yeah, they would get right on top of him. Never but understood why would you say good luck to a team you're playing against. It's like, oh, man, he just got double damage rune. They killed Roshan. Like, <laughs> sure. It's po polite. Good, Good game have... You don't say that. Like, I, I, I don't think I've ever said that in my career. Because I, I did come back, come from uh, Warcraft 3. I played at the semi-professional level, was not good enough. You say GG at the GG, start, don't you? Yeah, GG, have fun, have a good game.
you know, but I don't want you to get some good RNG. neutral creeps. Yeah, nothing that involves RNG. That's why I don't say it. Ramses, ready to spin. Yeah, the cookie in. Nothing to say. He's already spent his He's resident dead. pulse, so first blood's coming for Ramses. Swipes his sword down, picks off that mid laner. I'm a bit surprised LGD decided to take this rune fight against Snapfire, Puck, and Juggernaut. You can't kill Jug, uh, you can't kill Puck because they can shift away. And Yamich starting, uh, sorry, Hakoda starting with Fire Snap Cookie. So that means, like, you also have Chen. What is he doing? Doesn't even have ability skilled. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a curious one for these Chens, you know, depending on their, their camps being blocked and what's going on, who they're laning with and against. We've seen Penitence level one. Same as what happened in game one. They want to leave DM alone away from Timbers, from uh, Ursa. Timbersaw alone, you don't put any pressure on this Timbersaw as Earthshaker Nightstalker. And Hakoda going to block the small camp while Enigma pretends to block the large camp. They've already sentried that up though. And now the lane swap's coming in. Faith Bjarne up towards top. And they send the army Ursa down south. Another situation, though, here where outsiders are the ones to react, right? Very often we have this first to move disadvantage because you're able now to TP and swap the lanes the other way around. We'll see what happens in this one. In the previous game, PSG LGD got way too much out of this because they had supports roaming around. They had two kill threats. This time around, it's Puck. So Puck's completely different than Lina, and I don't think they're going to be able to put pressure on GPK. Yeah, the ability to play much more actively as this Puck, and yeah, well, like you say, much more difficult to pressure and gank in the mid lane. Could be a good sign for outsiders as they do get the lane matchups they desire yet again. And LGD trying to walk it across the river. The migration of the Chen. He spots Yamich. Try and chip away at the Enigma. As so far, Yamich kind of struggling to find a place to call his home. He's going to go into top dire jungle. And maybe get some creeps in there. And as you said, this is going to be jungle Enigma while Timbersaw will enjoy some free time getting solo XP. Already level 3. This Timbersaw off to a good start. I don't see this Timbersaw dying unless they rotate like Ursa, Night Stalker, which I don't think it's going to happen. So DM have a really good start, and they should utilize that. Well, we often joke about that fourth lane when we've got lane manipulation and with this Creep is the fourth Wave. lane. Yeah, this is the real fourth lane. Chen against Enigma in a 1v1, the classic. It, it takes me back. We, we used to see this quite a lot, right? When there was yeah. a Helm of the Dominator Enigma, we had Chen's. You know, I, I can clearly remember Puppy following, like, uh, you know, uh, Enigma around in the jungle. And Chen's was Chen, the good old classic. Yeah. It's also one versus one, level one. Yeah. TP out from Yamich. Gets himself back to Fountain. Armies there, so it's a little bit too spooky for him. But you're right, DM 15 1, getting plenty of farm while Arme struggling at none in last hits. Void Spirit and the Night Stalker up at the top, but gotta feel good as outsiders here. Getting every one of your cores up and running quickly. And I'm a big fan of this build on Juggernaut. We're seeing it time and time again. The blades of attack first, a couple of branches quickly into the phase boost, and you can be handed over regen by one of your supports. Jug does have a great attack animation, so having extra damage makes it very difficult for enemy offlaners to see us against. Yeah, it was something I remember AUI talking about at a TI. He was kind of theory crafting Spectre, Falcon Blade. Why don't you just buy Blades of Attack and Branches and your supports give you salves and tangos and pump that region into you? And now, you know, 10 months later, it's kind of coming to fruition here with a rushed phase. Great pressure. block from Jin Q. Good Fisher. Stops the spin from doing too much damage to Faith Bian. Still going to get a scatter blast to the back of the head, but he can continue laning, no worries. So Enigma now taking up post in that bottom jungle and he's got a ward in front of him to scout anything coming. He's going to be that fourth core basically for the outsiders. And looks like Chen not really in position here to go hunting for him again. Does Chen then become a jungler himself? Leave the one. Ooh, a cookie. The spin on Faith Bian as well. Ramsey's getting tripped up a little bit by the trees. He's got a bit of regen there and a body block from Jin Q will give the safety to Faith Bian to get to tower. Even use the healing salve on him. Good Fisher blocks. And 
now they have Chen, Ogre Vampire Mage here as well, <laughs> casting Ice Armor to slow Juggernaut down and reduce some of that harass damage. Look at the mid lane. Pretty even. 30-30. I thought this was... And hearing it from some players that it's Void Spirit's matchup, a favorite matchup, because we do see it every single time as a response to Puck Pick. Mm -hmm. yeah, doing decently for himself, but GBK holding his own. I'm, I'm starting to wonder now, this Enigma pick, is we, we always kind of saw you know, Enchantress as like a Chen counter. Is, is Enigma a Chen counter in the early game as well? Because we saw him just you know, demonic convert one of those Ogre Frost Mages into Eidolons. Can, can Yamach handle these early Chen creeps, just convert them whenever he sees them? It's very difficult to move around the map. He tried. But uh, it's not about, like, him denying that creep, getting some extra gold. It's more about being annoying and uh, letting Timbersaw getting the levels, uh, not allowing uh, LGD supports to move around the map and do what they did in game one. So DM is level six right now, playing behind tier one tower, as we expected. So this uh, puts more pressure on Ursa. Once you have that Chakram, Ursa needs to be careful. Yeah, Yamage. He's gonna get found here, but nothing to say in Jin Q. Picked off quickly. He was also rotating in there around that six minute rune mark. Ahmed's and you're dead. right up the top, Ame, the Chakram. Too much to handle. He will enrage, but Hakuda and DM will slay the Ursa. And maybe a bit of a push on this top lane coming. Once Timbersaw hits level six, even if you're a counter to it, you need someone, you need your position five to have some kind of a lockdown, and then maybe you can get a kill. Other than that, uh, DM. As expected, on top of the net worth, uh, going into Yule Scepter next. I like the item build, because it will give him time to... during the silence from the Night Stalker, and also potentially break combo from Earthshaker later on when he has a Blink Dagger, and most importantly, against Ursa. Oh, yeah, so many uses. That's that Ursa and Rage. DM. Cookie and Timber Chain, funny interaction there, bouncing all over the place. Gets him out of the reach of the Ursa for now, though. And outsiders, three, four heroes moving up towards that top rune spot. Trying to play into this, nothing to say, Void Spirit. And GPK coils him. Orbs over the top, not enough damage to finish off the Void right now, though. As GPK did start to drop pretty low on HP. Yi with a couple of mana burn creeps, gonna waltz up top. Go on, the double zap onto DM. Where, where's your mana pool gone, buddy? Oh, Arme, where, where's your HP gone? He does have a soul ring, so it should be okay. Yeah, run at, though, by the Ursa, and nothing to say with an astral step. Just catch him with the Ether Remnant. DM backed up by the Enigma around the Snapfire, though. Trying to slip out with his reactive armor going. Nothing to say, struggling to finish this off. I don't think they can kill him. Oh, oh what a shame. void! Cancelled by the Void of Faith Beyond. APN, what a giga chat player, that timing. You need to have quick quick cast, first of all, to do that. And you also need to be called APN. Oh, this is Yamage in the trees. A TP. He's going to get finished off. Can't even retreat back to base. Diving on a tier two. LGD again. Eight minutes in, all of a sudden, they are straight into the thick of things, but GBK is there to react. Responding to kill the Void Spirit and get something back for outsiders. Managing to kill this Timbersaw and also not allowing him to pressure Ursa is pretty big. Ame seems like he's gonna be going for more of a late game Ursa oriented build. Going for that Battle Fury for now does have Ring of Health and Power Threats coming to him. Also wanna touch upon matchup Void Spirit against Puck because we see different itemization when it comes down to like players thinking how to approach it. The one that I noticed is Void Spirits do go for Power Treads early on instead of Witchblade, and there's two options. Either you go for more Greedy Build, get the Aghanim Scepter to have AoE Silence, or you get Yule Scepter for yourself to be able to protect you and potentially break the coil with it on a mid lane. Outsiders putting some pressure on the tower. Eidolon's there from Yamich. Enigma pretty low on the levels though, it feels like. I know you like this one, our Observer was pointing it out. Ramsey is going for Hand of Midas. Oh, yes. I'll find Jin Q in the jungle, though. Outside is all there. And I'll clear out a little stack. Finish off his Hand of Midas. Now, what, what do you feel about this? Monkey King, you hate it. But Juggernaut, it feels like it's been kind of successful with this Midas to get the levels into the, the talents and the shards. Talents are really good. 
uh, Blade Fury Radius, uh, Blade Fury Duration, and DPS. Even though I've seen, like, level 10 Radius players do go for down. both of those. So stats is really good at jungle. Oh, well, mate. You're threatening Ramses and forcing the healing ward to come out pretty early on. Bottom rune, Arcane for Void Spirit, but the Coil and the Cookie catching out the Chen, launched up and dead inside the Midnight Pulse. GPK at around a third of his HP, but nothing to say he can't keep going for him. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Meanwhile, in the top lane, DM will be trying to put some pressure on, on tower. Fade Beyond does have Dark Ascension available. And a point in Crippling Fear, but definitely needs more people to rotate. And not too far away from his Echo Saber on that Night Stalker too. GQ coming back in to try and deward this zone once more. Time and time again, coming up to that large camp which Ramses keeps farming. And DM gets all the freedom that he desires. Again, again, off laner heroes, top of the net worth, out farming their counterparts. And a 1k lead emerging for, for the outsiders. They do, of course, have a very poor snap fire. We're still waiting for Enigma to hit level 6. 11 minutes in, I, I kind of expected Enigma to be uh, another Dyer's core hero. We usually see him you know, out leveling his opponents, but Yamich was following Chen for a long time, forced to TP out, uh, didn't get too much free time in jungle to be able to get levels. Why does have Hand of God? Jin Q level 5 still, saving up the gold for his blink dagger. Not gonna get anything done. Does have. A little bit of help from Neutral Item or Kane Ring. Uh, you need something, some kind of help. Snapfire ulti is available. Yeah, another coil on this champ again. DM will come in and the kiss is launched. A lot expended to bring down Yi. Too much expended. Now the black hole in the back though, where did he come from? Night Stalker dragged in and nothing to say killed off. LGD went back in for round two and they get punished heavily. Peter Gildredi thought that they are going to be able to take the fight because Coil was used on Chen. Yeah. The same goes for Snapfire ulti, which uh, was not Dyer's necessary, definitely. And Night Stalker gets in, gets Ramsey. Black Hole in the end. Good usage of the first Black Hole. And then you've got Ramses. Yeah, sick, guys. I didn't even have to come and use any spells. I can keep on farming. Still has that Omni Slash to maybe look for a solo kill somewhere on the map. Uh, so not the ideal target. But he is pinging in behind him, the Puck and Snapfire have wrapped in behind the Ursa. He can't they, get out of this one. They should have him here, right? GPK and Hakura. Another Witchblade. Keep that Witchblade on him, orb over the top, Enrage. It makes him tanky, but he's slowed down to a crawl. The Hand of God, though, Cookie well placed in from Hakura will allow GPK to go forward. Secure the kill with the Snapfire, in fact. Well, Jin Q is being dived up top. Break the trees with a midnight pulse and chain in towards them. Bit of uncharacteristic mistakes from PSG LGD. They try to save Ursa. Buck did have haste, Witchblade plus Cookie, more than enough to close the gap on Ursa. And we can see the difference already. 3k, 4k gold lead for outsiders. They're starting to build up very quickly. Full control of that top region of the map as well. No way for, for Arme to play into top jungle. So yeah, he's kind of, he's stuck down bottom. You can see them pinging it. Ramsey's pings the Ursa. He's, he's TP'd bot. He's down there. Let's play elsewhere. Go in onto the Void Spirit. Make plays and action happen. Force LGD to try and they react. Or just up. lose a hero just like that. Beautiful spell casting from Outsiders. Not overlapping anything. Cookie into stun. Jin Q trying to farm up his Blink Dagger. Getting very close. Cannot allow to die here. 300 gold away. A rough one for LGD now. Oh, mate, still trying to get towards that battle fury. Slow and steady, but starting to slip behind. Radiance bottom tower Void Spirit, 4,600 net worth, miles Radiant behind the puck. And Timber Saw just able to push out that top lane consistently. Forcing LGD to come back and defend tier two, while Enigma has picked up a Blink Dagger 14 minutes in. The threat of the Blink Black Hole is going to be here soon. Two supports have a much better time than in previous game. You feel the influence they have, big teamfight ultis that they bring to the table. And uh, also, GPK having a really good time. Didn't die a single time involved in 8 out of 11 kills. Same goes for Ramses. Farming, but gonna TP out. Understands that there's nothing to stop the... TP spin. PM. He wants more. Yeah. 
And again, it's slicing through the forest. Faith beyond Echo Saber is there. It does have that dark ascension, but doesn't feel like he really wants to fight. While Chen's army getting cleared out quickly. Radiance Middle Tower. Yeah, yeah, he's got, he's got his mech, but with, with no friends, with no army now. Feeling a little bit worse for wet. Altitude just trying to spread the map as wide as they can while the outsiders gather up. They're flexing, showing their force. They want to get this blink black hole. Utilized. Could could just go for a solo kill on the Night Stalker, but he's, he's got to be careful of that crippling fear. We know Fifian very quick on the fingers. They don't want to risk it. Underneath the tier 2 tower could make things a bit more difficult, but they did place an Observer Ward right underneath the tier 2 tower, so we'll see any rotation, TP rotation that PSG LGD does. Smoked. Earth Shaker with the Blink Dagger. They want to get something done. Two points in the Aftershock, so that might be a bit of an issue. PSG LGD needs to buy more time because Void Spirit's going for a greedy build that we mentioned, that Aghanim Scepter. Uh, you have Night Stalker going for Echo Saber, and also Ursa still not fight ready. He wants to be able to farm things up, does have a Battle Fury finished when the Courier brings it, and it's right now. But it's not, it's not as if Outsiders are on a clock though, right? Yes, LGD trying to drag things out, but the scaling of Outsiders is still very, very good. Yeah. And during night time, Snipes and Courier, but the two-man coil, Void Spirit and Chen having kisses launched at them. Mortimer landing the lava in towards Yi, and nothing to say. They will get away though as the black hole is Where's just the on one. No Ramsey's follow up. Deeping. DM is trying to get back in there. They've lost the puck, and the Chen, the other one to fall, while Yamich pounded by nothing to say. LGD with the turnaround play, and the Omni Slash bounces in towards the enraged Ursa, doing very little damage as Jin Q, the Blink Echo, perfectly placed, and Ramsey's stuck oh, there Fisher. between that Fisher and the That's high a ground. Five man wipe and an ultra kill for Ame. Jin Q was so ready. He was waiting for a very long time, and this is why we said during the draft that. Uh, Ursa's never going to feel too bad about playing a Juggernaut matchup as long as he has the end rage ready. Because he gets Omni Slash literally taking zero damage and they clumped, they clumped up and the Earthshaker gets a good Radiant's echo. And then with the Battle Fury, plus the Fisher was blocking the Juggernaut away. Yeah. He could not get away from it. That was superb. I mean, watch it back here. Like, looks so good. The coil catches a couple. The kisses are landing. But look at nothing to say. He's dodging kisses left and right. A great fisher to block them out. Haste helping out quite a lot and also saves from Chen that mech and Hand of God coming in clutch. A bit of a late TP from Ramses. He was hesitating. Mm. And this Omni Slash. Radiant Bouncing Australia. back to the Earth. So thankful for Faith uh -huh. Pian. I see, I, I think this is a big mistake. I'm just gonna say it. DM going for Kaya Sanj on Timbersaw instead of getting Heaven's Halberd. I think this is a big mistake. Maybe you a kill here. Nothing to say. He's got Astral Step once the coil ends. Can you get out of this? Mm -mm. GPK has the orb. This arm against Ursa, mischance, even against Night Stalker, if you get that off, can turn things around. Got the puck here. I, they do. Does he think they need more damage with Kaya Sanj instead to be able to blow people up? Ame with double damage now chasing people. Does have Blink Dagger. Not ready anytime soon, but we'll see if he decides to go in. Gotta, re gotta respect the tier 3 towers. You do indeed. Is there any, any way they can shift it up here on the timber? Like disassemble? He can disassemble, get Kaya Sanj, get E Blade after that. But you would just yeah. rather. Have I, I would it. rather have it like right now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You've got the Yules, then you'll have the Halberd. You'll keep Arme out of the fight for a good like 10 seconds, basically. We'll see if it works out for him though, as outsiders do lose a bit of their momentum. That lead chipped away at down to 2,000 now. As Ramses just walks into the Roshan pit. I'm uh, pretty sure LG are ready for this. They've they've got vision. They've seen him walk around there. Night Stalker does have ulti and extra 45 seconds left on darkness. So we'll need to fall back a little bit. Still a long cooldown on Black Hole as well. Oh, Ramsey's half HP. Faith Beyond, crippling fear, gets the spin off. But my goodness, he dies quickly to Ahmed. DM now, the one on the run. He can try and chain away from this. Gets back to high ground, but look at who's waiting for him. There's Chen here. Behind an army, still trying to give chase. Eating up 
some of those little idlons and creeps. Huck it up. Forced the cookie back to his tier two. Do they want to go inside a pit? 25 seconds. Oh, they do. No juggernaut. Uh, outsiders gonna smoke. They they want to take this fight. They do have black hole. The kisses, the coil, the good remnant ulti. blocking the entrance. Yeah, they see them coming now. So Faith Bian, Crippling Fear, trying to turn them out. GPK blinks in aggressively. Kisses and Coil landing, but GPK is already dead. And will finish off the Roche. Roche and gone. They just picked up. The all set the seconds too late. And the turnaround back in towards Yamit. He blinks to high ground, gets a bit of distance. But the Fisher and Remnant blink in from Ame, clears through the Enigma. Outsider starting to crumble, but it's LGD again, really. Everything is perfect for LGD. Like these uh, clutch hand of gods, uh, the timing going inside a pit. Uh, DM not able to attack. get that Yule Scepter on Radiant time. And uh, yeah, they finish off the puck and they kill Roshan after that. So right now, PSG LGD in, in a driving seat. Yeah. Look at that Juggernaut's itemization. I, he's going for Manta style next. Oh, Manta's gonna help him against Silence from Void Spirit, but not gonna help him against Silence from Night Stalker. Usually when Juggernaut plays into Night Stalker or Axe, you wanna have some status resistance so those the sables don't last as long. It really does remind me, I mean, when we're casting SA Dota, we call it the Beast Coast effect. They're losing lanes, losing the game, and then all of a sudden they have they have this control panel in front of them, and there's just one button that says, go win. They slam it, they win a team fight, they win the game. And it feels like LGD are able to do this. LGD has the a top full <laughs> keyboard of those buttons. <laughs> like, but it's against the top tier teams in the world as well. They're losing you know, uh, to this outsider squad who looks so powerful from laning stage through to 15 minutes in. And then LG turn it on. They win a team fight in the drive, like you said, in the driving seat now. Able to completely dictate the pace of play. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Outsiders Dyer's still do have this blink black hole, attack. and green lights are coming back up Dyer's for the royalties. Maybe an opportunity Radiance for them to smoke and meet, and match LGD when they come for some of these objectives. Tier twos are still standing, so could be a good platform for this fallen. squad to play around. Yamich hiding inside the trees, does have a big boy Philly, so eventually we'll be able to farm up his BKB. That's gonna be big. That's super important for them. There yeah. is nothing that can stop the BKB black hole. Unless PSG LGD gets a good initiation on him, they do have more than enough lockdown. We've gotta get that vision. Catch him first. Oh, nothing to say under a sentry. He thought he was safe, invis and hidden. Fisher maybe buys him enough time here with the Resonant Pulse spammed out and a dis dissimilate Astral Step. He gets a gap. Oh, he's he away the from way. there. LGD now with Arme facing GPK. Faith Beyond hunting as well while Ramsey spins and TPs home. TM looking to catch, nothing to say still, but he's got the heals from the mech. He's back to half health and DM's the one trapped. Fisher up, chains away, the black hole from Yamage is cancelled by the Ether Remnant. Oh, nothing to say, just outplaying outsiders every step of the way. GPK gonna try and all back, jumped upon by Arme. And Night Stalker with a Fae Grenade keeps the vision, moves over the tier two, and gets a couple of big kills for LGD. A little surprised the outsiders decided to take this uh, full five and five engagement, because there's no BKB yet on Enigma. This is a big turnaround point for them and so much control. Again, Hand of God coming in clutch, uh, saving Void Spirit and uh, he uses the Simulate plus Astral Step to go different way and then joins a fight to make a big play. Right now a bit of calm for LGD. They are still holding Aegis for a minute. And they know that with Black Hole, Kisses down, no Omni Slash available. They are in prime position here just to clear out a couple more of these outer towers. There's even a DD rune that spawned up at top as we watch Arme cutting waves in behind that tier one. Radiance top tower is under attack. Such a spectacular game. Uh, it's been a struggle for GPK to keep tabs on him. Well, Puck is ahead of him in net worth, but it feels like the impact has been reversed. BKB coming out from GPK. You need a defensive item. Night Stalker's Silence, yeah. Against the Night Stalker's Silence and two silences from Void Spirit. 
even Earth Shaker. It's Williams really good. Jin Q going for one BKB for himself as well. Yeah, it can be difficult against this Puck and Timber Saw. You do a tremendous amount of damage into you. Tons of money being saved up. Outsiders connecting in with the GPK Puck bottom. DM is all the way up at top lane, just trying to clear out waves. So it looks like they want to try and play as four down here. Wow, they're just opening the map for themselves. But LGD with a DD rune on Void Spirit. They know exactly where they are. Look at that reed. Yi circles them out. They're in this bottom jungle. They're behind the puck. But they might want to strike tier 3 tower. Fate Beyond positioning himself. Does have a blink dagger available. And level 3 ulti. They place deep vision. So whoever TPs inside the base will get initiated on. How many steps ahead are they? Like they, they, they see the puck four. showing. They're four steps ahead. Like, Puck shows bottom, that means his hero's behind him. That means when we push mid, someone's going to TP back to tier 3 and they're going to slowly filter back to defend their base. Right now, fortunately for outsiders, it is DM. The hero that LGD don't necessarily want to go and jump on. Anybody else shows, though. They're getting obliterated. Puck spends the orb. And LGD, they don't see the target they want to strike on. Backing up through that bottom jungle. Might find Hakoda. Looks like they will. Fey Grenade gives the vision. Faith Beyond. Chase him down. There is no escape here. And Jin Q will hold that Fisher for the last moment. Good little move with the force and the cookie. Now Fishered up though and jumped on by Faith Beyond's nice stalker. The finishing touches will come out. A dominating streak for NS. I don't know if this ward is going to get the warded inside the base. This might come in really clutch. Seeing smokes when PSG LTD is potentially going to do Roche or give them ability to jump and connect onto target and instantly delete it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, BKB's done on Jin Q, you called it, but Refresher Orb and Aghanim Shard queued up next. All right, he's going to have double BKB, double Echo. That's a greedy Earthshaker. This is going to take a while. Doesn't have Philosopher's Stone. Outsiders. They've really lost so much of this map. No opportunities for them to go and fight. It kind of feels like they're just going through the motions of push out a lane, back up to base, push out a lane. This gives LGD every opportunity in the world to, to smoke, to out farm, to get deep vision. And move into this radiant triangle. Nothing to say hidden under the smoke and all oh, this spot GPK. Good face shift. Might just get away. That Ether Remnant. Yeah, BKB. stopped by the BKB. But the Basher comes in and they catch him out, but he jumps away. 1 HP. Yamich with the black hole and the Omni Slash. Looking for Arme, but the enrage finally arrives. Ramsey's in the back lines. Yamich dead. Juggernaut struggling to stick on a target. While DM being zoned away by Jin Q. Give chase onto this Timber Saw now. They're still not done. The Yule Scepter up. Astral step towards him. Ether Remnant drags him back in. And they'll finish off this Timber one by one. They whack away at him. No buybacks here for Outsiders. And look how careful they are. They did not want to reveal this ward in base. Like, they did not want to jump. Because this ward still lasts for another three minutes. So Roshan's going to respawn in 50. Not the fastest respawn. But uh, once again, PSG LGD fighting underneath the vision. Decent black hole. <sighs> Healing coming out from Chen. Mech, Hand of God. This is why Chen has, what would we say, 72% win rate so yeah. far in this tournament. It something seems like, like it's going to get even higher after this game. I think it's like 77 or something. It's, it's close to 80. And he's getting close to, to 20 games when we start to consider you know, a, a real sample size in a LAN tournament. LGD close the net in around Outsiders. 15 seconds for Roche. Tier 2 top still standing. We could poke at that if they wanted to. Ramsey's looking to finish off his basher. It's been a difficult game for him Radiant to really get onto a hero. The Void Spirit jumps away with Dissimilate and Astral Step. Night Stalk is tanky. Ursa has Enrage and Earthshaker. He's always in the back lines waiting in the fog while Chen has an army of creeps to tank up your Omni Slash. Hits. Very difficult. And now PSG LGD will go inside the Roche Pit without Dyer's Black Hole on Enigma. On it's going to be a freebie. Yeah, no contest whatsoever. Take 
And then Aegis in the shard. Shinq no longer has to buy it, so he's got more money saved up towards his refresher orb. Was it the Ursa one who picked it up? Chen's got it actually. Sorry. Oh. So ancient creeps potential for for, Jin, uh, for White. Wait, he's given it over. To, he's given it over to nothing to say. Uh, past past the shard. Nothing to say. We'll eat it in the end. What a team! They're, they're taking care of each other so nicely. Yeah, they're having they're having that discussion. Like, what's the optimal optimal way to share this shard? Who do we give it to? Nothing to say. He's he's the one who needs it. No real space here for outsiders. I mean, down bottom, Yamich. Yeah, he's pushing out with Eidolons, hiding in the trees, very, very defensively. DM doing the same thing on this western side of the map. With that vision in the base, you keep yeah, keep talking about it. It sees them. It sees everything. Three heroes by that tier three in the mid lane. LGD going to know if they leave the base. There is that chance to jump them. Uh, yeah, the ping coming out from nothing to say. Let's, let's go high ground, boys. We see absolutely everything. Jump on the puck, GPK blown up. Immediate snap decision from LGD. As soon as someone stepped in front of that tier three tower, they're dead. They placed center ward on other side. Oh look, they pinged it now. They know. Finally, <laughs> they, they know something is up. It's about to expire though. The Yules, double cyclone, sending DM and Arme skywards. BKB forced out of the Timbersaur as well, and there's not even a real team fight happening. Top tower Some big attack. victories for LGD again. As they approach. They know that someone's standing. Look, Fade Beyond, he's the one pinging. He does have a gem, so any kind of vision will get removed. Still have a couple of seconds left. <laughs> Going very deep again. Oh, him and nothing to say. Ulti. Loves that tree line in the Radiant base. A tier 3 tower trying to, to stand tall against the catapult and all those skellies. Ramses will save his buildings. Very deliberate, patient play from LGD again. Just wait it out on this triangle high ground, shove out bot lane, and make sure that the waves are all trending towards the outsider's base. They need a big black hole. They need to land like a three-man black hole into Juggernaut Omni Slash, into Snapfire Ulti. Other than that, I don't see them winning a fight. If black hole misses or if it doesn't catch enough people, I think the game just ends. And it kind of has to be three core heroes as well, right? It's, it's got to be like Ursa, Void Spirit, and the Night Stalker, or Bust. Timber and Jug, the two unsmoked heroes, continue to farm away in the jungle. While the rest of them, they move forward, but look at that frantic scribbling on the map. They're, they're, oh, they're all down here. LGD again with the big read. Not going to fall for the trap. Ramses is, is out here waving his flag, saying, look, look at me, I'm a, I'm a Juggernaut, juicy target. Come and kill me, but he has Go. everybody behind him. Still needs to be careful, not, not tanky enough. Why is almost as farmed as GPK? My thrift no, he's not. Why is he that farmed? <laughs> Why is he that farmed? Does He bought the gem, like this is not all of his items. I mean, 13 and a half grand for Puck. The question could also be, why well, GPK, how has he fallen so far behind? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. LGD. And so often we see two smokes at the same time from opposing teams, but I feel like LGD are one of these squads that knows when the opponents are smoking, they wait for it to wear out, and then they smoke. You know, 30 seconds later. Oh! He catch. finds him, Ame, beyond godlike. Oh, yeah, Hakada just ceases to exist. Ramses does spin TP home. They're continually looking at this tree line. And anybody here? Any more targets? Any, any, any stragglers left behind? Still just going through the motions though, Outsiders. Keep LGD away from their base for as long as they possibly can and keep scaling on this Enigma. And he's becoming the most important hero in the game. Oh, they might find someone. Yeah, he might. Who's up here? DM and Yamich. Aegis, just under 20 seconds. I'm not sure if they can even kill him with Enrage and all the items he's got. A BKB, Abyssal Blade, Blink Dagger as well. DM is just up here cutting waves. Chain TP, but the cancel. 
the Fisher comes out in time. Maybe now DM thinking I should have BKB'd first. Still very difficult against Ursa. Had a Bissell Blade ready. No escape. Gets outnumbered. Next set of items are coming out for PSG LGD. Ahmed just finished his Swift Blink. There's gonna be uh, Wind Waker still far away, but Night Stalker, that's a full AC on him. Oh, so it is, yeah. Buyback from DM. What's this about? They, they're trying they, to... they, sh they saw them underneath the ward. DM immediately was like, hurry? we gotta do something. Oh, Yamich spends the Midnight Pulse. Faith Beyond is gonna BKB and sprint it back. Little Your gem on the floor there as Hakada grabs it back enough. up. Yes. Oh, look at all these skellies though. Go on, rally towards the buildings. Get a couple of hits in there. They're trying, they're giving their best. It's a lot of bonus damage when you got that army of skeletons around. And we'll get rid of vision one more time. Outsiders, they don't have any vision, vision to play with. That's, that's just been the state of the game for a very long time. Oh, GPK! Beyond this, Prox. Oh, ah, thankful for him. Has that safety net, but he's blinked back in towards the Night Stalker. Yule's in onto the Ursa now. DM looking to try and get away in the black hole. It's just on Arme. Omni Slash expended on him as well, but the Hand of God, and then comes the heal. Arme turns the fight. The Blink Echo. They will catch him out as well. Ramsey's dead, and GG called. They tried and tried and tried to delay this game out. But LGD unstoppable in this series. LGD built up massive advantage. They, like, I mentioned it uh, a minute or two ago about how strong their vision game is. They did have Night Stalker and this early gem pickup from Y, giving it to Night Stalker, managing to get rid of all vision. And uh, in the end, a couple of, like, black holes on Ursa, but they, yeah. they needed extra set of items to be able to deal with him. Uh, Y's Chen, always a three to watch. Like, Hand of Gods, every single time, uh, when Ursa is in trouble, he gets the Enrage off, gets the BKB. They're like, well, we we just used everything, and uh, there's not much we can do about it. I'm sure he had a massive grin on his face at the oh, end of the game. Sure. Three troll summoners, skeleton army going towards the Radiant base as well. But yeah, LGD back in form as they defeat Outsiders 2 to nothing. And next up, we've got a, a classic, don't we? Na'Vi up against Team Spirit. We saw them in the tiebreakers where Na'Vi did get the upper hand, but Spirit have looked solid this tournament. So a quick break, we'll come back with that match.
power can be found in any number of places. Scientists will tell you that it comes in Newtons. Gamers will say that it can be found in silky skills. We will say that the power lies in real thrills. In the play with perfect ping. In the runes and crystals. In every frag and gank. In your personal winnings. Lock and load for PGL Arlington. And here we go, our second series of the day as we move away from Outsiders LGD to Team Spirit against Na'Vi. Yeah, more Eastern European Dota for us and uh, it's a banger. You know, Na'Vi against Team Spirit. Uh, uh, these two teams, uh, they, they have some beef. You know, Na'Vi is an old organization and Team Spirit uh, kind of stealing the spotlight. In the, the young last guns. Year. Yeah. <laughs> Coming into TI and winning, winning TI. Well, these Illegal young moves not allowed, uh, but uh, should should be a good one. Uh, Team Spirit uh, doing better than Navi. Navi will need to get at least one win yeah. here. Uh, it's still you know a lot of math to do in terms of who goes where. We maybe at the end of the day we're gonna have a better picture, but uh, they definitely need to get at least one win here. Maybe even two to try to secure that. Uh, potentially upper bracket or be in the middle so they don't get eliminated. Yeah, and through the DPC, with this roster, you know, Team Spirit the past year or so seconds. has done very well against Na'Vi, usually winning series against them, whether they're best of twos Five or best of threes. Remaining. But Na'Vi are very capable of taking single games off of Team Spirit, like Radiant we saw in the tiebreakers from the Eastern European <laughs> Division. Yeah, defeating Team Spirit 1-0 in a best of one as we start the draft out with Razor, Wyvern, Puck, Viper all being removed. And does leave heroes in like the Tiny, which is picked. Marcy is out there as well, as is the Dawnbreaker, which is grabbed up by Na'Vi. A lot of healing. Na'Vi oh, yeah. is saying good luck trying to initiate on us, because there's going to be Grave, there's going to be Dawnbreaker ulti. Makes the game very difficult to play. You will need to bring an extra number, but the good thing about it is they do have Tiny, which means that toss back, uh, will be available either from Dawnbreaker Ulti or, or really? the Grave Dazzle, not in range to be able to use it. Tiny, I'd say one of the better overall Jeez, heroes in this down. tournament because uh, <laughs> flexibility, we don't see Tiny as position one anymore, but we do see him being uh, flexed and he is the most uh, contested hero. 57 matches, 51% win rate. Oh, wow, yeah. He's all over the place. Ten seconds remaining. Enigma for Team Spirit. So a big, big team fight Five ulti coming out from them remaining. and the ability to control creep waves you know, through denying with the Eidolons. Not sure where Radiant he's headed yet. Another flexible back. hero. Like you said, Tiny, the position two and four. Enigma, the, the three and four potential there for him as well. Keeping team things relatively Spirit's open for themselves. That's that second round of bans. Quite often we see in that second pick uh, a hero that... Uh, they want to grab and then safeguard with a couple of bans, right? Uh, not the case here, really, from Team Spirit. They're just going to ban out the, the Bristleback, some of these tankier, annoying heroes that could start to run over you with a backup remaining. of all these heals. Bristleback has been <laughs> pretty annoying Five to deal with. Uh, seen Bristleback pop off so many times. Uh, y y it seems like you just don't Radiant have enough. There's not back. that single hero that can go inside the triangle once Bristleback has Vanguard to threaten a kill on him or try to steal the stacks from him. It just never happens. Maybe a big camp, but in terms of ancient camps, it's just not doable. And even the even the IO being banned there. Team Spirit scared of all these heals being amped up and stacked on top of each other. As we've 
We've come to learn there's a dazzle grave with a percentage amplification of heals. You know, very, very you know potent. what, Gary? I've been calling for Axe for a really long Ooh. time. Team Spirit did play it, but they did lose a game as well. Okay. I let me just uh, try to figure out who it was. Uh, a collapse axe, though. Was collapse it? axe against Boom Esports. Five okay. seconds remaining. That could be an option for them. It gives you a great amount of counter initiation against the Solar Guardian, and, and well, yeah, you want the Culling Blade against the Grave. Fifth ban for Team Spirit. What are we looking at? Yeah. Do we aim for like a V Tune hero, get rid of like a Juggernaut or a Life Steal or something along those lines? You know, having that. That magic immunity and the ability to scale something V-Tune uses very, very well. Or, of course, you could Radiant look towards no one ban. and his hero pool, but uh, a, a Pango ban. That's a, that's a no one hero. I'm j I just don't want to see Pango from the off lane. Yeah. At least until the end of the tournament. Maybe when the patch drops, uh, the hero's going to get some really loving. Because he did receive all the nerves. I'm a little sad about Five it. One of the remaining. most fun heroes to play. Radiant team. Yeah, you're a big fan of your, your Pango and your Snap and the offline, aren't you? Rubik. Definitely. Rubik. Good Rubik game. Not just because of your Enigma, but also being able to steal Avalanche. It's a better Avalanche. And now you might need to also reconsider which heroes you're going to be picking into Rubik. So this looks like it's going to be offlane Dawnbreaker with Rubik Dazzle Ten 5. And remaining. we'll be looking for safe laner and a mid. Five yeah, still got those remaining. options of like Void Spirit for no one. He's been popping off on that hero for sure. And you have the spirits really for him. It gives him that maneuverability and the shot calling power. Just go dive in on some of these supports. Team Spirit also have had their hands on heroes like Mars and Void Spirit for Toronto Tokyo from the mid lane. They love giving him these team fight initiation or gap closing heroes. Team spirit. Cause chaos in the team fights. Safe and steady for now with a juggernaut pick. Nothing to break through the, the spin, nothing piercing magic community just yet. Looking at some potential picks for Navi, I would not mind seeing something like Dead Prophet Ten from the mid lane. Remaining. Because they could still flex Dawnbreaker to safe lane if needed Five and uh, keep things open. But if they want to play these three heroes, they have no tower damage whatsoever. It's also one of the heroes that uh, has another way to stop the Enigma. Silence against the Juggernaut works amazing. And if you have Exorcism running, Juggernaut and Enigma, like Enigma jumps on top of you, can't die from Exo during the Black Hole. Yeah, sure can. And Dawnbreaker 1 is still uh, that kind of Eastern European flavor, right? We saw it at TI yep. from Nightfall, and it, it still stuck around a little bit. I think Ramsey's played it once or twice. Not something we see too much from other regions, but you're right. Could be flexed here for Na'Vi. Team Spirit are going to have to start showing their cards a little bit, but where is this Tiny going? Where is Enigma heading? What roles do we have from these two? With their fourth pick, probably going to signal something. Very good at keeping everything flexible until the very end, though. They're running through a lot of their, a lot of their reserve time. Twenty seconds remains. Radiant Navi drafting team. reasonably quickly as oh, a warlock no. arrives. So that now means Oof, I, uh, I've seen this lane um, two or three times. Juggernaut plus warlock. Th there's no real synergy between these two heroes. It's like you want to pair Juggernaut something that's going to give you kill threat. If you wanted to go for a different hero, remaining. why not just get something, Snap fire. something Five else remaining. other than the Juggernaut? It does give them a lot of sustain. It's like an, it's an untouchable lane rather than it the is, kill threat it lane. Is. It's like, yeah, you do give Juggernaut uh, a free lane because of uh, how, how much sustain you have from Shadow Ward and Healing Ward potentially. I'm down for that, that profit. Yeah. And so it's an awful lot of counter initiation as well with Enigma Black Hole, Chaotic Offering, Fatal Bonds with a, a spin Team or a tiny Spirits combo can burst through back. people very Empire quickly as well. Assassin. As Navi opt for the TA, a flexible hero that could be moved across from one or two. But I think we've, we've come to love the position one TA quite a bit more recently. Ten seconds He's still remaining. unsure where some of these Navi heroes are going, whereas it looks like it's the Collapse Five Enigma. Five Warlock. Also, they do have Dawnbreaker against Enigma. So you see the Black Hole, Radiant Dawnbreaker ulti back. comes on top of that. 
not too much control from Team Spirit. There is Tiny, but that's about it. And they do have three other heroes that rely on cooldowns. On the other side, Navi, they don't care about any pretty much other than Dawnbreaker ulti. Even without Dawnbreaker ulti, they will still remaining. take the fights. So this could potentially be a problem for Spirit where they use a couple remaining. of ultis. On the other side, there's Templar Assassin with this, so Team you Spirit's always threaten Roshan. Yeah, the ability just to keep playing the map as Navi, very, very good for them. Batrider out, Void Spirit gone. So yeah, some targeting towards these mid laner heroes of, of no one. Maybe Toronto, Tokyo. Ember Spirit Ten also looks good for remaining. both of the teams because of the lack of lockdown. They have Rubik Instant Five Lift. Seconds remaining. That's uh, that's about it. But then again, Team Spirit does have Tiny. Never mind. It doesn't look good for Spirit because this is a mid Tiny and they are looking for an off laner. Yeah, it's like what, what are they left with for, for Na'Vi as well? It feels like no one's hero pool has been completely Red removed. Team Storm, back. Void Spirit, Pango, Kunker, Monkey, and like, Razor's all gone. K Keeper of the Light is still out there. Is that a hero that you can fit into this draft for Na'Vi? Um, might be a bit too squishy. I would like to have an extra frontliner, someone that uh, goes seconds, in and really? causes issues. I mentioned Dead Prophet. Mm. I also wouldn't Five mind seconds, seeing something really? like Queen of Pain. I, I think this is the hero that's a little Spirit forgotten. Well, they banned the DP themselves. They banned the DP, okay. And what, what about a Dragon Knight for Na'Vi? No one has picked that up a couple of times. It gives them that tankiness, ability to jump in. And I guess there's, there's also the, the potential here is a mid TA, and they're still looking for a V-Tune hero to come out at the last spot. Ten seconds team Spirit. remaining. Another one's to pick first. Where are you sending Five these heroes? Remaining. Five Warlock, one Juggernaut, the ones that are kind of locked in right now. As they've got five Radiant seconds of reserve time. Pick. They burnt through a lot of it quickly. A Snapfire will be your remaining hero. And, uh, does that put the Tiny in the mid lane then? Uh, they're keeping things open because it can be mid Snap, right. mid Tiny, and the Enigma on the off lane plus uh, Tiny 4. Remaining. Yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be more of a mid-snap fire, I would say, rather than okay. mid-tiny. Because if you get levels on snap fire early on, this is super pop, super combo with Warlock as well, and also being able to move to the side lane, kill Templar Assassin with the globs. Yeah, it feels like something they've not played a lot recently, but it's definitely something I remember Toronto Tokyo playing back before they, they they rose to prominence. I think it was like an ESL qualifier or something, if I remember correctly, where they had Snap Mid. There was the, I think, were you casting with me? The game they bought like five Aghanim Scepters. They're running around with uh, Ag Snapfire, killing people off, jumping in Spirit Breaker Ags. Not that I remember. I do remember memes and other stuff, but... Uh, not really a game since five Aghanim Scepters. <laughs> you got to remind me. So 40 seconds left for Navi to think about how to approach this. Their team fight is not that good. They're very squishy. Just by looking at these heroes, they look uh, very killable, right? Well, you look at them and they fall over. A little gust of air. I'll die. Ember Spirit. And there it is. Now select your heroes. So that's your no one hero. Not enough lockdown. So it will be Collapse, as expected, yeah. playing that Enigma, shifting things around, Mira on Tiny, and Snapfire from the mid lane. So this is... Uh, I mean, Ember does give them a little bit of a poke damage, but then again, you're playing into Warlock, which does heal quite a lot. Same goes with the Juggernaut's Healing Ward, so it's not going to be as effective. I, I like Team Spirit's that. Raft. Uh, I, I thought that they might shift things around a little bit more on Na'Vi and pick more team fight. was expecting a different carry. But uh, it does give them ability to play between the cooldowns when there's no Snapfire ulti, no Golem, no Black Hole. So Team Spirit will need to like make stuff done with their ultis. Whenever there's something available, uh, the, the team fight just looks way, way superior. Yeah, they see a fight, they see a target, they go for it. And one of the key things is going to be slowing down this Templar Assassin, because as we know, she is very much a timing hero. And maybe we'll see some you know, contests of the stacks, some deep wards and vision for the ganks for Team Spirit to, to enable that. 
and try, I try to shut down VTune a little bit. Lays on that Dawnbreaker. Kind of curious to see what item build we see from him. The Echo Saber has been kind of popular from a lot of these offlane strength heroes. The Night Stalker, the Dawnbreaker, kind of scaling into more of a right click carry rather than the utility that sometimes we expect from the position three. And the Poshka there leading the charge with the Warlock and getting ourselves into game one. Zap! I'll be up against Team Spawn. What a surprise! Your name, We get a pause to start things off. As is tradition, TA with three branches. That's it. Does not want to buy anything else. Probably going to be Band of Elven Skin to have some extra damage and then turn that into Power Treads. And you've got Solo to keep healing you up and sustain you in the lane. The lesson for you He's going to go back here. Band of Elven Skin there. You are correct. Treads and Tango's queued. Don't stay spirit very quickly out don't of the fountain, already smoked up. Neposhka, Yatoro, Toronto, Tokyo. All coming out in towards mid to try and get that vision down. Uh, it looks like no one's going to be there first, though. Yeah, he gets Zob's ward out first. Mira gets a high ground one up. I'm curious to, to know whether no one saw that happening. Hobbs Ward was placed, they're all still smoked. Now it breaks on Miposhka and he's gonna scout out potential vision there. He pings the wrong side though. They're pinging a different side yeah. for now, so not even close. Two out of two guesses wrong so far. Yeah, Ward was right. Miposhka left. Yatoro. Not starting with those branches and blades of attack we've seen from some of these juggernauts. Opting for more stats and, and regen. Magic stick there up against this Dawnbreaker Rubik lane. And we're going to be spamming out their spells non stop. Animation cancelling the Celestial Hammer. Come on then. Contest this rune if you dare. The Spirit bringing three heroes there. Sweden strong and lays. Fatally bonded and bound to and grabbed by Yabro. He doesn't go for the spin though, just holding on to his mana pool for now. Wants to keep that for the laning stage proper. Yeah, fatal bonds on two people, not as strong. Yatoro did not want to commit. Uh, it's a long cooldown, 40 second cooldown. This is going to be a lot of spam on the top lane. Dawnbreaker plus Rubik. Every single time, like I, I, they do have what it takes to kill the range creep with the Fate Bolt. So not too much of a kill threat unless Navi overextends because you have no slow. It's more going to be about sustaining this Juggernaut because nice uh, as we said, these two heroes do put a lot of damage early on. It's front to Tokyo in that mid lane. No CS yet, just gonna drag the wave. Got himself one deny. Sweet and strong forced away. No one with his flame guard. How, how does this work out against the scatter blast? Is the snapfire gonna have the upper hand burning through flame guard with the magic damage he's got? Uh, let me do the math because I did forget uh, level 3, 160, so extra 60, 240. Uh, I think you should, yeah, you should be able to break the flame guard with uh, at every single level with Scatter Blast. So it, it's going to be good for Snapfire. Like, too much harassment. It will be some poke and prodding from no one as well, but yeah, I love Snapfire in this matchup. So then does the change come from the Ember Spirit? Do we see the Slight maxed out with the chains now? Or does he continue to go for Flame Guard for that farming speed? He might put another point in Slight. Definitely has the option. Or Mira. Poison Touch, an incredibly annoying ability. Especially when you're trying to drag Creep Waves around. And he's going to have to Mango TP all the way back to Fountain. Oof, it's a lot of gold. That's 170 gold forced. Yeah, it's all about the little things in the laning stage. Up at top, Lays and Sweden is strong. A little bit of a lane drag back there. Secure the deny on the range creep. And Miposhka even using that Shadow Word aggressively to try and do a bit of chip damage. Leaves him wide open to get run at by the Starbreaker and the Hammer, and Lays gets the first blood. Solo tipping Miposhka. They don't have ability to stop Starbreaker from going off, and that's a big issue. Especially if they manage to connect onto Warlock. Two stuns in lane, can't reposition him. Could be a bit problematic for Warlock, but Yatoro, it's all about securing his farm. This, like, they didn't pick this to get the kills, especially on Hero. 
like Dawnbreaker, if you have, if you just play passively, Celestial Hammer, run away, should be okay. Solo, he dies to the idol on the blue boy. And that's also an earned charge. So, oh, yes. pretty big one. Yeah, Kalash finished off his earn right on time. He can come back into this lane and start to threaten V-Tune. TA currently 13 last hits, looking pretty good. The spin up top, Yatero. Show his strength against Sweden strong. Rubik having none of it. Got magic stick, got fairy fire. And the ability to move back and batter into Miposhka's Warlock. Try and stop him from getting this pull off. Nice telekinesis there, should do the trick. Yeah, pops his stick in fairy fire as well. But now Rubik's out of the lane for a little bit. Let's Efficiency. Give. Well, think about fixing this rune or there he's talking to no one and no one said I want to pick it up instead. Hey, give me the bottle refill. Let me keep going in this mid lane. 18-2 on him. Pretty much dead even with the snap fire for now. He's already pushed that mid lane towards the tier one. Collapses Enigma, getting those denies as usual. And so it feels like there's so much more of this lane dragging and manipulation of creep waves this tournament than I've seen in the past few months from the DPC. Everyone very focused on getting advantageous matchups and getting every little efficient amount. Teams of farm. got way better at it, understand what needs to be done, and it's just a Dota thing that is getting exploited. I would love to see something change in the next part, patch regarding Dyer's that. Structures are fortified. You, you, what, you want no more pulling? Yeah, or, I, I, more I pulling. don't like that you can make a new lane for yourself. Okay, makes sense. No one did back out that flame god. Does help him accelerate and farm when he's back in the jungle, of course, but he's taking uh, yeah, some heavy hits from the turret of Toronto, Tokyo. Solo there inside the creep wave. Did it again to the urn and the Eidolons. Tossed back by Mira, finished off by Collapse. This bottom lane is not going too well. Templar Assassin did get some CS, but right now getting more and more difficult. Uh, so if Solo decides to go bottom, that means that probably he's going to die one more time. And it's going to be a lot of pressure early on from Enigma. Going into Blink Dagger after finishing Urn and Arcane Boots. So Collapse, no shenanigans, uh, understands that if he gets that Blink BKB Black Hole, there's only Rubik that can steal it and counter it. <laughs> Mirror zoning two of them out from the lane and the jungle. Not far has even made her way down here, maybe looking for a bit of a, bit of a go on V tune, but they're pinging this bottom wave. Navi realizes Eidolons have already spawned out. Catapult is there, and Collapse has to be stopped. Someone has got to deal with this man, because Tier 1 Tower is going to take an absolute hammering. It's going to be Solo, who dies one more time. Mira most likely going to make a move, or they use a scan, see if there's someone there. Oh, never mind. The Toronto uses can to secure his rune. It's my rune now. Things very calm here for Team Spirit. Not under any threat. Knowing that TA needs a good 15, 20 minutes to build herself up. And Ember Spirit not in a position to really play with any of these supports that he's got on his side. Mira knows. I mean, Mira is a smart player because he saw. Dazzle leveling up. If you put the scoreboard down, they're gonna find Dazzle. So, so the trick here is, uh, if you're in a situation like this, uh, you put the scoreboard down. You see that Dazzle is level two, and if you see him leveling up and not showing on lanes, that means that he's probably stuck in here. Oh, that's clever because he's near the creep wave, getting that experience. Yes. Yeah. That's a sick little trick. Use that in your pubs, everybody. That's why we see pro, pro players on their streams spamming scoreboard, isn't it? They're always tapping scoreboard, like, oh, someone leveled up, is someone doing, doing well? They hit level six yet. He tuned. Is level six, as is Toronto Tokyo. Launched out. The Mortimus kisses, doesn't get the kill, and now being chased by no one. And Sweden strong. The Miposhka there with a shadow word to keep them topped up. Navi attempting aggression, but Team Spirit reacting in kind. Phase boots first, no one ember spirit. Quite often, it feels like we've seen this brown boots maelstrom build from embers, but he's going for more of a early game impact build. I don't, I don't mind like full orb of corrosion on ember spirit. 
to be able to you know, slow them down uh, makes a difference in some of these fights. I'm just gonna walk it back. Doesn't feel any pain really from the Flame Guard. The ward from Solo though, at least getting rid of some of that vision that Spirit were placing deep in the jungle. To continually hunt and move and rest like this. Damage Dazzle. Yeah, Solo, he does have a Grave, the Malefice and the Urn, they're annoying. But he's gonna get himself a bit of distance here, away from Collapse and maybe just about Another survive. Another Urn Charge. He's got, just about gets the vision on him and a dominating streak as Mira. Avalanche Tots onto the two of them, Remedy forward though, no one. Slays the Tiny at long last. <laughs> A bit of a response from Na'Vi, a bit of life in them as well. Oh man, this is gonna be 9-10 minutes. Enigma with the Blink Dagger, Mana Boots, and Urn of Shadows. It's getting out of control for Enigma, how much pressure he does. The thing is, he can also defend the Tier 1 tower on the top lane if Na'Vi decides to go there. Na'Vi's tower damage is really weak until Templar Assassin gets Desolator up. Yes, it's pitiful. Need those catapults. Try and play around there. V2. Just sitting back, farming away. They're stacking up agents for him as well, so he can swing up to triangle and keep that acceleration. Yadaro using Omni Slash top to try and buy some time. I guess we'll get kill. a kill. Oh, well, the healing ward is still going as well. Lays trying to chase with the Celestial Hammer, but he's going to miss out on that one. And Poshka's arrived. Plenty of sustain there as the healing ward finally killed off. But Juggernaut now can just stay in the lane. He's gonna be full HP. Mango popped. Some tangos on Vorlock. And we'll have another heal in a couple of seconds. So big turnaround play. Heavily commitment. Heavy commitment from Navi, but not getting anything out of it. Oh, maybe a go there. Just, just chipping away. Alright, you have to run. He's got that shadow word on him. Do you have some big ulties ready for spirit again? The avalanche to mid. Toronto Tokyo has kisses ready. They would like to use this black hole. Maybe catch out no one and solo in the mid spot as Collapse moves in towards that area. And it's just been perfect efficiency from Team Spirit so far. Cutting their way into that bottom jungle, forcing Na'Vi into a tiny area on the map where they can actually farm and hold their own. And this is the smoke play that could be the undoing of Na'Vi. Spirit. Faithful Bonds on mid to show there's a hero there. Well, Mira, with Toronto Tokyo, wandering into Triangle, hunting TA. The trap sees them. Two-man avalanche into the kisses. Focusing v Tune. Is he going for the TP out? The Dawnbreaker Solar Guardian's landing, so v Tune decides to turn and fight. No. They strike back with the numbers. This is what we talked about. The, the big turnaround play from Navi. They don't necessarily need to make uh, aggressive moves. It's all about uh, hitting this Deso timing on Temporal Assassin, plus Dragonlance, and then uh, making stuff done. Dawnbreaker ulti, plus potentially a Grey from Solo, could uh, make... Ooh, manages to TP out. If Rubik was level 5 there with one extra point in Fate Bolt, I think uh, it would make the difference. Look at the courier delivered from Na'Vi. Everything's busy. It's a squadron of couriers. Yeah. Radiance oh, and no one, he wanted to come and steal this stack, but Team Spirit have the numbers here to guard it. And an avalanche toss back, V-Tune sent in, Golem dropped in on him as well. Oh, the Grave, Solo trying to save up the TA, but she's stuck in the middle of four enemy heroes. He even gets hurricaned around by the Wild Wing Ripper, and now Mira with the Golem charging forward to force Na'Vi back even further. I say it's a decent idea and a good attempt from Na'Vi. They spotted the stack, they wanted to contest it. But Team Spirit all there. Little too greedy. And this is why I love this placement abilities Dyer's against Dazzle, because you don't get in range. Like, he still managed to get the Shallow Grave off, but as time progresses, it's going to get uh, even more difficult. And then Rock on top of that uh, Enigma. Okay, he decided to go for Aether Lens instead, and now going for BKB. Collapse is going to be a huge issue throughout this whole game, because he's off to a an extremely good start top lane again. Yeah, onto Miposhka. Oh, nice little kill on the pause five. But why Why the Aether Lens over a Blink Dagger on this Enigma? He feels like he can keep the distance with Aether Lens. It gives him uh, more mana. It's also a farming tool. No one. 
I'm going to go at Toronto Tokyo, and with Lays coming in, that Celestial Hammer allows him to close the gap, but it's a tanky snapfire. Don't forget, Strength Hero with 1700 HP. Incredibly strong. Dyer's structures are fortified. Bonds was stolen by the Rubik. A little bit annoying. There are some really good spells to steal this game. Radiance bottom tower of course, Black attack. Hole, Rock, but even Avalanche from Tiny, Healing Ward, and Scatter Blast once you have Shard, Cookie. Team Spirit, Dyer's they will fight whenever they have their ultis available. Like, they're definitely gonna try to take the fight. And now Navi getting that uh, tier one tower finally, 13 minutes in. Yeah, they need to kick it into the next gear. V2 now gonna claim first objective for them. 6500 net worth on the TA, so she is following incredibly well, but this Enigma, top of the chart. And snap Jug, not too far behind. You know, Dawnbreaker and the Ember Spirit are definitely lagging behind the pack of heroes of Cause. Tier 1 mid, claimed up by Collapse, helped up by Yataro. Cookie in towards Lays, not going to connect. <laughs> Yataro did not want to hit Creep second time, because Lays was there, wanted to be annoying and <laughs> tried to deny the Rage Creep. Mira gets his combo out, but he's slowed by the trap. Kisses with a fatal bond. Let's see where Collapse goes now. Trying to move towards Sweden strong and a spin out from Yatro should secure this kill oh, quite great, simply. Not there on time. Solo can't save his buddy. Yatro a little bit out of place now though, with no Omni Slash and no spin. But again, Navi just don't have the connection, they don't have these stuns and catch abilities. As no one's forced a remnant back defensively. It feels like Navi just getting pushed back further and further. Net worth lead is only going to build with his Hand of Midas Juggernaut and the farming rate of the Enigma. Very limited space where Navi can farm. Templar Assassin has been mostly in a triangle, but someone needs to push the top lane, play a little bit more aggressive, risky, I would say, and no one is going to be that hero. And she's kind of a, a vacuum cleaner as well, soaking up a lot of the farm that leaves Ember and Dawn with very little. They are still getting some decent timings on their items, though. Echo Saber's there for Lays, and about 600 gold away from that Maelstrom on the Ember. Solo out on a deep warding mission. Does get into that top jungle, but I think he's been spotted moving across there. Team Spirit have a ward by their outpost. Yeah, I, I love these wards, like in the outpost, you just don't expect them to be there. Gives that perfect vision of two members of Na'Vi. Spirit doing the mirror movement, holding down the bottom jungle. Ward in behind bottom tier two to look for smokes and anyone coming to defend. When you said mirror movement, I thought they were ganking Tiny. <laughs> the mirror movement? Yeah. Where is Tiny right now? He's up top alone. Just getting some golden experience. But Solo, the real back. split pushing Dazzle 5. Oh, is he? He was near tier 2 tower. Nice try. Lays, very nicely done there. Pushing out the wave without really showing himself. So the soft defense of this tier 2 tower. Knowing that something is lurking in the shadows just above him on that staircase. Still gonna have the rock dropped on him though. Chaotic Goffrin and the Scatter Blast there gonna blow up this poor Dawnbreaker. They come in, cast their spells. Team Spirit, like, like you were saying. They're not messing around. At the end of the draft, you're like, if they see an opportunity to cast spells, they're gonna do it. Miposhka initiates with Chaotic Offering. It's a it's a big kill. And uh, this also opens up the Roche for Navi. Ha! <laughs> Snap Illusion. Walks into the pit. Now Team Spirit know exactly what's up. Roche is about to die, though. Very close to dropping. And Spirit, they're nowhere near enough by to contest this. Yatro was up in that top jungle, but instead, Team Spirit focus on that bottom tower and, of course, unlocking the outpost for themselves. Good move from Navi, realizing that they're showing Radiant's way too many heroes. Three shown on bottom. Attack. One was underneath the ward, and one was top. So immediately, inside the Roche pit, Deso finally down on Temple Assassin. Man, I'm, I'm still looking at Collapse. The most farm hero in the game has BKB Lens, Urn of Shadows, 17 minutes into the game. Have we seen a black hole yet? No. I don't think we have. It's a, the threat of the black hole. Is sometimes stronger than the black hole itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what's going through his mind. Go on. Go on. Give it to her. 
Just the kisses and the Malefice. Shadow Earn on top and Lay is graved by Solo. Is that enough to save the Urn? Oh, the heal from the Dazzle. It's going to keep her alive, it looks like. Back to Fountain we go. 100 HP remains. The Dawnbreaker survives. Yatoro is being dived by no one. Ember Spirit trying to put the fear into Yatoro's Juggernaut, playing very forward in this dire triangle. This could have been potentially a black hole, the first usage where you suck him closer so Dazzle can't get into range. What do we have? Fire Snap cookie stolen by Rubik. Didn't talk about no one. He's having a okay game in the middle of the pack. Uh, not 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 really active because you have Templar Assassin as your one. Uh, tier one tower on the top has fallen relatively late. The two supports not that good at rotating, so yeah. need, still needs some time to catch up. Yeah, it feels like he's really just going to be cutting waves and split pushing for the majority of this game. Like you say, he doesn't have a support to play with. There's no real you know there's, there's a tiny no Earth Spear on his team. We'll try and make a go on Mira here. TA, Rubik, and the Dazzle all nearby to finish off the Tiny. One more hit, v tune that's what you need. The Trap will give them the vision they need. And maybe push on the Tier 2 themselves up top. A swarming bottom, though. Dire Ward scouts out Dawnbreaker again. This time, Lay's not going to go for that additional wave. And back to mid instead. down here. And that will eventually force Na'Vi to come back and maintain that lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And it really is Team Spirit just planting themselves with these key points on the map. Bottom jungle, bottom tier two, in the mid lane as well. Spirit Poshka, wants to kill Lays one more time. They're trying to kill the Poshka mid, no one. He's on the Warlock. Ember Spirit giving chase towards him. V2 coming in as well. They'll find the Poshka at long last, while Toronto Tokyo blown up by V2. And Lays, well, he survived down bottom to the aggression coming out of Team Spirit. They didn't Yatoro. spend any ultis though, did they? He's always going to be okay with the spin DP out, but uh, overextending Going for the creep wave now and will TP out in the end. They need Tiny to also pick up a Blink Dagger, so Mira's farming that uh, very close. Needs 100 gold to finish it off. Oh, good catch. Quick dispatch. v -tune. slays the Enigma. Three kills in a row for Na'Vi, picking up momentum. But you see the, the green lights for Team Spirit, you know once they all respawn, they are ready to smoke, go and fight. Because this Aegis of the Immortal, you know, a minute and a half left. Could still be a target to jump on that TA and kill her off twice. Na'Vi has a very good understanding in this game, how they need to play. Splitting up the map and not allowing Team Spirit to group up and use those big teamfight ulties. Because if you're split on two different sides, you don't get like the real value from rock uh, from from the black hole that we are yet to see. Smoke from spirit. Yeah, we knew this was coming. Navi, not reliant on any big ulties like you've been saying from draft through the initial portion of this game. Mira will toss Rubik back in. A simple kill for them. But what's the next step? They're trying to force a team fight, try and kill a core, or is it aiming towards tier two mid? Seems like they just want to farm. For now, top lane needed to be fixed. The bottom lane also pushed out. But Toronto Tokyo with his boots of travel might be able to connect with the team. And again, Na'Vi using the vision they have. Because Team Spirit did show two heroes. Enigma TP top, Toronto Tokyo TP bottom, and Na'Vi strikes immediately. Man, they go straight on them. Yeah, forced the golem as well. v had no fear in the world. Running straight towards Team Spirit, forcing them to scramble. And they're back on this tier two mid lane. Toronto, Tokyo, Yatoro, Cookie in, but a great blink away, very fast on the trigger. Templar Assassin is out of that. Dazzle. And Navi plays this long drawn out game. Team Spirit didn't have a chance to show these big team fight ultis in action. Yeah, Poshka buying a gem, wants to get rid of the traps, some vision. Yeah, that deep ward near the tier 3 tower from Spirit, allowing them to see whoever shows there, whoever wants to push out the wave. It seems like they want to smoke again and make something done, but I don't see any smokes left on them. Well, they've got to get something done. There's one on Mira. Okay. Okay, they're ready to go. Yeah, there's just ne never, never been more than two or three heroes together clumped up. Na'Vi have 
played every single one of these engagements to perfection. And collapse, yeah, with this Etherlands BKB still unused, uh, along with a black hole. Two BKBs about to be done on Navi. V Tune did disassemble his Dragon Lance. And Dawnbreaker about to finish hers. Even no one, 100 gold away from it. So triple BKB, triple nine second BKB. That's 27 seconds, Gary, if you can't do the math. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I can't, so it's appreciated. And do you remember at school when the teachers were telling us we'd never have calculators in our pockets? And now we do. We do have camera, We've got phone. computers in our pockets. You, it has everything. Did they allow you to use calculators in school? During for, math, or it's like, yeah, now you you gotta you gotta know all this stuff. You, for some things, it's making you dumber. There were definitely some lessons where calculators were banned. They were like, in 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 some physics lessons or some math lessons, they were like, no, you have to do the manual working out, and you got to learn these equations and you know F equals M A and all that stuff. You gotta memorize everything. Shut up about the math. Oh yeah, because they're gonna get the catch. Mira's tiny yet again, the target of choice for Navi. Straight in towards the Tiny, and Team Spirit struggling to react. Yatro, spin, gets the cookie to save him. Team Spirit retreating once more. Navi really putting a lot of pressure on them. They're so desperate for a team fight, but they just can't get one. They Maybe. can't find opening. Like, they literally cannot... Uh, Navi's not hitting them. That's, that's the thing. It's not that Team Spirit doesn't want it. It's the way Navi plays. They're locking Goes for the, the pickoffs. Trying to force like potentially a bad black hole or use a rock, and then Navi's gonna play even more aggressive. Especially incredible patience from Collapse, honestly. I mean, we'd have, we'd have seen black holes chuck left I, and right. I don't like this shard pickup on Enigma oh? this early on. It's a, I think it's 1400 gold down the drain because he didn't even use a single black hole yet. Well, may maybe the one that he uses will show it off. Maybe, but. I would prefer if it, that's like Lincoln's Blink or Blink Lincoln's into Shard. Mira, well, yeah, again, he's in the front lines, taking a beating from V2's TA. A dominating streak grabbed up by him. And Team Spirit, they're, they're cowering, hiding in their base. So afraid of what Na'Vi are bringing to the table. Two lanes pushing towards the Dire Base now, top and mid. And Na'Vi, they can back up, farm through Triangle, come to bottom, push out that wave. So much more effective at gathering the farm they need across all of their cores. Losing so much map right now. You have no one who's teeping bottom, will clear the wave, come back with the remnant. So all three lanes are going to be in a good spot. Roshan may respawn in 50 seconds. This is where Team Spirit needs to strike. Like, they can't allow Navi to get another Rosh, because it, it could be a disaster. It could be the beginning of the end. 45 seconds to go. Team Spirit smoke. Born heroes in behind Yatharo's Juggernaut. TA traps and Observer Wards all around can spot Team Spirit coming in. And they break the smoke. Oh, Lays gets jumped, but there we go with the Magic Community. BKB is up for him. Has the shard as well as he turns and fights. Battling into Toronto, Tokyo, and Mira. He's soloing 1v5. Nothing can stop this Lays Dawnbreaker. Maybe a rock dropped in, but Collapse has died already. No buyback. Coming through yet. Oh, Toronto, Tokyo barely escapes through oh, the TP. No mana for and Mira's change. out. He's dead as well. Three heroes escape from Team Spirit, but my goodness, Navi, the uh, the confidence of Lays there just to turn around and fight into them. There was like there was supposed to be Omni Slash, uh, potentially like even a black hole just to hold him in place because Lays is super farming. He's very difficult to kill. 2.5k HP. And inside the Roche Pit they go. So that's Aegis and also Shard. So Templar Assassin will be able to have more control. Maybe they want to give it to Ember Spirit, but I would still prefer to see it on Templar Assassin. You have to throw Snipes a Courier though. Ethel ends removed. Sad about it. it. Does spin TP back down to bottom lane. Yeah, Team Spirit going to be running low on smokes at this point. Feels like they need them. Smokes and Observer Wards. Surprise and vision. Requirements here for Spirit to really get these team fights going. They've got some good ward coverage around their triangle in that mid lane. Yatoro gonna have to spin again to get away from no one's ember. Now we do have a blink on the Enigma and a good toss back. 
Templar Assassin sent oh, into the, the low ground. Run, but BKB's up and still holds Aegis. Mira slowed down. The June finished off by the Omni Slash. Maybe another round again. They've got Black Hole. Collapse will throw it in. And Emma Scratch jumped into the middle of it. The Great from Solo. It's not going to save him. V June still going to get spun down and blown up by Team Spirit. The one fight that they needed. Finally, a victory for them as Lays is on the run. BKB ends. Mira and Yatoro chasing forward. They can see the dawn and they want her bad. But the Blink's on cooldown. And Rubik with the left drag back. Hold Team Spirit away for now. You might Mira. still get it. His Blink Dagger's uh, ready soon. And he knows. He knows exactly where Sweden Strong is. But the, the Black Hole black stolen. Hole. No, no follow, follow up. up. Fake hype will blink out. <laughs> <laughs> he will escape, though, in the end. And that was Good meant toss to be backs. A... Being able to like reposition people is uh, how Team Spirit uh, won TI with uh, with that Magnus with Spears from Mars. And if we see that again, I think uh, Team Fight would have been played out differently because Solo was really late with the grave. He needed to use that grave early on on Templar Assassin, and they wouldn't even lose Aegis. I don't think they would uh, kill her one time, because she would be able to get out of the trouble. Yeah, BKB Refraction. Try and turn around with that. A decent fight for Team Spirit. No, oh, Yatoro. No TP. He's going to get caught up here. Manta to get away from the chains. The healing ward down as well. Miposhki coming in, thinking about dropping the rock. The Centaur stop! Oh, what a great stun! Still going to lose, lose Yatoro, though, in his... Mega kill streak. Group her, if you don't know what to do, if there's a lot, you have nothing to stun, group around the centaur. He yeah. will help you out. I sure will. Yeah, what, what happened there? It looked like he was trying to spin TP, but something went horribly wrong. Couldn't get himself away from danger. No one going to go out. Back again into these side lanes, cut the waves, put Team Na'Vi back on the map. And into the position they were in previously. Team Spirit still has a minute to wait for Black Hole to come off cooldown. That is the key to unlock the team fights for them. Toronto, Tokyo. What's he got? Blink, Boots of Travel, BKB. He wants the Tome next to try and get to level 20. Do we do we start to see the Snapfire transition into the Daedalus and yeah, the right it, damage? Yeah, it's one of the better late game mid heroes because you do have like level 20 and level 25 talent are pretty insane. It did go for Scatterblast damage on level 15 instead of the Lil Trader attacks. It does allow you to instantly kill the creep wave with uh, just a Scatterblast, but then you need to get extra levels. Like if we are talking about getting level 25, uh, you need those two hits. Yeah, just there we saw him do it. Immediately blows up the creeps, blinks and TPs. As Team Spirit rally around their mid-tier three. Black Hole not too far away from cooling down now. And after taking the Aegis away from the TA, may maybe Na'Vi not going to feel as comfortable going up to high ground or trying to win a team fight without that next Roche. That, that, that's the big threat, isn't it? Team Spirit's high ground defense is ridiculous. Gotta Toss be careful about the tossbacks, yeah. uh, Midnight Pulse, like right in front of the tower. Scatterblast uh, kills the creep wave instantly. So they need to like poke, potentially try to see what happens. Maybe Team Spirit uh, makes some mistakes. They do have mo a lot of damage to first one target, TA, Deso. Full Daedal is done. So if Ember Spirit gets the chain on someone, she might follow up and uh, try to delete the target immediately. Yeah, just clear them out. Get into that situation where you've got buyback advantage. If you're forcing fights on Radiant's doorstep, get a pick off, Radiant force a buyback. Retreat, reset, go again. And they are smoking into Dire Triangle, scanning forward but spotting nobody. Looking to maybe try and deward some of these high grounds. Team Spirit have got some sneaky wards out themselves. A lot of good vision around that area. And smoking out of the base. No one does take out one of the orbs. Still one standing in the triangle. DD though. bottom. Oh, TA with a DD. No room. one will give V Tune his bottle. This is gonna hurt. Unless he gets caught. Look at Team Spirit. Avalanche toss back. Remnant comes back in as the Omni Slash focuses Lays. Dawnbreaker dead and collapse. He's been lifted up, the Golden Drop, but he's already been blown up by V2. The massive amount of well, physical damage. Does 
responding back to want to come into this fight again. Remnant off to the left, but in comes Mira once again. Avalanche tossed to kill Rubik and two heroes down on the side of Na'Vi. Time to run it back. Team Spirit, they spend the Golem and the Omni Slash, but they still hold on to Kisses and Black Holes. Mira is holding Team Spirit in the game with his toss packs into Omni Slash. This is what they need. Like, they need the, to put Navi out of their comfort zone because Navi has been playing extremely well for the first uh, 25 minutes of the game. That's only a 5k lead, 30 minutes in. Team Spirit more than capable to drag this out. We, we've seen this kind of thing from RNG, LGD as well, right? Extend the game and you're looking for that one key well, team two. fight to start domineering the Radiance pace. Middle tower is under attack. You can fly back advantage yourself. Uh, something that Na'Vi will start considering now though with Enigma having bought back. Kill him once before he can get the black hole out and you are in a great spot. Lifting up Miposhka. He's holding Gem. Doesn't go for the full D ward. Smart of him. Could, could have been a disaster. Losing a gem and also losing a hero one minute before the Roche spawns. Potentially. Definitely troublesome. Because it looks like Snapfire is going to go for the Shivers Guard. Wants to be tankier against this TA with her obscene amount of physical damage. I did hit level 20. To get that little shredder attack. Talent. Collapse. What's that? Eon disc coming up. Yeah, he's, he's got to know. He's not allowed to die. Can't get burst down. He has to survive to get off this black hole. Different thinking. Because he used the buyback, needs to have something to protect himself. Unless there's a good rock. He, he got destroyed immediately. One point the Two or 1.3k crit coming yeah. out from Templar Assassin. <laughs> That's some nasty stuff. The after is level 23, closing in on 24. That Hand of Midas definitely kicking in. He wants to get that imbalanced level 25 talent on Juggernaut. The plus 475 HP, one of the most fun Radiant's talents in the game. That's one of the flashiest ones, isn't it? Yeah. It would be incredibly skillful to use it too. Roshan, 35 seconds away. Team Spirit. Oh, they love these moves. They know exactly where they are. I mean, both teams should have a pretty good read considering uh, how they keep the distance. Navi will just continue cutting in the waves. Ember Spirit, very free to push in mid. Move up to top with you. Your Rubik, your Dazzle. Regeneration. Considering ploy here to go up high ground, but Mira's in. Quick lift up, no toss back. And the kiss is launched towards Solo, gonna get cancelled out by Lays. BKB Dawnbreaker stopping Spirit in their tracks and now ditching away. They forced Spirit to react. They've all come back to defend this top tier three, so Na'Vi once again in the driving seat. Let's see if they decide to go inside the pit immediately. Never refuse go. Because this is Aghanim's Scepter. A freebie. That's uh, 6,000 gold. It does not take up the slot. No one ready to break the smoke. They do have vision on the high ground. Right, both Observer on. and Sentry. Mira chain stuff. Roshan's dead. V2 going to grab the Aegis. The Yule's up there. Mira trying to save himself, but slight. The catch from no one. Going to get have a toss. The spun down. Jumps to his remnant. Very safe play from no one's Ember. Navi. Prime position now to think about getting these waves out. They've got bottom and mid to maintain. But they've got plenty of time to do it. Get towards this dire high ground. Force a fight somewhere around there. Templar Assassin's too far. He, she has way too many items. Shard uh, from Roshan. Aghanim Scepter going into MKB next. Holding on to Cheese. And now with that Aghanim Scepter, you have ability to be anywhere on the map where you place the traps. Solo! No way is he allowed no. to get out of here and they... Oh, they fell a toss, but a good yule's up. Cancels the TP at the last second. Oh, that was a close one. Uh, again, the old man, you know, he's got some moves. Four staff, grave, even through an avalanche. I got worried there for a second. Oh, for Solo? He was close to death. 
full MKB down on TA, seeing that Juggernaut went for Butterfly, and you want to have something to pierce through that evasion. I still like this from Team Spirit. Never afraid to go across the river. Get into enemy territory. They're the ones that still want to force a team fight. They want these enclosed areas. Get themselves into a position where there's a nice little spot on a staircase or a, or a ramp. Get the black hole on them. As tier four items do start to flow out of the neutrals. Spell prism there for the jug. Probably going to hand that to the enigma, we would assume. Quickening charm for collapse still. And an, oh, an arcane rune. Toronto, Tokyo. Gave it, it to over. collapse. Penta Edge Sword for the jug. There's some big stuff coming out. Ninja Gear drop as well. So, oh, it's a difficult decision sometimes, isn't it? Ninja Gear is so good on the Enigma. It looks like he's going to be holding that rather than the Spell Prism. He's going to be swapping items in and out. He wants to be smoked in the back so he can be found, but also holding on to Quickening Charm. Who, who's, got, who's got the Prism then? Did I see that incorrectly? They do get a jump onto the Ember Spirit. Ray from Solo's there. Oh, onto the high ground and a focus in up towards V2. Aegis popped out. Yatro doing some sick damage while Lays just chased back onto Toronto. Tokyo collapses in with a black hole on two. The golden drops with a fatal bond. Great kisses the storm. Black hole cancelled immediately. And Yatro comes out with a triple kill. Uh, this shard now coming into a clutch play from Enigma. Suck, trying to suck in Rubik. He was uh, way too far away, but I like that Team Spirit's not hesitating at all. Like, they're very, very <sighs> decisive. Yeah, and that was the word that I was looking for. Thank you, Gary. Immediately running down the mid lane looking for tier two. Hey, is, is this a chance, though, for, for Na'Vi with buybacks or anything like that? Oh, TA doesn't have buyback. Even with all these other stuff. She invested down. everything in MKB. Because Collapse used Black Hole with Arcane Rune and also did have Quickening Charm. Another one will be ready in 50 seconds. Goodness. It looks like Yatoro just holding the Spell Prism as his item. He's not going to hand it over and Mira Avalanche can't get the toss. Good BKB from no one. Disengage with the Tiny thanks to the cookie. And the building's crumbling. Entire lane of barracks down. They could think about bottom lane as well. Still 30 seconds with no TA and at this point they've probably got to be wondering. Hey, she's not got buyback, does she? She definitely does not because uh, she would have used it and they forced the BKB out of Ember Spirit when TA Respawns, Black Hole will be available again. And Mira's jumped in once more. Spin out from Yatero. Straight in with the Abyssal Blade, catching him and stunning him. Moves back towards the buildings, though. Focus on the objectives while Collapse Ninja Gear smoke. I, I want to see a fake smoke. I want to see them fake smoking and going back in. Black okay. Hole's ready. Black Hole's ready. Collapse coming in and he catches them. He's going to take down the Dazzle and Lazy Dawnbreaker being dragged away by Yatero. He's had to spin out a range of no one and V2, and the TA turns back into collapse. Enigma drops, and Na'Vi, they fight back on their own doorstep. I thought only... collapse had the perfect one, but they got out of range. Only one buyback used from Na'Vi, so that's okay. That's a dazzle. I like how the, everyone else in the team spirit understands, like, oh, we also need to kill Rubik Yatoro. Gets the bash. Oh, can he finish him off? What a great Omni Slash from Yatoro. Abyssal Blade helping out greatly. And Lays, even with a Solar Guardian, couldn't help no one. This is this is big. Ember does have buyback, but these are top of the place. Like one of the reasons why like these players want a TI is uh, it makes a difference. Not afraid to go for like kills like this. A high risk, high reward kind yeah, of place. It, it can also look like, oh no, he didn't get the bash off, but with the attack speed that he has from Butterfly, it's kind of guaranteed. Another catch. Nice on V-Tune this time. Look at how quickly she dies. Yatro just slices her in half. Lay's trying to save up V-Tune, and no oh, one solo gets the great in. No one does return with the buyback as well, but V-Tune dead with no buyback on her. A golem in, mirror on the high ground, is whacking down in towards Na'Vi. And this is looking rough for them now. Lays will return to the battlefield, but no one's on the run. Sweden Strong and Solo getting chased down by Yatoro. Good call game it. is called. V-Tune says it's all over now. Team Spirit 
finally. Like, we didn't see big team fight from Team Spirit for the first, like, 30 minutes. Navi did a very good job uh, not going for those uh, fights, instead going for the pickoffs. But in the end, finally, Collapse manages to get a uh, couple of good black holes. And, uh, yeah, Yatoro on Juggernaut uh, continue to farm up. Uh, Hand of Midas in the end, uh, working out at least yeah. in this game. But, uh, yeah, did, did this move on a mid lane, uh, getting the Ember Spirit, uh, forcing a buyback from him. It was... Uh, Way too difficult in the end, like the overtime damage from the Midnight Pulse. Uh, for me personally, Mira, Mira is my MVP. Yeah, because uh, those tossbacks is what kept them in the game when when it mattered. Beautiful stuff from them. I mean, again, we're talking about these long drawn out games where you have one team fight that just defines the entire game. Forty minutes, you know, down the drain for Navi of a pretty exceptional play of split pushing, wave cutting, look incredibly good. But game one goes to Team Spirit as we'll take a quick break and return with game two.
can be found in any number of places. Scientists will tell you that it comes in Newtons. Gamers will say that it can be found in silky skills. We will say that the power lies in real thrills. In the play with perfect ping. In the runes and crystals. In every frag and gank. In your personal winnings. Lock and load for PGL Arlington. And we are back, game two here with Na'Vi taking on Team Spirit. A bit of, bit of a slow, long game one, but Team Spirit showed that their team fight prowess was better than Na'Vi's split pushing. Yeah, in the end, the execution from Team Spirit uh, did prevail. Like they, They're understanding what needs to be done, because Na'Vi was leading the charge for the first 30, oh, 35 yeah. minutes of the game. But uh, at one point, Team Spirit, you know, they held hands. They're like, <laughs> okay, it, it's time to go. It's time to use these big team fight ultis and... Uh, just cast our spells. Yeah, and secure the upper bracket, because with this W, they oh. just did. Very true. And how, how are Na'Vi doing? They're still sort of middle of the table, not doing too poorly. And they do need... Every win that they can get. Dire team ban. Absolutely. And uh, right now, they're Your sitting on a sixth place, potentially seventh. Uh, the only team who is below them is Tundra. So they need the, the, any kind of wins they have to be able to not get eliminated. Yeah, we could have one of those situations with lots of tiebreakers, though, with, like you said, Tundra down at the bottom, but there's Na'Vi, Beast Coast, Ten EG, and e remaining. even add Boom in there to the mix, depending on how the results today go Five for potential tiebreakers tomorrow for the last day of groups. But we do have a draft in front of us here for game two. Already a few Dyer picks Team in, back. as we've got Puck, Io, Cottle, Chen removed, Viper, Wyvern, Void, and Bat on the other side. Razor Clock first with Tiny Marcy there for Spirit. Tiny Marcy, something that the PSG LGD ran in the previous series. And uh, you said it, outsiders. They do love Ten to pick these two heroes remaining. together. Two displacement tools. It, it, it's Five always going to be good. Remaining. Like, you can toss people out of uh, cogs, push them out of the cogs, ban. break the link. But Navi opening up differently. Razor plus Clockwork to be able to link onto target and uh, try to get the damage done, have initiation. We've seen what Clockwork can, can do in terms of, like, getting... Uh, like, who was Ten it that stole Aegis, stole the Shard? Oh, was it was it Sweden Five Strong? Seconds remaining. I think it was some, uh, someone else, but... It, uh, was a, it was a Clockwork, right? It was, was Clockwork. For now, we're going to pretend it was Sweden Strong, just so we don't look stupid. I think it, it might have been them against EG. I don't know. I don't know. I had so many games going on. My brain is leaking information very, very quickly. As quickly as I gather it, it's just disappearing out the other side. Enigma banned by Na'Vi, so definitely afraid of that threat that Collapse posed throughout that game one. Collapse played the laning stage extremely well. 10 out of 10, forcing Templar Assassin out early on, taking that tower, getting multiple kills from Dazzle. But uh, yeah, Tiny played by Mira. Made so many moves. Like, he was all over the place throughout the whole game. It sure was. Well, that seems Spirit again taking their time. It seems they're very deliberate 
and slowly going, working through all the options. They've got the, the stacks of papers, the algorithm of drafting in front of them, th thinking Team about which path they should take. And Kunker is that hero in the end. One, one of the guys is pretty good against displacement spells, right? You've got toss, you've got dispose, but it, when you X mark someone defensively or even play aggressively with it, you remove the ability for these, these toss saves or rebound jumps from Marcy to, to do their work. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, this Kunkka band does make a lot of sense for the reasons that you mentioned, Five and also remaining. giving them more team fight, more tankiness, um, Good way to initiate on top of the clockwork and also X mark into static links works amazing. So Team Spirit getting a Rubik, which means that this tiny most likely gonna be a core here. Yeah, that would make sense. We 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 just haven't seen Marcy move into the core role yet, right? Like I think Gunner has played it a couple of times mid. We've seconds, maybe seen remaining. it in position three occasionally, but she's locked into support at this point now. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. Just thinking if they could swap things around. Marcy as an off lane. Just doesn't strike me as a hero that some other heroes can't do the same job better. But yeah, Rubik will have saving tool, another one against the Clockwork. They, like Team Spirit, they're picking, uh, counter picking really hard against both Razor and Clockwork. Very thoughtful process here. And get themselves through this draft. And again, just reiterating Navi, desperate for victories to get themselves away from that bottom portion of the table. Of course, in Group B, one fewer team. It makes it a little bit scary there with those two slots of relegation or elimination, as I should say. They want to try and match themselves Dyer up against you know, EG at 6 and 6, Face Beast Coast left. tied 5 7 with Navi. And a Dawnbreaker again, so still sticking to their guns. You know, Lays had a pretty good performance even through a loss in game one. Uh, standing his ground and battling back whenever he was jumped on. Ten we didn't see Dawnbreaker ulti on top of Black Hole because Black Hole was not used for first 30 minutes of the game. Five seconds but he did a good job. Like his laning stage was pretty solid. Uh, did manage to get the most out of it. I want to see how Team Spirit approaches this Razor pick from the offlane, because they did the counter pick, as we said, having this Rubik, but e eventually you will have a shard, so you can throw people Team out, Spirit's break the link. If they want to go more in terms of counter picking, there's still Morphling available. Okay. They have that super hard carry for them. Snapfire for Na'Vi, stealing... A page out of Team Spirit's book. Remaining. Why is this going to be their, their mid laner? I remaining. guess it's pretty flexible, right? Clock is 4 5, Dawnbreaker 3 4 5, Snap 2 3 4 5. Razor can fill a couple of roles as well. You're not entirely sure where any of these heroes are going, so they can maneuver them around depending on the matchups. I'm trying to figure out exactly what they'll be facing off against. Like, who would you put against the Tiny here? Would you just put Snap against Tiny? They could. Dire team uh, this is Dawnbreaker. Oh, you are so on point. This is Dawnbreaker on the off. Uh, I, well, maybe not. Navi, Navi's still uh, keeping uh, things very open. Because this Morphling makes a lot of sense. They don't have a single silence. So that means as long as he has mana, he will be able Ten to get out of trouble remaining. against this Clockwork. And, of course, Razor matchup or Five he links you, you remaining. link him back. It's always incredibly annoying having his spells Turn used against ban. you. Lycan out. There's something Team Spirit lacking here, a little bit of tower push and tempo. The heroes like Lycan and Beastmaster could absolutely bring to the table. But this, this is where I, I think one of the biggest struggles of drafting Ten a Dota is when you're up remaining. against this kind of flexibility. Banning out in this last stage. Dire team back. Void Spirit, I guess he's a pretty good all-rounder. Uh, one of those heroes, like you said, with a silence, right? Once you get the Aghanim Scepter, you're pretty good against the Morphling. But trying to figure out what your opponents need or want, it's very challenging. Whereas Na'Vi can pretty much be looking at this and Ten say, well, remaining. let's ban some Collapse heroes. Get rid of Lycan, get rid of Amaz. Five seconds We've already removed remaining. the Enigma, Batrider, and the Viper. 
Hmm. Looking at the offlane, they, they would need something uh, something a bit more beefy. Like Rubik Marcy, it's uh, kind of meh. Team Tiny. Okay, so they did ban Dial out, uh, as you said, a couple of collapses heroes. One, two, three, four, five, potentially. Yes. <laughs> so there needs to be... I, I would still love if this is some kind of a strength hero. Going through the hero list... Uh, they do have last pick, so if it's a melee carry for Navi, remain. I wouldn't mind seeing something like Slardar. You did mention Mars, I believe, remain. which is also fine. You have Cogs to work with. Uh, you can push away Dawnbreaker. Uh, you can push away Razor from the Static Link even more. A bit limited on tower damage. Uh, if they had different supports, I would say Dead Prophet. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I was looking at this and thinking if they had different heroes, I'd suggest Darkseer. I'm a big big fan of Darkseer, but it doesn't really fit into what they've got right now. What, what about Na'Vi? It's, again, very challenging to, to try and understand where they're all heading. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Invoker, Team just to be Spirit. able to lock down Morphling. Okay, th this also works. Massive nuke damage. They know already what they're going to pick. It's, it's going to be Mars in the end. Mars and Marcy, and the Morphling. So it is Razor safe lane against Collapse Mars, Dawnbreaker on the off lane with Snap, and Razor Clockwork safe lane. Yeah, it looks like it. So that's going to put Zeus against Tiny. That's going to be pretty good for the Tiny, right? Last tiny tiny does farm up, uh, farm. Yeah, but like both here, th th you're not going to stop Zeus from farming. I want to see how they're going to approach the small camp, whether that's going to be blocked or not. Uh, Morphling does love to play on low HP, and against Zeus, sometimes can be tricky. He can be bursted down. It's a, a I think for remain. Navi, it's very simple Dota, where it's a lot of stuns, a lot of burst remain. damage on their side. Team Spirit does not have that much tower damage, so they will need to play like 35, 40 minute game with their lineup. Because Morphling is one of the heroes that doesn't come online fast compared to some other position ones. Yeah, he needs he needs three, four big items to get himself up and running. But he does have the the ability there to play back, sit in pockets of farm, while the other four are very good at brawling and fighting. The Collapse and Toronto Tokyo. And in fact, all four of these heroes, again, we come back to this topic of displacement and forced movement. Toss, Dispose, Telekinesis, Spear. Four different ways to move the Zeus, the Razor, around in these team fights. It does, Zeus doesn't like to play into those abilities. It could potentially be five if Morphling turns into Snapfire. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, turn into a clock, get the cogs, push people around. Cooking them out there with a stolen Snapfire spells. And away we go, game two. An important one for Na'Vi. Desperate for a victory to stay in the tournament. It's starting to look like down at the bottom of the group. They are close to out, not, not guaranteed by any means. But every win matters. While Team Spirit, like you mentioned earlier, already secured the upper bracket. So we get ourselves out onto this wonderful Dota 2 map. Prepare have fun, for have fun, battle. have fun. No one with a triple. Who wants cookies? Well, too Spirit bad. Wants to smoke. Question is whether Mira will be playing it's safe lane. Judging by the items, he has boots of speed. That means that he will be pulling it. the second wave between tier 1 and tier 2 tower. So they don't want to play the lane. They yeah. don't want to <laughs> mash this Razor. Uh -huh. But always happy to see Mars played by Collapse. Even after all these nerfs, he still can make the hero look imbalanced. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those heroes that they can still use as a, as a flex pick. Because I think we saw Toronto Tokyo play it twice yesterday in a couple of victories with Team Spirit. So they definitely still had that ability to move things around if they had wanted to. Yeah, collapse on his Magnus and his Mars. Incredible team fight initiation. So good at finding spots on the map to hide in the trees, wait in the fog, and make those surprise jumps. Especially onto heroes like Zeus, who do not like being jumped on. Even, even with the addition of Heavenly Jump, 
Well, Zeus definitely struggles with the gap close opponents. Him, yeah. Navi. Solo clockwork. V tune on the Razor. He's got his full magic wand. Try and wander himself out to that top lane. That's a pretty nice combo with Cogs and the Static Link. If you can get on top of someone, drain all of their damage and Razor whips them into shape. They always have that kill threat. But if they get the spear on Clockwork, it's a lot of mana that uh, Mars needs to use. It's also a Mars Marcy lane. I was waiting for that. What, what are you going to call them? Just Marzy? Mm, thinking, thinking if we can have uh, something cool. Pro maybe <laughs> chat <laughs> knows. Chat's <laughs> funny <laughs> as hell. <laughs> can you do anything with... Uh, no, no, what's Mars's no, counterpart? No, Mars is the Roman god, right? Is it Ares? Yes. Ares is the, the Greek one? Maybe I've got that the other way around. I can't remember. No, no, that's, that's, that's right. Because uh, Zeus is the Greek one and Jupiter is the Roman one. So, so many things in Dota 2 that are linked to like mythology or you know literature, cool little things. What what's your favorite like Easter egg in the game? You know they added like Bob Ross happy little tree to the Ironwood branch, that kind of thing. Didn't we have like so back in the days something with like phoenix eggs, uh, and it was like considered uh, an Easter egg? <laughs> I don't I don't remember. That. I remember little frogs in the trees. There was a there was a casino in the bottom right where you could unlock the gambler as well. I was back in Dota 1. Who I don't remember cookies? the eggs, though. You might be right. Ice Frog loves adding these little things that you can go around collect Dude, as a minigame. Like go kill the frogs. Unlock a new hero that didn't exist yet. <laughs> I think mine's always going to be the Octarine Core. Good old reference to Terry Pratchett in his Discworld novels. Oh, is it? Yeah, Octarine is the, the color of magic. Oh, don't spoil anything for me. I just bought my first Terry Pratchett book, Did uh, you? Guards, Guards. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm halfway through reading that. Very, very good book. Thanks. Very good book? Okay. But yeah, I definitely suggest Color of Magic. Well, Color, the Color of Magic is the name of one of the books, so it's not really a spoiler, but you'll definitely notice Octarine written in there by the man himself. Oh, Rest Double Observer Ward. No one he knows. And a high five coming as well. Mira, I'm going to chase back Lays, but there's the D Ward. And a counter D ward. Oh, 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 the sentry killed <laughs> off too quickly. Tell me I, I, I love this. Uh, there's no uh, way. No, he's, no, oh, no way he's getting that. Uh, he should have waited. I mean, in the end, the Navi would probably D ward their own ward. Yeah. But still a, a huge boost there to Navi. I love the fact that teams nowadays are so good at. You know, they, they place the sentry, they wait for two heroes to be there. They know that if they hit both at the same time, there's no chance of denial. Remember when you were missing uphill, you're there trying to D ward, it's like three misses uphill, and the rest of the team connects and they like kill you. That one of the worst feelings in the game. I'm so glad we added that you cannot miss uphill when hitting wards. Yeah, I remember, I remember there was a pro, I think it was Fear in a pro, gra pro game like six years ago or something. He missed uphill six times. It was like ridiculous. You know, the cast is laughing, but you've got to feel the pain. The battle begins. That's the player in that situation. V tune gonna grab the bounty rune up top. Toronto, Tokyo, and Yatro getting a couple of themselves. So yeah, two for two. Navi have slipped back into their top jungle. Oh, Yatro taking a lot of damage. Sweden strong, just gonna keep chasing him back. This is why he's called Sweden strong. Very strong, especially at harassing level one. So and Yatara, very Sweden as well. Yatara will need. I mean, Poshka does have a bunch of region, five tangos and the healing cell. This is five Rubik we're talking about. Something that Team Liquid does like to play. That's true. It's still scary for the Morphling though. Pre-level three especially. Like level one attribute shift is pretty garbage. So against Celestial Hammer, yeah, Scatter uh, Blast. Yeah. Level one, we we can change this to attribute shift. It's, it's real. It's really not good. <laughs> <laughs> We got him, the burn on Wolfling's abilities. Yeah, you absolutely got to be careful there as Yatsuro against the, the magic burst damage Navi brings to that bot lane. In mid, Zeus is 8 and 1 against Tiny's 3 nil. I guess he got a couple of sentries and, and observer wards that count, right? So it's not that far ahead, but he's still doing incredibly well. Tiny will catch up. No one. He got that ready threat. The other day, people were like, who the hell is this guy? It's like he won a couple of majors or something, but he, he shows his worth. 
Who is this guy? One of the best mids in the world. Doing an incredible job so far in this tournament. Probably the standout performer from Na'Vi. Oh, look at this value from Healing Self. It's really good when you use it on Morphling because he can shift all of his strength into Agi and then have 200 HP, so he goes back to full. Yeah, one of the few heroes that it feels good to hand over yourself to. And collapsing mirror up top. What they're doing? Six and one Mars. Marcy just trying to zone back to clockwork as best she can. Razor. A couple more denies. Still really hot in that top lane. Everyone farming towards items, just lapping up the experience they're being given. This is the danger, Yataro. Uh, he drops incredibly low, but he knows his limits. He's got the stick charges, the tangos. Closing on level three as well. Can't be bursted that easily. We see Mira popping the sidekick. Uh, nice synergy with God's Rebuke. That's true. Plays out. Oh, solo. Camp. Rocketing the big camp. Forcing the aggro, so some creeps could potentially be denied here. We'll see what Collapse and Mirror can get up to. Look at this, they, they're coming in. Two heroes hit at the same time. Perfectly done. Solo with a, a good attempt, but 1v2, he's not going to win that. A wave. There's one creep still yeah, getting killed off by the neutrals, but Collapse is going to try and drag this melee creep across. Mirror does the same thing to deny the range creep, or at least let it die faster. We'll move this wave a little bit further away from that entire tier one. And there we see the strength of the Mars against the Razor. Static link lasts a matter of seconds before being speared away. This is why they picked it. I, I liked it uh, when Mars was super popular. This was uh, when you don't know what to pick, you need more team fight, you're laning into Razor, spear him away. They have two abilities. They do have like even three, if you want to call it rebound. Oh, they're trying to play aggressive on V2 now because they know there's no static link. And the spear with God's Rebuke there doing a tremendous amount of damage, allowing Mira to get first blood. Solo. He comes back in just too little too late. Well, this lane, exceptional from Team Spirit. They're waiting for that level three. Like you said, with no link, no ability for Razor to play. I just go straight back in. Lift up. Poshka trying to go on sweet and strong, but dying inside the fire of the Celestial Hammer. Natural will get off his attribute shift. This is Rubik 5 we're talking about, not the, not the strongest 5. A lot of people would consider that grief. But uh, yeah, they're trying to make it work. Uh, as I said, healing cells do work still better on Morphling than other heroes if you use it on your allies. Even though you are getting 50% of the value. What was the big reason for the Rubik pick? Because it came, it was tiny Marcy, right? And Rubik was like third or fourth picked? Uh, I believe so. so oh. the, the response was up against, uh, I guess, Telekinesis is against Razor as the Thunder God's Wrath blasts into Yatarite. Laser is the one to get the kill and claim the life of him, while top lane, they again go back in aggressively towards Solo, rebound, back towards Clockwork as the link has ended. But Clock pretty tanky inside a suit of armor. Rocket flare on cooldown for 14 seconds. So Miposhka under the tower with the stick charges and that regeneration is safe. Investing a lot of gold in small items. Mira buying magic stick, uh, infused raindrop, uh, had a fairy fire at one point. Well, they, they understand how important it is to sustain in this lane and not feed anything. First usage of Zeus ulti, they did manage. Oh. Might be a little bit careful here. Rebound away. Oh, look, look at how quickly she can jump. Like 2,000 range disengaged yeah, from the rebound. Nothing wrong here. No, perfectly no. balanced. Don't look at Marcy. <laughs> and the link cancelled again by the Spear of Collapse. They burnt through a lot of their regen though, but yeah, we're at a point in this game now where you, it's basically unplayable unless you buy raindrops, one selves, fairy fires. Every little difference maker matters so greatly as Yatoro does get picked off. Lays and Sweden strong, getting that burst damage onto the Morphling. Playing on low HP as Morphling can be tricky. They don't have like instant initiation, but if you're not fast enough, one cookie.
could potentially surprise you, and this is what just happened. Now Sweden Strong will be pulling the lane back on the bottom. So bottom lane going extremely well. Global presence, Dawnbreaker plus a Zeus. Dawnbreaker about to hit level 6. Zeus will have another ulti in 20 seconds. This is when I expect them to try to make something happen on the top lane. Yeah, and Lay, just goes back in again. Good cancel there against the Dawnbreaker. Another good reason that the Rubik was picked up against this lane. Stop the Starbreaker. The Dawnbreaker, what, a thousand net worth ahead of the Morphling already. Zeus up at the top there, 300 gold. And a tiny, it's up the top lane, collapse, zapped. Double lightning, hits him in the back. Thunder God's ran from that plasma field. Well, oh, Yatero died, bottom lane again. Sweet and strong. Involved in four out of five kills, he does have Morphling's number. I, I don't know if Morphling can come back to the bottom lane. He's level four, would definitely love to get some XP. This is why I said that position five Rubik is uh, kind of grief. And yeah, Yatoro not going uh, back to the bottom lane. <laughs> it's gonna be jungle, jungle from now on. It seems like it. So then what do you do with the bottom lane? You just leave Rubik there to try and get a little bit of XP? Yeah. Beposhka TP'd from near the outpost to the bottom lane to collect some of the XP. Yeah. Just sit there in the trees, hope for the best to come your way. Zap out a couple of, couple of creeps as well as they arrive at your tower. With a couple of big kills, accelerating quickly, looking for Mira now. Scatter blasted and destroyed. Such a, an amazing amount of immediate burst damage from the Navi side. Spear back, collapse, send Solo away. As V2 drains a little bit of the damage out of the Mars. Tiny will need to do some heavy lifting in the next couple of minutes. He needs to make a move, but this uh, Observer Ward is going to scout out his rotation. Yeah, sees everything coming. Sees TP, sees rotations, they know Tiny's here. So collapse and Toronto Tokyo. And a try with the Arena Spear. Go on to Razor. TP's arriving. Na'Vi with a Solar Guardian trying to save up the Razor, but it's not enough. A turnaround play is available to them, though, and a couple of big kills off the back of it with a Zeus and Dawnbreaker coming in. I think I'll just be patting V2 on the back saying, Thanks, bud. You gave your life for the greater good. Observer War that I mentioned. Scouted them out. Uh, Dawnbreaker ready with Ulti to come in. They did manage to burst. Uh, Razor down, because Tiny did have double damage and uh, full combo. Toss not maxed out yet, but still more than enough damage. This also puts away off some pressure from Morphling, who definitely needs to recover. It's going to be slow and painful game for Morphling, sitting in the middle of the pack. Uh, like Sweden Strong is almost as far as Yatoro. Oh, yeah, he's only what, 800 gold behind him on this position 4 Snapfire. Has Arcane Boots already. Morphling doesn't have any boots yet. Trying to buy his treads. 8 to 2. A nice 3k lead solidifying Na'Vi's position. As the aggressors and the ones dictating how this game's heading. Only 10 minutes in. But we have hit, you know, hit level 6 on the Rubik. Does have a few 6 spells to steal. Just going to steal out there. Scatter Blast. And Cancel that DP. And dies immediately. Oh, Marcy comes in. Dispose from super long range. Toronto, Tokyo, going to take down Lays, but the kiss is down the wrath. Raining fire and lightning down from the heavens. Toronto, Tokyo, very low, but it looks like Zeus and Snapfire just gonna let him go. I saw Snapfire being level six. I got really worried for Team Spirit there because the burst damage from Snapfire and Zeus is pretty insane. Zeus finds a region rune. Doesn't get better than this. Toronto Tokyo, now his bottle refilled, and the Poshka TP's bot to unlock that kill on the snap. A good bit of punching back from Team Spirit. Collapse gets a bit of free time up top. While Solo, he's eyeing up the Morphling. Yatoro there sitting with enough HP to withstand any kind of hookshot lightning play from the Zeus and the clock. Our Dara Observer Ward's still up top. It's going to see Marcy come in. Navi will know that Mars and Marcy are both returning to that top lane. As they've just solidified their position back in their own jungle, farming away with V-Tune's Razor. Didn't talk about him. Oh, what is that? He has a Maelstrom queued up. Very interesting. 
more chain? I don't know. Chain, chain, chain. Look at Zeus Lightning, Razor Lightning. Yeah, makes sense. Synergized together very nicely. I was going to ask what kind of build he goes for because we position one Razor. We've seen Mask of Skitter Madness go Mask of Madness. Yeah. Not sure what's the reasoning behind Maelstrom. Usually, I do have an answer or try to give an answer, but. Nothing comes to my mind, like, why would Maelstrom be a bit... Because he also has a Falcon Blade, which mm. is a farming tool for Razor. Yeah, Maybe we'll change true. his mind. I, I don't know if he can get away with... Uh, okay, now that I'm thinking, if he goes full right-click damage, he's playing into Morphling, who does have... Uh, a lot of armor, and same goes for Tiny with the Grow. So maybe he wants to have a little bit of a different approach where he deals both physical and magical. That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking, usually we see this kind of Maelstrom or even MKB rush against like a PA, for example, right? Someone with a lot of evasion, but armor is the, the same story. I'm a little slow today, Gary, I apologize. It's perfectly tower. fine, yeah. We've, we've had our lunch, we're speeding up a bit. We've got those calories in. Hook shot from Solo, where's he heading? Dawnbreaker will land her ulti in towards Collapse and it'll catch the Mars. Mira does have rebound. Is there anybody to jump off of? No one nearby. So with no one coming in from the right-hand side, he'll pick up his mega kill streak and continue Na'Vi's domination of game two. And Na'Vi was thinking about the Roche. Like, you have four heroes near the Roche, but they're like, oh yeah, maybe the Roshan is a good idea. It's like, we have no damage. Who's gonna hit it? Lays lifted around, but no one's TP down. Miposhka, half HP remaining. Celestial Hammer and a little piggy chasing. That's Solo, a clockwork with a battery assault, trying to give it a go, but he's been speared to the side of the Colosseum. Blown up by the rest of the spirit. And the kisses. Great kisses. Plasma Field slows down tiny in Toronto, Tokyo. The trade out here is Na'Vi incredibly happy with the way these fights are going. Every step of the way, they're finding the better trades. No one doing a very good job keeping himself away from the arena, keeping the distance, involved in 12 out of 15 kills. Good thing for Nav for Spirit is that Tiny did buy a Blink Dagger before he died. Bottom tower is under attack. That's, that's super good. Have that jump ability. Is under attack. Try catch the Zeus and toss him around. Well, collapse. Doesn't have arena and he was tracking back looking for lays. Dawnbreaker. I'm just going to sit back in the trees. Hold out these midways. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Uh, is Yatro catching up fast enough? Treads, Morbid Mask, going Dragon Lance. Does have enough. To sustain in a triangle because of the Morbid Mask and the Possessed Mask. But yeah, it's still gonna take a lot of time. Not involved in any of the kills. Uh, had the horrible laning stage. I, I always get uh, confused by some of the English words. Uh, horrible, terrific, terrible. Uh, there, there's another one. Horrendous? Yeah, it might be that one. It's like, ah, oh, which one? Is it a good one or a bad one? And terrible and terrific are definitely ones that can slip up even there. Yeah, Garrett is a terrible caster. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll take that as a compliment. Solo, <laughs> <laughs> dying on the tower, but he's got himself stuck in the arena as Collapse comes in. Oh, the Mars, last down by the V2 and Razor, but Lays in the middle of three of Spirit's squad. Drag back with a Dispose and another Avalanche toss combo. V2 and about to die. Now they will arrive though with Snap and the Zeus defending and bodyguarding the Razor and the Dawnbreaker who both escape with about 100 health. Navi's so quick with uh, making a rotation and then backing uh, people up. Having global presence does help out quite a bit. But yeah. still, managing to outnumber oh, Team Spirit. Awesome. Same thing happened in game number one, where Navi was the one dictating the tempo oh, for almost go. full 30, 35 minutes of the game, and then a couple of bad fights. Team Spirit uh, did manage to make a comeback. Radiant's bottom tower Collapse about halfway to his blink now. They would love to synchronize that up with the Tiny's Radio one to get these you know, multi-layered jumps. Are fortified. Initiation so key Radiant's bottom up against tower Navi's lineup. Attack. Good smoke from Toronto, Tokyo, and Miposhka. Oh, they're going to connect in on the Dawnbreaker. Radiant's Showing up in the top lane, and there's, there's no one mid. Denied. Three dire heroes down bottom. Dyer's have a go at this, maybe. Oh, attack. they've lost vision. That's, what, that's been great from Lay so far this game. In a series in general. Book shot. Oh, yeah, they found Collapse. Radiant's the Cogs and Kisses. 
double fluffy hat for Solo as well. Tanky boy. I think Laze has been spectacular at knowing how many waves or how many creeps he can push, you know, the limits. The line in the sand is drawn and he's very good at sitting in the trees behind his tower. Almost, almost baiting opponents to come and gank him while he just hides away. Stolen hammer, toss an avalanche. Solo's fluffy hats have, have kept him alive, haven't they? Mira now trapped inside the cogs. They do get the kill on the clockwork, but look at V-Tune go. Dives in, slays the Rubik and Na'Vi. Very calmly. They reset and fall back, hunting for this Mira Marcy by the Tiny. Looking to blow up Sweden strongly. The heal from the Solar Guardian comes on in. And, oh, where did Tiny go? The he light disappeared. <laughs> Zeus uh, had his number. Heavenly Jump slowed him down. Lightning Bolt plus uh, Arc Lightning. And of course, Zeus does have a Fairy Trinket. Uh, double damage did spawn top. Let's see if uh, they want to potentially transition this into, into Roshan. Never mind, it's gonna be a farming tool. Blaze says, uh, not really. I wanna farm some creeps with it. Go and get some gold. A little bottle refill from Solo as well. Gives no one the bottle back. And Mira, deep observable there. Not sure what he was looking for, but he'll TP back regardless. As you said, Clockwork is really tanky. Double Fluffy hat did have a raindrop and now bought an extra cloak. So oh, wow. He can go in and potentially survive through all the burst that Team Spirit have. We saw the displacement tools from Spirit. Toss back into Rubik Lift, into Dispose. And then Navi says, well, you know what? We also have one. So they use Cookie and almost get Clockwork out of the trouble. They know no one is here. Oh, they spotted him blinking. Avalanche toss, the smoke for Spirit. Gonna try to find the Zeus, but he's got the Ghoul Scepter. Save himself for a second or two. In comes Solo with the hook of the cogs, collapse. He's trapped inside two cages, the Colosseum and the Cogs, as he's brought down by the Mortimer's Kisses. Still launching lava across to maybe scout out Miposhka, but Rubik has retreated far enough away. While Spirit, they are regrouping and maybe looking for another go. Rocket Flare Radiant's Vision would have scouted them if they moved any further forward. Ooh, this is a risky DP. It's a, it's a razor mode. Plays with a shard. Wait, the morphling and finishing off the tier Radiant's one there. Big two. Has fallen. They did manage to kill no one, so pretty big chunk of gold. Five, five, five for Miposhka. Not uh, the one you would expect it to go, but still, he'll use the gold. Get a four staff, maybe get a shard. Dude, well, that's ha 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 in Thai. Five, five, five. Oh, really? Yeah. If you see someone spamming fives at you, they're laughing at you. I thought they were rating my gameplay. Five out of five. Five out of five. Five star. Toronto, Tokyo. Yeah, with a blink first, definitely required this game, but it does mean that he's scaling a little bit slower unless he continues to chain kills together. Echo Saber coming up next, so the natural progression for the tiny. And he's going to come on through. What's the what's the end game scenario for this Morphling? What kind of build is he going for? Will it be that Dragonlance Scardy, Satanic Daedalus, that that super hardcore right click one? It looks like he's aiming towards more late game oriented build. Yeah. Uh, feels the rest of the team might be able to hold long enough until he comes online. Does have extra damage, extra life steal from the sidekick, which is going to be used either on him or on Tiny. Tiny also not having that good of a time. In the middle of the pack, trying to farm his Echo Saber. That's gonna take some time. And what's the response gonna be if the game does get dragged out that long? How does Na'Vi deal with the Morphling? Because previously we'd buy a Spirit Vessel or something, right? It feels like that's not the way anymore, especially when he's they, buying Manta they, they, BKB. More HP you have means uh, more static field is dealing damage to you. Navi's lineup is extremely good at scaling into late game. Yeah, especially Zeus. Yeah, if he gets that shard up and running. Morphling finds himself a Grove Boat. Not a bad item to, to pick up on that low range energy carry. Essence Ring, a nice Radiant one there for Laze as well, even increasing her tankiness on Dawnbreaker. Tiny poking his head up the staircase. Here comes Solo, though. And a 
Solar Guardian landing on Tiny. He's going to blow him up with a scatter blast and a quick little star break. You're right outside the Roche pit. We talked about combo from Team Spirit where they have Mars and Marcy, but what about Solo and Solo Guardian? That's that's the other one. They, it, they executed it nicely. Still, in terms of Roche damage, they don't have the most. I think they would be much more comfortable once Razor gets a BKB. Yeah, that security. Just to walk into the pit, finish it off. This is all space and time for Yatra, though. He's gone from bottom of the cores now to fourth place, third place. And he's jumping up quickly. Oh, he tried to catch wait. him. He forms away from the cookie. And keep tabs on him with a rocket flare. Dyer's top tower a bit difficult task attack. to execute. Maybe if they have Aghanim Scepter on Zeus with Nimby. Mira. Looks like he's in trouble. Tumblr Stoy wasn't able to use it and Lace. We'll finish him off. Lace has been amazing, I gotta say, in this series. Even though they lost game number one, yes. his Dawnbreaker plays were on point. Yeah, his, his, his reading of the map, incredibly strong. Just the spellcaster coming out of it. Beautiful to watch. Yatsuro still untouched, though. His first, you know, his, his three deaths were in the first four or five minutes of the game, so he's gone a good 15 minutes without dying. A testament to his positioning and ability to slip away from danger. And this is where things get a little rougher. Good like, dodge from the Poshka. Gets away from the hook shot. Razor's BKB has arrived though, so it feels like go time for Na'Vi is right around the corner. Get rid of some of that vision so Na'Vi don't have easy access Ooh. into Triangle. They're on to Tokyo. Didn't go for Echo Saber. Instead decided to pick up Shard. So they want to farm up. And they're going late game, aren't they? Well, there's not going to be any late game if they lose in the next uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> is, is that Th this might be the start of the late game. I mean, we, we, we saw in game one, Team Spirit very good at dodging fights, waiting things out. And they do have this tiny toss back again, all these abilities to chuck people around. It makes your high ground defense incredibly strong. If Na'Vi wants to try and break high ground, they're going to have to wait until second, third Roshan. And by that time, Morphling will be farmed, Tiny will be farmed. Team Spirit, full understanding and realization that the longer this game goes, the better their chances are. Yeah, Tiny shard into BKB. Not even bothering with the Echo. There's so many tools that can stop Tiny from maneuvering. He might be able to get one combo and then he's dead. That's why he's getting a BKB. If he's trapped inside cogs there are displacement tools but if there's if others are being controlled that means that he's dead double bkb timing now for navi how do you feel about no one's build? radiance middle tower i feel it's rare attack. we see this yule scepter anymore usually it's this kind of kaya into aghanim scepter getting e blade more mana also a farming tool okay but he can dodge spears radiance with it is it's like i'm gonna try to buy some time Later on, when it comes to the late game, I get Wind Waker and I can fly over the arena. And I guess when you have Solar Guardian, you're like, they've jumped on me, I'm with the Yules, Solar yes. Guardian me, hook shot me. You've got all that response time to give to RV. So make plays like this as well. Hook shot into Solar Guardian, the, the combo you mentioned. They are trapped inside of the arena though. But Chiss is coming in from Mortimer, landing on Collapse and Mira's head. The unleash is there, but Lane's diving in until a tiny and is dead. Yantaro is trying to. Into V2. The Razor is BKB'd up and stealing a lot of damage. There was a static link flying into midair there. But Team Spirit, they, I mean, they only lose one hero. Not as bad as maybe it could have been. Still a good indication of Na'Vi and their ability to snap into action very quickly. Two BKB usages from Na'Vi. Uh, let's see if Team Spirit can make something done out of this. Like They, they could potentially like maybe go inside Roche. Because uh, there is enough sustain. Yatro does have Morbid Mask with the sidekick. Well, let's see if they decide to do it. It's a risky move, but might might be necessary in a game like this. Gonna take it slowly. Things out. Wait until it's your turn to play the game. Navi all grouping up. Smoke time for them. Gather. 
rally around the captain, Solo, gonna wave the flag and lead the charge. We see the Rubik, and it should be a freebie. Does drift away across the cogs, but Solo, and look at how quickly they move from one target to the other. Now, there isn't another target there, but they were moving as if they wanted to kill even more. Secure Rochef, get into this triangle, stop Team Spirit from having a spot on the map. Yatero and Mira are up top. Trying to draw the attention of Na'Vi. Away from the base, away from Roshan. Don't let Na'Vi get any objectives. And Yatero with his BKB just stands tall and strong and defeats the Snapfire. Nothing to break the BKB TP and Mira rebound off the creep wave back towards the tree line. Blinks away from the hook shot. Beautiful escape from Team Spirit. Team Spirit buying some time. This is a nice play. Yatoro getting a BKB. Mid shotgun from Snapfire. And then getting a kill, managing to TP out. Not sure where Clockwork was, because uh, he should be the one trying to stop that TP. Yeah, while that's happening, yeah, Toronto Tokyo getting a lot of farm down bottom lane. They're being pulled from pillar to post. Team Spirit is so good at this. This macro gameplay. No. They've dewatered their entire bottom jungle. There's no vision from Na'Vi on the radiant side of the map, I don't Dyer's believe. Bottom tower has fallen. A couple of radiant wards are out there. There's, there's one down in that bottom rune spot. One up towards the top in the jungle. So they see, they ping, they know where V-Tune is. And that means Mira will ditch the creep wave, not stick around for too long. It's got to be so, so stressful. So annoying for Na'Vi. Yeah. Speaking of Mira, at one point I saw him having Shard queued up on Marcy. That Shard is so bad that during DPC Tour 3, Saxa yes. did destroy it. it. It was so bad that he's like, I don't want to have this. Everyone else had the Shard on the team. And he did not want to inflate his net worth <laughs> to give more gold when he dies. Yeah. Another hook shot missed. So a couple of last ones now. Oh, Yatero rubbing it in. Team Spirit got to know that Dyer's they are the ones that are irritating Na'Vi. Getting under their skin. There hasn't been a real opening. Every time that in the past five, six minutes, Na'Vi have tried to go for a fight. It's been a kill on a Rubik, a kill on... You know, a, a Marcy or a Mars, someone who's not incredibly important. Like, yes, the telekinesis will drag Mars back. They get the kill, dead for 50. I think it's time to take out Roche, uh, killing Mars. And he did show his shiny nine second BKB. They should probably have a good read that there's no way he's having a buyback on top of the BKB purchase that he just did. Mira. Mira is thinking about potentially going in and stealing Roche. Well, he's going to rebound off the observer ward. <laughs> <laughs> Does have a blank dagger. <laughs> uh, blink to me. Solo jumps in and dies. Roshan, not even close to death. It takes such a long time for Na'Vi to get through the big man. So here we for 40 seconds now, along with the Mars. And there is Na'Vi gathering up the first Roshan. 27 minutes into the game. A late one, all things considered. Well, Toronto Tokyo, the Nimbus, and the catch from Lays. He doesn't have BKB yet, does he? And TP's on cooldown. He's trying to use it. Blink. Be we'll be able out. to blink, blink out. And jump away. BKB also delivered. Lays not going to be able to chase him any further. Well, Yatero's hunting. He's run away from through the cogs, though. Outpost is there for potential TP's that Na'Vi could use to respond. Refresher about to be done on VTune. Also did pick up Mindbreaker. So having an extra layer of control, something that could surprise Morphling, might force him to use a BKB as well. And uh, Zeus, how's he doing? Almost 15,000 net worth. Going for Kaya Sanj next after finishing Aghanim Scepter. That seems good. There is Ag, Scepter and Shard. D wards that river ward that's been there for quite some time. But this Aegis for Na'Vi, it's got to get them objectives. They need to get two or three of these tier two towers to really think about that. Next Roshan for the high ground and keep this game going. 7k net worth lead is an amazing amount. It's solid, don't get me wrong. But against this Team Spirit side, anything can happen. Na'Vi did place Vord inside Spirit's base. Something that PSGLG did, PSGLGD did 
in game two when they played against outsiders, which they did give them a lot of vision, and here comes initiation. Collapsed down to half HP already. He tried to jump sweet and strong. He's laying his ultra onto Tokyo. No BKB for him. He pops it down to try TP. The right click damage. Oh, it's not enough. V2 too far away as they focus too many targets at the same time. If they went for one and went on one alone, they would have got the kill on Tiny or the Mars. Spirit should be pretty happy about this. They sure. did use two BKBs to get out of the trouble, but no, nothing of value was lost in that one. A mirror unleashed to kill the mid creep wave. She should be dying in the end. So one kill for Na'Vi, Radiant's but it's yeah, delaying this the Aegis. They haven't got themselves a tier two yet. They're trying to push down bottom lane and should be able to claim it, but they need so much more from that. Spirit, still ready to go. Good arena. If they find a solo target, Dyer's top tower jumping on is under attack. Now he's very limited with tower Dyer's damage, so one of the reasons why they can't uh, put out that much pressure, we can see V-Tune pinging things out, go for the tower, but I, I, they need to take a fight before, especially because you're playing against Tiny Marcy and Mars, plus Telekinesis. They, they could yes. literally take you from Tier 3 Tower and put you in the Fountain. Yeah, absolutely could. So at, at this point, would you like the Razor to maybe buy an Aghanim Scepter? To give them a bit more tower push? Or do you just want him to continue going right click, raw power? I think they need to set things up with Clockwork, because he's the one that does have a BKB piercing ability. Not necessarily initiate with Clockwork, but uh, try to initiate with other heroes, and then he follows up when they try to TP out. I'm talking about the side lanes, because Team Spirit uh, did a very good job in the last 10 minutes, dodging fights and not losing any key heroes. Yatoro, he was 0-3-0 and zero after the laning stage, five, six minutes into the game, went to jungle, now is the most farm hero in the game, didn't die a single time. He's so got 341 last hits. 17,000 net worth. And no buybacks there from anyone outside of the Marcy and the Dawnbreaker. So if this team fight is a victory Radiant for Na'Vi, we could see Team Spirit break. Repositioning themselves back towards Vision, though. Well, that is the, 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 the key here. Play under your Vision. Use your wards. Spot the enemy targets. Or in Na'Vi's case, use Thunder God's Wrath to understand where your opponents are. It's a bit risky for them to go walking up these high ground areas. And is going to sit on the right side of the lane to clear the wave. Bottom lane at tier 3. Radiant so Team Spirit going to have to send someone back attack. to defend it. Now this could leave them a little open. Well, that would be the key moment for Na'Vi to go and strike, but Maybe a little afraid with ages expiring in 15 seconds. They don't want to commit to Rash. Didn't do too much with this first ages. Did manage to get a kill here and there, but no real damage has been done. Not a single tier 3 tower gone. Yatoro will buy the book for himself. He wants that level 25. Please here. Manta stole recipe, I assume, in his courier, because that ultimate orb, a few hundred gold away to finish off Manta. Yeah, Hurricane Pike, Satanic, queued up as the next primary items for him. So opting not to go for the Daedalus just yet, but could consider that a little bit later on. You see the morph, Mira. Oh, they get the jump on to collapse. Playing straight in towards the Mars. The static link can drain his damage, but he's moved, moved, been moved around. He suddenly lifted out of danger. Toronto Tokyo trying to turn on his VKB, but he's been blown up. Sweet and strong is found by Yatra. And the Morphling showing his prowess. Navi, they've got to TP away. They can't fight against this man. Yatro can just 1v5. He got a triple kill. This is the timing that uh, Team Spirit did play for. Yatro going in, getting the static link uh, on the Razor, who did static link him. And uh, yeah, they, the only casualty they lose is Tiny. But this Morphling is scary. With the sidekick on top of that, they have so many tools that uh, can break the static link as well. Because we're going to see here, yeah. like immediately uh, gets one static link off, then uses Refresher, another BKB. But Yatoro, way too tanky at this point of the game. Yeah. And I mean, he just got uh, 25, about to hit it. So 
Two waveform charges available in and out. And that's the thing, you can't even you can't even static link him. You're talking about telekinesis to save from static link, toss, dispose, spear to move the razor around. He's, he's got two waveforms now to get away from static link, so razor are having a really difficult time sticking on a target and draining their damage. Same thing that happened in game one is now happening in game two, where yeah. Navi was the one controlling everything that's happening first 30 minutes of the game. Couldn't get anything done in terms of tower damage. Like, they never threatened the high ground, and now Team Spirit, they feel very comfortable, especially fighting into the next Roche. Yeah, it's this, this development of Dota, right? We used to think about this back when EE was still playing, the Eternal Envy effect. You want to go late game because these decisions you make are so so important so you can make such strong chaotic decisions that will just win you the game and we've had these teams and players play so many iterations and uh, values in dota 2 going into late game that they know exactly how to play certain scenarios team spirit definitely one of their prime objectives here go late game find pickoffs control top jungle and force navi back into retreat mode the 7k net worth lead diminished down to two and the avalanche toss coming in Toronto Tokyo jumps straight onto Snapfire. They've blown him up. Yatoro diving in deep with the double wave form. V2, the standard link bounce. Back onto him. Drain my damage, I drain yours. Right click punch, back into him. Now the catch on delays. Dawnbreaker dead. And Navi falling apart. They really are. Roshan, a bit of a longer respawn timer. Team Spirit, they seem not to be not afraid of anything. They've always been a slow team. Even during TI, they did uh, multiple times lose the laning stage and the play from behind. Same thing is happening here. Like, they, they just lose it, but in the mid game and late game, Team Spirit definitely one of the better teams out there. Yeah, decision making so much crisper. Great understanding of the flow of the map. That macro gameplay. We love, we love to drop the, drop the macro gameplay term, but this is Team Spirit showing us exactly what that is. The push and pull. Mira going to jump up to high ground, grab the bounty <coughs> room, take the outpost. Now they going to be beating themselves up. Having such a good early game. Zeus has bought a BKB, but the Avalanche toss lifts oh, no. up as well. Lift. A little bit of overlap there, but the Scarlet is slow, clips onto no one. A Yules will slow him down, but he's such low HP, he will be found in the end. Solo, he's jetpacking, Glimmer Cape in, he's running away, but he's gonna get chased down by Team Spirit. Kill the Cogs, the hook shot off to the side, but they'll slow him and catch him as Solo dies. They're onto Tokyo, blinked inside of the Cogs, just to make sure Clockwork's not going anywhere. Blocked that hook shot, Roshan is alive, second Roche, Shard, plus Aegis, and uh, Navi, they, they cannot do anything about this one. It, it feels like the beginning of the end was five minutes ago, and now this is just a slow descent into a loss for Na'Vi. Very little that they can do to combat the late game position that Team Spirit put themselves in. Morphling nearly has buyback, Marcy as well. Dyer sitting on two buybacks on both of their supports. Morphling's gonna invest all of his gold Radiant into items about to finish off Satanic and have Aegis on top of that. Slots his BKB into the backpack. Just for him. Bye bye, whiskers. That's There's good the satanic. stuff. Now look at that swing. A ridiculous. 9k to 9k, basically. Navi needed to do more. Uh, they had such a big lead, but what? never managed to utilize it. Thousand lead for Navi. All disappeared. As Team Spirit, the ones moving forward aggressively again. Under dire vision, but that will be immediately dewarded by Mikoshka and his little buddy, the Gem of True Sight. Tier 4 items. Spell Prism, Timeless Relic. Oh, collapse instantly picks up Timeless Relic. Uh, he wants those spears to last even longer, has that 20 talent on top of that. Even a shard. Yeah, even Overwhelming Blink like, does get amplified by Timeless Relic. So the slow, extra 20% from 6 seconds slow is 7.2. Yeah, and the damage as well. It all adds up. Refresher Orb queued for him too. Well, 
Na'Vi yet to get a single tier 4 item. They are scrambling to try and farm some neutral camps. Team Spirit have all theirs. Telescope, Spell Prism. Okay, they found a Dauntless Relic untidy. for Zeus. Well, that's a big one. What else can they find? Because they're, they're not farming Ancients. They're not getting that increased drop rate. Let's go find a neutral item boost pack. Right on the store. Yatero. Hey, oh, he's just up on high ground. Mira blinks into that sideline. They're pinging out and they're placing the ward. wards. Oh, he's ready catch. to jump in. Who can they catch? Glimmercate from Solo. He thinks he's hiding in the, oh, the sentry ward. It's placed down in onto Mira, so they know the ops is there. But barracks are falling so quickly. There's no answer. Mira does get killed off. Clock and the Dawn takes her down, but no one being demolished by this Morphling in Mars. Trapped inside his own yours, the Glimmer Cape not going to save him. And Yatero just going deep behind the tier 3, tier 4 He's towers. Alone. He will die and lose the Aegis, but he'll soon have the backup of the rest of his squad. In comes Collapse again with a spear across. Yatero turns into Razor and drains all the Beatune's damage. He's dead with no buyback, and that's got to be game. A minute and a half with no Razor, no, no Zeus. And Na'Vi basically have three supports alive against this ridiculous Yatero Morphling. They, they call it. It's over. A 2-0 victory. If someone can carry a game when things go really bad real quickly, that's all is going to be Yatero. 0-3-0 and zero in the laning stage. Forced to get out of the lane in like 5-6 minutes. 50, 20, 25 minutes into the game, uh, he is the most farm hero in the game. But this also says a lot about the other four members of Team Spirit, where they... Space. Yeah, it's just, how do we make this work? We got to find something, uh, find, give them something to do for 25 minutes and uh, maybe get the most out of it. Uh, I, I got to be honest, I feel a bit bad for Navi because in both of these games, they were ahead. In this one, just not enough tower damage and the displacement tools when you're trying to go for the high ground. Uh, I think they gave it a lot of respect, but I think they needed to, to risk it and uh, try to end it because Team Spirit's late game is pretty nuts and we see what Morphling can do. Yeah, we've moved on from Dota where we would usually talk about a draft or certain heroes being on a timer, but now it's yep. like against certain teams, you're on a timer. Against LGD, against Spirit, against some of these you know, high level teams, you can't take it to late game and expect your win percentage to be that high because their decision making is just so much better. There we have it, a 2-0 victory. Team Spirit, like you said, securing upper bracket. Na'Vi still need to find their way through, potentially to tiebreakers as they're down at the bottom as we'll pass through a break and return with some more Dota 2 and some different casters later on.
Power can be found in any number of places. Scientists will tell you that it comes in Newtons. Gamers will say that it can be found in silky skills. We will say that the power lies in real thrills. In the play with perfect ping. In the runes and crystals. In every frag and gank. In your personal winnings. Lock and load for PGL Arlington. Welcome back, all you lovely people, oh. Arlington Major. Yes. It's the B stream. The B stream. The we're, B stream. We're back. We got in here. It's been a while. Oh, they've got us up in the, you know, the stuffy up in stream A. We're hanging out. Got to be all professional, you know? <laughs> yeah, we don't Phew. do that here. You know, stream A, they don't let you see the pink pants. That's right. Stream B, you see the pink pants. You see this guy, okay. you know? Okay, they don't yeah. even know about it on stream A. Hanging out over happens. there. Yeah. That's what we're about. You put yeah. in that extra effort. I'm all about the silky skills. <laughs> Like if I had to <laughs> take a right. guess. Well, we do have a game that we're going to be uh, going into right now. It's Fnatic facing off against Talon. That's why you all are here. We're going to mm. watch some Southeast Asia on Southeast Asia action. Already, one of the Southeast Asian teams on the other group, they made it on through to the upper bracket. Boom, just completing that uh, right a couple of minutes ago here. Mm -hmm. um, even though they're still in the game, I think, against Aster. But EG lost 2-0, so that means that they're good to go. Whew. What a relief. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's interesting though, right? It means a lot getting to that upper bracket, but also not being eliminated. And that's something that both these teams are very invested in. Talon yes. on the verge of elimination, Fnatic mm -hmm. on the verge of the upper bracket. That's right. So definitely a lot to play for here. And our draft has already started. Let's so get into it. Let's, let's check out some heroes here. And uh, we got some of your favorites, the fan favorites. Ooh. It's Dawnbreaker. It's Chen and uh, a ban on Puck. I feel like a lot of people can appreciate the start of this one. You know, I think with Dawnbreaker, um, Ten seconds I, I do feel like it is a bit of a fan favorite. It's a crowd pleaser. It's a fun hero Five to watch. But pretty soon people are going to be like, oh, my God, no more Dawnbreaker, please. I, I think everyone's already like that Fanatic, in their pubs. Right. I would hope. I know I'm there. I reached that a while ago. Except thankfully, usually it's on my team, so it's okay. That's true. Uh, I will say also not a huge fan of the support Fanatic, Dawnbreaker. I feel like I really bad. enjoy these lineups that are based around this offlane Dawnbreaker particularly. But it, when you can flex it to one or mid, I also like that a lot too. So uh, it feels like you miss out on a lot of the bonuses of this hero when you play it as that position five. Like uh, I think we just saw EG trying to do. Right, and there's these moments where um, you know you can sort of play it a bit like back. that, you know, sort of what we saw from a Spectre or a Nature's Prophet or whatever, away mm -hmm. from the rest of your team. Um, but oftentimes, what ends up happening is Fanatics the enemy team will just gank your Dawnbreaker at that point, uh, or you show up like a little bit too late, and then it's not worth it anymore. So can be a little bit finicky, but playing together with Chen, I like this Talon draft. It feels very meta. And on the other side, Fnatic, yeah. they get the tiny Timber. Yeah, the Timber. A lot of bands on Timber. We managed to see the, the glorious, renowned Amara yeah. Timber Ten this morning remaining. for OG. So that was pretty cool. And now picking it up after seeing the Dawn and the Chen, that's a good Five start for a Timber remaining. game. I think uh, does a lot versus the Chen army. Certainly a hero. Like I mean, We've seen a lot of teams struggling to deal with the Chen army, I, I would say, in these games. And that is just something Timber does not care about. Right. Here you're able to just cut right on through them. Um, that being said, there are some really annoying things that can happen in lane. Maybe it can give you that extra little burst of magical damage mm -hmm. with like a shockwave or something. Uh, you also have to worry about if Ten that pesky mana me. creep shows up can be very disrupting to your laning Five stage seconds. since you're so you reliant mean. upon uh, that mana. I mean, granted, you can't go something along the lines of a stick, get into your soul ring, and you'll be okay, but uh, you want to be able to just like keep that constant yeah. pressure going. The the bands make a lot of sense from Fnatic. You have the Monkey King and the Bloodseeker, some heroes that can cause uh, problems, mostly for Timbersaw. Uh, the TA, though, kind of interesting. Not nearly necessarily something that I think is like a huge counter to Timber. I guess in the sense of like, a gameplay and a time-wise sense, you uh, we actually saw that from OG, where they struggled a little bit in the earlier Fnatic's parts of that game, even with their renowned pick. Timber, to, oh to slow down the pace at which a TA likes to play with the rest of her draft. But right. Uh, that does leave the Rubik here. So mm. we like those timber spells. We're going to take them for ourselves here. And that's going to give Fnatic some, some thoughts about maybe these heroes that they take in this ever-so-important double pick 
for the team that has the, the first overall grab. Yeah, I mean, this definitely shuts down a lot of things that teams might want to do. I, I will say there's been some hesitancy, I feel like, to pick Rubik recently. Mm -hmm. Even in the matches that we saw earlier today, there was, like, I think a, a Timber and a Shaker on the enemy team didn't get yeah. it picked up. Yeah. Um, but Talon opting to go for that uh, would imagine that, I mean, uh, it's going to be the Zephyr Time hero. We'll see if they end up going for that. But and this is maybe one of the ways that you can try and punish it. Um, I guess this goes both ways, taking over the creeps. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit uh, back and forth, though. So there's always this uh, fun relationship between Chen and Enchantress and right. dealing with the creeps in the early game and trying to... Uh, Trying to body it back remaining. and forth. I'd say overall, Chen's a favor, the Ench. I do think overall, Chen's a better hero. Five but uh, in the fights, you know, Chen d really likes to rely on having this, like, certain army, and they, have, they each have certain roles, and you like to Dio toggle between the two, and so that gets disrupted. It can be frustrating. And you also don't have any tools to actually try and deal with the Ench. You know, she tends to space herself away from you and lob these big heaves of damage. Right. The the other thing Fun is matches. obviously the Turn max creep back. level dynamics that exist boy. between yes. them with yeah. Void Persuasion, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then, uh, you know, on Ench, you, you sort of get the, the earlier access to them, um, and you can kind of play around that 4, 5, 6, 6 for her. So it's the type of dynamic where you're always going to be that one step Ten ahead. Seconds um, remaining. But Faceless Void taken along with the Coddle. Uh, so Five have a mana battery remaining. for the Timber Saw. And that signals either mid coddle uh, or a tiny core. But I would imagine it's tiny. Fanatics core. turn to bad. Yeah, a couple of choices that they go could go for here. And uh, to play it safe, talent, they're just gonna ban out some heroes that would make their faces void. Uh, a bit sad here. Get rid of that wraith king. Uh, big tomato heroes left in the pool. Already got rid of that Monkey King. I feel like that's what we've been seeing a lot. Uh, they did it themselves. Ten seconds But uh, all the other carry heroes are just open here. I mean, we haven't had that many bans, folks, on the roll. A lot of support bans in this draft, actually. Yeah. I mean, thinking about uh, a bunch of different possibilities. I mean, a lot of Dio the better ones that you mentioned back. are already gone. The Dusa, the Monkey King, the Bloodseeker. But they'll take out the Void Spirit now. Uh, Wraith King also taken away by Talon and lineup wise not a ton of damage to throw into the chrono for Fanatics. Talon yeah. so I'm gonna need that out of the mid here most likely wow that's kind of surprising get rid of the Luna instead of the uh, the jug I mean I guess Luna a little bit better versus Chen because of the AoE could argue right. but uh, with just how much success we've been seeing with Juggernaut I, I'm kind of surprised they wouldn't offer that instead yeah and I guess Ten that seconds remaining. I mean the early pressure that you would get having like Coddle, Five seconds, sort of standing remaining. in front, illuminate blasting with an edge pressure. Uh, it does feel like some maybe one of those like early taking towers type series. Maybe a terrorblade or something. Could be a bit scary into dawn. I mean, there's CK. We also saw the uh, the forbidden hero, the Pudge. Is, it, is it possible? Pink. Looks a little. Oh, a little oh there, that's so. another great one. That's uh, much more stable compared to the Pudge, you know. Have, have they been playing this hero? I feel like there's not that many teams who are dipping their toes into the Lone Druid. Obviously, we don't get to see all the games. I don't see any Lone Druids here from heroes. Fnag, so. Hmm. Let's say this be, uh, as far as I can see, the first time they're going to be bringing it out. Interesting. So they go last pick, Makoto on the Batrider. 23 Savage, Faceless Void. I, I'm looking at this, and again, not a ton of damage to throw into the Chronosphere, but... I mean, the bigger problem I'm seeing is that Fnatic's lineup just looks so fast. You've got Timber Ench, like, running at towers. There's a Brile Coddle to keep things going and a bear. Do, do Talon have, like, enough D-push to deal with this? It's looking a little sketch. Well, I will say uh, there's a reason that bat pick was so fast. It's an right. excellent bat game. I think versus the, the Lone Druid and the Timber, you have some pretty great tools, obviously. It's tough to get that heavy magic damage to actually deal with the Timber Saw. And so Ten that being there from Makoto is going to be a big deal. But uh, it is going to require some pretty quick plays here from KP and 20 Savage going to have to come online a little bit earlier than Faces Void likes to. Uh, I do tend to agree that uh, Fnatic looks like they could start snowballing and get out of control here. Yeah, they've got to be uh, under wraps on that one, keeping track of where these movements are and where everybody's headed to. But early start to this best of two. Fnatic looking to stay uh, at the very least in the, the middle of the pack, but really would love to be able to break up into that upper bracket and Talon trying to stave off elimination in this group, which again has three teams going to be eliminated uh, out of it as opposed to the other one, which just ended up with the two. 
and Talon on the chopping block unless they can pull together a string of victories. How many victories do they need? <laughs> they need like four, I think. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. <laughs> they got a lot of work to do, huh? So just just win, okay? Exactly. Buy dust, just win. We're doing the, the typical Dota rules. I like it. Yeah. And as we load into this game, things that I'm looking for, uh, DJ Tiny started to make some, some pretty good moves around the map. If they can sort of take that mid tower uh, before too much stuff goes awry, that's going to be another pretty solid play. Um, but likewise, you know, around a bat rider, there's there's always a bunch of options uh, that you can sort of make moves early and find a bunch of kills, get the boots travel for battle. for too long. Yeah, I think for a fanatic, the question will be like balancing maybe a bit of greed as well with their heroes versus how much I they want to actually push and get in there. You. Yeah, because uh, you see, Druid likes like to get a couple you. items first. Uh, Keeper of the lights, they. Uh, I don't know. I feel like sometimes these mid callers can take their time in the jungle a little longer than <laughs> maybe they necessary, perhaps. So. Uh, the, the question is, does Jabs get like left out on an island a little bit as the Timber saw? Like, how much really will they now. be playing around you with him? So, really I don't think it's like you super free or anything for Fnac. I actually, uh, I kind of like how Talon, if the game slows down, I, I feel like their draft can be very strong. And I don't even think they have to play necessarily that slow on the side of Talon either. Like, they, they have the potential to run over a couple of these lanes, right? Every time you have a Chen, that's possible, and a Bat Rider too. Right. Well, heading through the river and. Trying to get some information. Talon was the first one to see where uh, everybody was heading up, and no surprises as the tiny and the timber saw going to be heading top. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they decide to do any swap arenas with the lanes to avoid those potential pitfalls. KB has already done an investigation here and determined that there was no mid ward. Okay. Ran through, and uh, now Dubu and KB kind of poke each other trying to figure out like, hmm, is he actually going to drop this observer ward? So Dubu does eventually do it. And now, oh, if KB saw him, he knows he actually lost an observer. So he's probably going to know about that mid ward now. Throws the tree, heads off. Tomato, not. Oh, he did get the bounty rune. I felt that there was something about like how quickly you're able to click, and it should almost always be that the bear doesn't get it. But uh, regardless, Tomato gets that bounty rune and sets them up pretty well. Laning into the Dawnbreaker and the Rubik. So a little bit of uh, damage reduction there from the Fadeable can be a, a nuisance when you have multiple units like this, be it uh, with the Entry, just with the, the Lone Druid, but also standing with the Blightstone here on Dubu. So uh, w whenever you're in like a pressuring lane as a support, you're playing your Hoodwinks or your Enchantresses, you love getting this Blightstone because it just it adds so much damage to every right click. And this is into uh, you know, Rubik, right? Not sitting on the highest armor or anything as a hero, so that's why these trades are looking great here from Dubu. True. Dubu taking that healing first uh, will be able to do a ton of trading early on. And in the meantime, you can you. already see up top Tiny trying to go and connect. Hyde pulls the wave himself. This is something that we've seen happen more and more often here. And it will end up turning into a bit of a side off lane uh, thing going on <laughs> where they're not actually in the lane at it's all. It's just a mess. It really is. Uh, look how many Radiant Creeps are here too. So this means that uh, the Dire units are going to get their level 2 slower, and they're in danger, right? Keep them pushed back there. And Timber Chain off to the side. They do eventually reconnect now underneath the tower. And... <laughs> the, dude, what is happening? It's oh like my every god. Rage creep is, or every Radiant Creep is still alive right now. <laughs> they do anything else really doesn't look like we'll, we'll see if anything special happens there but for now at least um yeah just a bit of a mess up yeah. top there's no like huge jump right now because jabs already has like the point of the timber chain and the reactor armor so it's not like he's gonna get like a whirling death and they can like dive right. on the hide or something and dj's still level one because he's spacing a bit on some of the levels so oh jabs you drew aggro what are you doing dude that's all right he's coming this way anyway it's fine <laughs> Oh, there's another creep just running off. Well, as you oh, said, he, he, was, he uh, intentionally body blocked the hard camp with those two yeah. right? So the Chen's not going to get any units either. Yeah. Chen already has the range creep himself. Oh, and Jabs is just going to make it in time here, too. Yeah. So that one connects over. Beautiful. Able to pull the other two. Oh, oops. Got a couple in the tower, though. Yeah, there you go. Get him out of there. <laughs> yeah. That'll be easy. Meanwhile, Hyde is killing side. a courier. Well, <laughs> Dude, there's some weird stuff going on. And then you can see up on the top side as well, they're, they're keeping the other lane going. So 23 Savage battling against DJ, who actually has like pretty good last hitting potential here against the Faceless Void because of the tree. Yeah, you do not need items for this, that's for sure, as a support tiny. Jeez. Looking about a deny. Does he manage to get it? Not quite, but now he can pull the next wave. 
quite manage to uh, get the deny, or rather get the last hit onto that creep. Low armor. DJ. I imagine there was penitents here. And yeah, they got to pull it back underneath the tower. They just like, you need to take a break for a second. But Jabs again is sitting in the camp in three minutes. Yeah. Like he, he blocked it again. This is so annoying. Cause there's no counter for that, right? Mm -hmm. And they were pulling the wave through as well. So they actually had the, the lane creeps blocking the camp. So the small camp didn't spawn. Right. So this Chen, I was just like, ah, all right, I'm going to run over. And, uh, there is some mana burn creeps up there in the jungle, though, at the very least. Right. So... Once he uh, gets himself to level two in the Holy Persuasion, he at least grab that. And until then, he, he could take a Banisher if he wants. All right. And uh, in fact, Faces Void just painted, I believe. Yeah, and has that uh, that ward up there on the high ground, so that way you can scout it out, pull it from the low ground if you need to as well. But other lanes, some stuff's going on. It's a farm fest mid, as you would anticipate, Coddle and Batrider. Yeah. Uh, not really wanting to do that much more besides just trying to spam out the camp. That's what Makoto's been doing with the camp. There's really nothing to do in this lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Makoto, though, of course, we talked about how he already has uh, a pretty good matchup versus the two side laner cores, right? The Timbersaw and the Lone Druid. So that'll be his goal, trying to accelerate here. And when Coddle hits the jungle, when you were studying the neutrals, I was killing the heroes. Okay. So we'll see. Meanwhile, down bottom, the other one, Dawnbreaker so far, 11 and 2, um, and hasn't really been able to come and contest the Lone Druid that well, it feels like. It's Tomato, kind of just been able to AFK farm a bit, uh, and sh with a little bit of access to the jungle over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty tough, right, because of the Savage War. Whoa. Yeah, on, that, that's exactly, because when you're playing Dawnbreaker, you're expecting to be getting kills in lane, yeah. right? especially around like level two and level three, but having this instant way to stop uh, this combination from the Dawnbreaker. Like KB didn't actually get into the Starbreaker. He didn't even have a chance, though, because of how fast they... They tried to go for a double stun, which was pretty cool, by telekinesing into the bear, and then maybe they could hit the Starbreaker, but didn't really sync up with the AoE damage that he was trying to ensure he was getting the most value out of uh, with the Celestial Hammer, so... It's obviously still pushing back to Auto's They're going to pull back again, and now... Oh, the heal creep! Beautiful. It's not enough. Yeah. That, that's abusing that Savage War cooldown, right? That's what it's all about. You got to go at least once, force the interrupt, and then go again. That's a 38 le uh, second cooldown on level one. So very good punish from KP and Zephyr. That's the first blood as well. So a good chunk of gold going their direction. And as the levels go up, that's only going to become more and more difficult. I mean, I'm, I sort of have been struggling to find a lane that Dawnbreaker doesn't just absolutely wreck with. Um, and there aren't many of them. But... Regardless, Tomato comes back in again, has the reach summon on the bear, and they're going to start throwing out the chain lightning grips. <laughs> this is our solution. Yeah. We'll just zap. Over and over. Yeah, keep uh, KP a little bit down, so that way they don't have to worry too much about uh, anything else coming afterwards. Hide, taking some damage from DJ. And jabs in the meantime. Not really that concerned. They don't have another time walk. Chase under, finds him, punch, one more. It's all they need, and they get it. Jabs takes down 23 Savage, and they can keep this pressure now on to Hyde. Yeah, if he can stop this. They're glyphing here to go under. Forces the glyph out from Hyde there, too. And then he's just running in circles. Yeah, waiting eventually. He gets the tower high five. But keeping that catapult alive for a very long time, another creep wave is even going to come back in for a sec. So some amount of damage onto that tier one. More importantly, the kill on the carry. In the meantime, DJ will take a moment to go and seal their bounty rune there. So that'll be something lost for Makoto, who does have a haste rune, and I'm sure is thinking about coming top to try and help with 23 Savage. Because 23 Savage really wants a Midas. Doesn't want to invest in lane things like boots right. or regen. No. You know, those are cowardly items. For fools. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, Tana Midas, you want us to try and stay out, right? That's a little cowardly to me. Got a mask of madness out there. No. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just watching here because uh, I see what DJ's up to. He's uh, he's searching. Hunting. Uh, the creeps found him, though, unfortunately. Yeah, he's got to get out of there. They were trying to keep that catapult alive. They had the seed shot creep over in the area also. Taking a look at that net worth, though, you can see that this is what the Coddle does. Just they pull the wave all the way over to the hard camp so he can farm it with the same Illuminate stacks. That is very, very nice. And as expected, oh, hey, take a look at this. They're going to come up to the high ground here. Dubu doesn't want to pop the haste room because they're still in a chance. So I'm just going to slowly walk down Dubu. 
and then the friends are knock up. Enchant finally is there, but it won't matter. Rotation of top there as well, though. Maybe? 27 is getting kind of low, but... The Catapult scouts out uh, for Isle. Yeah. A little unexpected. So what is, what is this doing here? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the problem, right? Um, you can see, though, also the, the sort of respect that we're getting from 23 Savage. Oh, he said Makoto. He, he wants him to Timber Chain to 23 Savage. 23 Savage is uh, trying to bait Timber Chain right now. Does have three points up in the jump, too. He's like, please, Timber Chain, please, please. They can't get it. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Jab's down. playing too Thunder safe. Attack. And Makoto, he's going to TP back now. There's a whole wave those push into his tower, and actually with the enchanted creep, they're gonna get some good damage there. Ava toss, Tomato, his bear is low, KP turns. They actually regen it back up, and they just find the kill. Dawnbreaker goes down. That edge creep also did punch the tower all, all the way down to the point where Makoto had to deny it. Big place. Jabs, level six. Hand of Might is just now completed. The only wants to do is find a place to use it. And Amida should give you golden I high fives. I like that. Yeah, that you know, sounds really. Good. That would have been a great moment for it. Dead again. This is the strength of Coddle. You start to play it together with the tiny, have the tossbacks, and that is a big old stack. Oh, Makoto, he can't let this happen. Oh my God. Uh, I don't think he has much of a choice. He's surrounded right now. Ah, uh, yeah, just gonna go for it. Solar bind, avalanche, toss. They have Illuminate. They're saving it right now and, oh, forced to use this. KP going to move on in with the ulti as Tomato finally shows up afterwards. Will they be able to do anything else? Doesn't look like it. Man, Makoto played that so well. He had the vision on the pillar that whole time, so he saw that Brial didn't have the Illuminate. So that's why he goes in at that moment. So I was like, this looks a little suicidal, but everything was on CD. And then having the confidence of KP coming through as well for the Solar Guardian. Sort of lets them uh, get away with that maneuver there, but in the end, they still grab a lot of those last hits inside of Fnatic and take away that safety in this area where Talon just kind of want to have a little bit of free farm at the moment. Right, yeah. By the time, get into the triangle. They and see him again, too. There, there's a ward past those ancients. KB. Bringing him low. Tries to hammer out. Blinding light pushback. Ryo won't go for any more. It's just going to be another Illuminate Blast. They are just focused on that tower. Right until the glyph comes out. They're just saying, all right, well, this is what we're going to go for instead. I feel like I have not seen uh, our friend hide in a while here, and that's because he's doing what every Chen does at this point in the game. He is just farming up his mech. Right? Yeah, no boots, no problem. Has the wand working after. And you can see it there. He already take that top tier two tower, so bottom is another opportunity. As Makoto and 23 Savage gonna go onto Jabs, can they bring him down? Goes for the TP out, doesn't have a way to bring it, and they couldn't get there in time with the Hurl Boulder. 23 Savage is not a believer, I guess, huh? In the, uh, the bash, <laughs> you know, he didn't even try with the bounce back. Nah, I, I wouldn't have hit it. I mean, I, did he bash the next creep he wanted to last hit? We'll never know. I don't uh, you know, know, maybe. That's a rough one, man. Okay. Well, Honestly, he probably still lives even if he bashed them there. Fnatic is looking really Dyer's good, but Talon kind of struggling to get anything together right now. And uh, you can see how far forward they're playing. Oh, toss back. Finds one. Dyer's he didn't have a good target. No, it's just, it's just vertical. The solar bind runaway, but Jab shows up, finds hide. There's the Chakram stolen. Will it be enough to dissuade Jabs from going any further forward? Back out, turns, stuns, good damage. KP got him. So they finally went a bit too far forward as Bryle trying to buy a little bit of time there with the blind light pushback, does actually kill off the Chen and the root. Tomato shows up, Bearman angry, and they take down two for jabs. Bryle still looking for Makoto, although I'm not sure if they can really do that. Instead, it's just gonna be trying to take out the Just a now. big step, I mean, the double granite golems makes this yeah. really hard. They are big, beefy ancients right now. It's, it's definitely a bit of a weird one. I feel like someone, the, who stacked this? Like, <laughs> who wants to farm this right now? I have a Midas on Faces Void. <laughs> like, listen, Doll, has chakra. Like, it's just bad all the way down, you know? Everything from my Makoto. Radiant and, uh, well, they're going to need it, because right now yeah. there is a Keeper of the Light who is completely out of control. And not only is he hitting uh, creeps, he is everywhere all over the map right now. As they can hide again. Right, they jump in from 
KP try to connect on the DJ, goes through the Starbreaker. Nice. Blinding Light pushback, but it's still going to be a dead tiny. Talon playing very close together here and making the moves in with KP on that Dawnbreaker. Yeah, pretty unusual to see a tossback Chen survive, but uh, rallying around him with the mech, with the Dawnbreaker coming through, you, you saw that humongous like, way up in the sky, Solar Guardian as well. Yeah. <laughs> that was a cool one. No, it's uh, it's still, I mean, slightly Fnatic favor in terms of net worth, but the, the big thing is going to be watching how these next couple of fights unfold, it feels like. And I guess Talon, to some extent, trying to buy time? At, uh, at least to a point where Tony Savage feels like he can do a bit more, right? Yeah. Trying to get into that Maelstrom especially. But they have some great vision here, as you can see right there, walking over some boards through the tree line. Going to see these rotations coming through of Hyde and all the creeps. Meanwhile, you know, you've had uh, Dubu running through the dire jungle up top, planting some wards. He's, he's sort of being like the front face because he's such an annoying uh, hero to try and take down right off the bat. And that's giving some space for jabs to catch up. Radiant's Meanwhile, way back in the ancients, Tomato is farming up into those first few items, right? Mask of Madness, go back for the Maelstrom afterward, and then you, you imagine they're going to start sieging that top tower at some point. Right. Meanwhile, it's uh, 13 minutes. So guys, when you're playing Earthshaker or Tiny, position four, when the 13 minute mark hits and you see an empty lane, you go. This is the time where every Tiny wants to take a little bit of space for themselves. You gotta be greedy, okay? You can see he's playing a bit scared. He's like, I'm not sure if someone's ganking him down here, but you really need to get that Blink Dagger to enable this hero. And uh, your team has to make space for that too. No lift, able to interrupt, stolen Timber Chain. Chalk him out, Jabs able to get a little bit of an escape, but as you can see, when they bring everybody, it's uh, it's enough. Yeah, and this is one of the parts about Dota that's very hard to gauge. Because the question is like, how worth it is that? Yeah. Right, we bring four heroes all the way over here, and we get the kill on this Timber Saw. Now mind you, they didn't actually have to use the Lasso, which is pretty huge, or the Chrono. So I think uh, at this point, you, you wouldn't mind going for another gank at this point, right, as talent. Particularly if you get a bit of vision and uh, some intel into that rating side of the map. Unfortunately, they're having a hard time getting out there. They, they don't really see anything. No, there is, uh, well, and now they're going to get a smoke down. We'll uh, potentially find a target, or they can get some Dyer, some scanning. wards up. But as you said, like, DJ, he kind of just wants to chill a little bit, too. It's the smoke into farm jungle. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Rarely seen. <laughs> Often <laughs> successful, though. The creeps, you know, yeah, they he, never see it coming. <laughs> get them going. I've seen a Phantom Assassin, you know, they just blur on those ancients. That's they got, true. They got no idea what's happening. They're just falling apart out of nowhere. I mean, that is the thing that's weird about it, is that in a lot of ways, Fnatic's draft feels very, like, single-minded of, you know, playing together, winning fights, taking objectives as much as they possibly can. But there's a couple of these moments where it hasn't really been able to pull it all together yet. I, I think they're just not quite there is the only yeah. issue. They just really want that, like, that blink dagger. But up top there, you saw the boots travel come in from Brow. They grabbed a quick kill into KP. Question is, can they get the chase down after? Dubu burning. Starting to spam Illuminate. Has the stomp. He's menacing hide. Nice. But they won't be able to uh, find anything after the inch, but a nice kill there by Talon. Again, not using those big ulties, so. Right. I mean, but did end up losing the, the Dawnbreaker, which is the other big part of that. Yeah, still a bad trade, especially when, uh, even though Bryle's TPing up for that engagement, he's instantly back to farming the neutrals, going back to right, his like, meeting back of the Tomato here. So you can check on his farm. Yeah, oh, I can shocker your bear for sure, bud. Jabs pushes out top. Wait for those items. KP goes and uh, DJ. Toss out, but. KP finishes. Yeah, he was there for so long, but they actually had a ward down here, spotting a movement outside of the lane. So kind of kind of leaves him his freedom. And Zephyr had come down earlier and stolen that avalanche too. So uh, definitely going to smoke again here, I would think, right? Because you have Lasso. They could even bring the Void if they wanted to, but I'd be happy with this. So we smoke up. We have Avalanche, uh, Talon. Going to hunt for one of those bigger targets. I would love them to go straight for the Radiant Ancients. But again, they are blind. They put that ward down bottom that spotted DJ. That's where they went. They hunted. They'll be running up into a high ground without any knowledge right now. And yeah, they just lost it because Bryle's behind them. Hello. Uh, this game is so weird. Okay, so I was in... I don't know what is happening. I, I was in Talon's <laughs> vision, and I had no idea where that Connell came from. I was like, wait, what? This game is very bizarre. He just walked into that. Well, he has that deep ward still by the the dire tier two, and I, I think it just kind of gave him a false sense of confidence. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's the most valuable hero on the map, and we're in rush now. Yeah, and I mean, the, you would imagine they want to come over and fight this a little bit, but they also have Chrono. They've got Lasso. Or no, 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 no Lasso. They just use that, but still, a chance here. Still have Avalanche here, too. Jabs. 
moves forward. Dubu pops the heal, wants to move in closer, gets the Yule Scepter off. They can't quite get the full combo, but there's the Chrono onto everybody. So trying to bring them down one by one, Makoto gonna get tossed away. Tomato walks into the uh -oh. pit. Everybody from uh -oh. Talon walking away. Are they gonna just finish this off? It's a low rush. Dude, what is happening in this game? Dubu. Get the push away, fear out, avalanche, toss, big combo coming oh, out the of with the caudal damage starting to be ramped up. But 23 Savage has found him. Lift over to the side, they find the kill on him, Bryle. They just all ran in and died, Trent. They just all ran in and died. Oh man, Talon, they played that pretty freaking well and tries to jump in to finish off DJ, but can't quite get there. It's a bit messy sometimes in the game of Dota 2 we, that we know and love, and uh, they don't really have the the coordinated items right now for Fnatic. They're very good when they're like smoking up, they're getting in there, and everyone's at the same time. But they sort of got picked apart piece by piece. You know, Jabs getting taken down by the Chrono, uh, and then you have this flames just everywhere from Makoto there. And despite losing out on the Chrono and the Lasso, it, it didn't uh, it didn't matter too much when they just keep running into this Dawnbreaker and the, and the Chen heals. Even though the Spear Vessel was out on Hide, he yeah. still managed to get back up to the high ground and keep the additional heals for the team there and keep them up and active and turning back onto Fnatic. Yeah, I thought Brow was going to come through and really blast them there in the end. It just didn't end up happening. And now Talon suddenly up 3,000 gold. I mean, that is the thing that's very strange about this, right? Is that you're in this situation now where you have this like clear idea of how Fnatic wants to take their draft. And with the Blink Dagger on Tiny, they're probably in a much better position to do that now. Uh, but likewise, Talon just got the Aegis. And they, I think, have really good scaling lineup too. Uh, at least to some respect. Yeah, a couple things didn't click just perfectly. Oh, Makoto. Gonna get some auto here. <laughs> He's like, where's that coming from? And uh, the move in, will it be enough though? The stomp comes out, the Starbreaker, Tomato dead. Great. Suddenly, a, a hammer right on his face. Yeah, it's so excellent when like your two buys BKB, your one has the Aegis, and you've got rune control, right? Yeah. They're just so strong. You get haste runes, TD runes, or in this case, an invis rune. It's just a great way to enable your mid laner, and then you have the defensive capabilities of the Aegis just uh, for your Kelt core at the same time. You've bought an item of a BKB to protect your mid laner, and it gets them a lot more confidence moving on to the map, whereas Fnatic just barely missed their window. They, they just needed those wards to survive a little bit longer on Dire's side and to have farmed up that blink on DJ, and this whole game could be different. They missed the toss back, unfortunately, there for DJ. Yeah, Makoto is going to live through that solar bind. 23 Savage now walking in. Has the Aegis, no fear, also no mana though. Not sure if it's going to matter. DJ drops pretty low as, again, battles ensue across the river. And Talon, they find two. I love that early shard as well from 23 Savage. Great use of it right there. 4,000 gold lead at 20 minutes. I mean, it's been a struggle for Talon throughout this group stage, but they came to play here. And, I mean, this is the time if there ever was one. I credit a lot of this to the, the amount of kills that they got without burning Chrono and Lasso in the early game. Like, I, I always felt like they had some sort of a threat where it wasn't necessarily free for Fnatic to come in and just grab stuff. Also protecting their 2-2 towers, even though there was a bit of a lead early on here for Fnatic in terms of like, the strength that they had in these moments. And now suddenly, this game just feels so, so much in Talon's command. Well, and it started, I mean, again, you don't want to harp on it too much, but Bryle just walking suddenly into three heroes. Um, Sometimes it feels like you own more of the map than you do. I guess that's fair, yeah. Regardless. It was also like the first time they ever went in the river. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they caught like the legendary fish. Exactly. You know, he was this big yeah. and this much gold. Speaking of fish. Wow, that transition works, but they do find the stun now on its model, but have they gone too far? Have a toss up on the high ground. They burned through the Aegis, but now DJ has clipped himself. Makoto trying to clean up. A godlike Batrider as Jabs hoping to escape, but they do manage to catch him. Zephyr rolling through both sides of it. Steals Enchant's gonna enchant the Enchantress for an enchanting death. The pushback onto Bryle. The game has wildly fallen off the rails. Yeehaw! As Talon take down five. That was a, a Texas barbecue right there is what that was from Makoto. Uh, firefly everywhere, people burning up on the high ground, can't do anything. 
Great use of the Aegis as well. I mean, what more can you ask for? C catching a fight on the radiant side of the map and into an entire wipe, and they, what? That's it, right? They only lost Aegis. No other deaths. Yeah. Radiant structures are fortified. I don't know. They're, uh, they're close to some of the stuff, right? They picked up the Deso before that fight as well on Tomato, but not able to get that big damage. Currently, he's actually bareless at the moment, and there is still a lasso here from Makoto. The toss back, they can easily ground, but the Savage Roar does stop the lasso. It's not going to stop the kill, though. Man. Yeah, and he does go down. Radiant's I mean, it, it is kind of wild. You get down to the wire, and, you know, for Fnatic, this match means a lot. Getting into the upper bracket is huge. Um, but it, it feels very discombobulated from what we've seen from them before. And haven't really been able to recover and get their feet back under them over the past couple of minutes. Dubu, focused by KP, killed off 12k gold lead. And they do finally have a BKB on a Brile. More ways true, to try and true. keep things uh, afloat, but... Unfortunately, he's still a hero that doesn't do very much versus BKBs when they're out yeah. here now on a, uh, a Bat Rider and a Dawnbreaker. Savage also getting towards that BKB as you're talking about it. It comes back to these games where you watch the Tiny look so successful and you hit, you go back and you appreciate these crazy toss plays because we know DJ is a wonderful player, but he just hasn't hit any of this game. No. Right? When, when they started these plays in the early game, they're going through and he's just getting like the straight up vertical tosses. When they do get a good toss back though, they actually have great defensive options. This happened the last time we talked about all these positioning abilities in one of our other games where you've got the pudge hook, you've got the toss back, you've got even just lasso grabbing and yanking someone with you. Some of the best ways to offer a counter to that is by having this Dawnbreaker with the global heal ability and the Chen, also global heal ability. And it's been working out great. We've seen Warlock do similar things as well with, with the ability to, to counter that just because you have this crazy range of like stomp power what? with the right. golem. And uh, you know, when you combo the heals together with Dawn and Chen, it's working out great. They can keep up this momentum because they have uh, full map control at this point. And if you can spot DJ right at the start or instead go for the edge, that might have been an attempt at Tomato. I think it was, but nonetheless, it will kill off Dubu. We call that the option select. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> I'm going to watch some Evo. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. It's a uh, little bit of a misclick maybe, but, you know, get the job done. And a smoke afterwards. Fnatic, say, we don't need orange. We'll fight you without her. We well, Hyde, I think Hyde had a read on that one, huh? <laughs> it's the other one. Wait, with the ward on the high ground, and he's just like, yeah, oh, God, I think they're smoking. I got it. I'll take this one. Don't worry. Kodo, sore bound, but illusion rune popped, and suddenly not as much of an issue. All right, to get back into this game, though, as Fnatic, what, what are the keys here? Uh, I would love to find a way to try and enable this Lone Druid to actually get out the damage. Because we've seen this happen in games, uh, particularly we, we saw an uh, EG game, I believe, where they, they really struggled to get any damage out from the bear. Was that EG? I, I think so. I no, no, no. It, it was... Uh it was Liquid. It was Liquid, of course. It was Matu. Yeah. Matu struggled in his game for the Tidehunter because his bear just could never hit anything. There was like uh, too much AoE damage, just, like stunning the bear. Sometimes it goes the other way, too, where you can't really lock anyone down in place to just you know, let the bear kind of wail away. And, well, there's no BKB on this bear right now, so when you're dealing with things like just a, a simple Starbreaker and these telekinesis, stomps from the Chen, like, it, it's hard for the bear to just sit there and actually hit stuff that's not a tower. And he's a big source of their damage right now, particularly when the BKBs are up. So the question is, how can you actually enable that to happen? And I don't really have a great answer for you, I'm not going to lie. It is very difficult. He basically just needs to hit a good route and have the rest of the team spacing the opponents away to the point where they're not getting saved. Yeah, in a way, it almost feels like you can't rely upon that, and that they need Bryle to be the one that's really lifting that heavy load in terms of damage. Um, and then the bear is just there to like take objectives afterwards or whatever. Because, like you said, there's just so much little things that are uh, kind of a problem. And, and instead, they have one play, which is nuking these creep right. waves, and you can see what Talon's doing. They're wrapping around him behind. They're trying to catch his call when he does this. And then on the other side, you see Dubu just drawing straight lines down mid and lines down top, just like, push the waves. Go in. Get the creeps going, and then try and hold the high ground, right? Yeah. Push the waves all the way in, hold the high ground, see if we can get like a cheeky little gank, and then run away. Makoto, going to spot Tomato's bear here. Spots DJ as well. Second Fake approach. grenade here. Oh, oh, DJ's poking. He's turning. Vision. Pushing him around everywhere. And 23 Savage. Fear comes out. They 
don't want to go I don't think and allow the chrono. That's Radiant's a good point. Bottom tower is under attack. Through Savage, does he chase? Jumps forward, BKB used. He thinks about it. Uh, he's, uh, uh, pump fake into the actual chrono use. Afterwards, Solar Guardian coming down, stunned. Tomato living through it. Is it going to be enough, though? He's got a lot of HP. The bear is living, but eventually Makoto going to clean up. Jabs, can he do a second round of it? Good stun. Interrupting there onto Jabs. While the Chakram's been going the whole time from that stolen Rubik. Hand of God, the turn, trying to kill Makoto, but an avalanche also stolen now. Zephyr thinks about throwing it out. Can't quite get the connection there. Makoto trying to TP away. Does manage to, but KP just absolutely wrecking throughout all of this. Is he just quietly killing everyone in this fight? I'm well, pretty sure that's what's been going on. Like, they're trying to take down 23 Savage. And they managed again. They're trying to take down Makoto. He TPs out, and KP's just... Just swinging with this hammer. Yeah, that looks about right. 5,300 damage from the Dawnbreaker in that fight. God, and yeah, you can see just completely left alone. Three Starbreakers and two Celestial Hammers. Three so at 36 here. seconds of Dawnbreaker freedom. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, jumping on through there, burning. That was a nice play there by Makoto also to catch on to Tomato before he was able to get out of that. But complete freedom, like you said. <laughs> It's, it's just like the lack of BKBs, too, for a Dawnbreaker. Like, even that, like the hammer's like burning Brile over on the side. Yeah. Everyone's just getting caught with these hammers the whole time when she's spinning and winning. Too much damage. And back into the fight of the real world again. Uh, there was a little bit more action, but they weren't able to connect onto anybody. Yeah, and we, we did see as well that uh, he had the, the Mage Slayer for that fight, too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, like, you can't necessarily see it in action a lot of the time, but. It's going to be reducing a lot of the, the spell damage that's coming out there, particularly against heroes like Timbersaw. Like, you never know uh, just how much you really reduce in those instances. No chrono, but skin connecting. DJ moving forward, 23 Savage finishing the Roche, Swing. getting the Aegis. While the rest of the fight's going still pretty good for Talon. They don't have buyback on the Chen as Tomato can get punched a few more times. Zephyr trying to chase, keeping the Timbersaw out of the fight. Motto continues to get chased, and they just call GG. They're done. His bear died. His spirit died as well. There was no way left. Spirit. That's what they call it. That. There you go. Um, man, I gotta say, probably the weirdest game that I've watched the entire tournament. Uh, th there was like early 10, 15 minute mark. Like everything just felt so discombobulated the entire time. For for both sides, or well, yeah, for Fnatic, <laughs> much more so. I felt like I think Fnatic were very close to making it work. Like they had right. some great map position where I feel like you could like kind of take an overview of everything and see like, okay, you know, like DJ's down here getting blink. This makes sense. Tomato, he's farming ancients. This makes sense. And, you know, you say it's compatibility. Maybe that that is also just like the stand-in factor in terms uh, of. Like, I mean, it's working out really well for them. So we can't really start blaming it no, now of course when not. they're almost <laughs> off our bracket. Okay, uh, and, but they've gone one-one versus a lot of the good teams, of course. So yeah. there's also no real worries about them being able to bounce back here, but. I think that it's a matter of it just being a very finicky lineup with extremely certain timings that if you don't hit those timings, it just like crumbles right away. It doesn't necessarily mean the strategy is like super bad, but it just right. means that Talon had a pretty good read on the timings they had to dodge and ignore. And and going back to this, um, one of the weaknesses they had is long cooldowns that they needed mm. to get back into a game went behind, and they managed to find a lot of kills and regain some of their territory without using those long cooldowns, which is very innovative because a lot of times you see teams kind of panicking a little bit, throwing right. that lasso and that yeah, chrono, yeah. and they didn't really do that. Yeah, did a very good job of sort of managing resources that yeah. they had available uh, at the key moments. But that's going to do it for game number one. Talent, feeling pretty good about that one. And Fnatic going to need to go on back to the drawing board, figure out if they can still make it to the upper bracket. Uh, Talent, of course, need every victory that they can get. We're going to go to a quick break. When we get back, we'll see you for game number two.
can be found in any number of places. Scientists will tell you that it comes in Newtons. Gamers will say that it can be found in silky skills. We will say that the power lies in real thrills. In the play with perfect ping. In the runes and crystals. In every frag and gank. In your personal winnings. Lock and load for PGL Arlington. Welcome back, all you wonderful people out there in Dota land. We do have game number two right around the corner for you. I did just see out of the corner of my eye that there was a lobby failure. So Do I need to press a button? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, there might be a chance that you could go over there and just, just give gonna, a little a little quick gonna, punch gonna there. Here. I'll do the Let's same and just lobby. make sure okay. we're yeah. actually yeah. in this Yeah, because you guys want to watch the Dota game, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like we're, we're back. We're all set. and We're, uh, we're in our yeah, slots that's good. here. Yeah, <laughs> great. Okay, no problems whatsoever. All good. This is the major. We're, we're here. We're ready. Um, man, that last game was a little bit wild, though. Mm -hmm. I so again, like I just felt like when that coddle walked down the hill, <laughs> like my brain oozed out of my ears. Yeah, and I just was like everything else from that. Th just felt off and i think that in a way fanatic also kind of felt the same way where it was like this idea that they had wait until their items came up and then like the lanes weren't able to be pushed out as easily because mm -hmm. coddle was dead they ran in did roche and it was just like this domino effect of of, of sadness sadness you know sadness. uh one thing that you can kind of feel the lack of is that ability to just start a fight whenever you want like when you have yeah. heroes like puck so it's kind of just a good reason why Puck's a really nice hero because That's I right. we have this Coddle mid, Lone Druid safe lane, and, and like we basically needed tosses. That that was really the only way. And that's a lot to ask from DJ when you also don't have a vision hero. Yeah. So he, they were kind of just like running up blind. He had to try and get some toss plays before they even had to any sort of like a, a like a blink dagger or anything yeah. really to help any wards. Uh, so a couple things lacking if you were trying to keep that ball rolling for right. Fnac, it just became a difficult situation. I mean, that, that ability to start a fight whenever you want, usually that's just like queuing up US East or something. And then that's True. the ability to do that. Nice one. Um, this guy. This guy. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you, I lost so much Evomar in the lead up to this. Well, not when you played Dawnbreaker. I, I, no, even when I was playing <laughs> Dawnbreaker, it was all bad. <laughs> and I tell you, there is some, some angry people out there in the world, but also some really good ones. And that's the thing, is that in Dota, there's some really cool people out there, like this guy. Look at you. Oh, this is just, uh, wow. Look at that. GG Great. bet. There's not a delay <laughs> happening at all. <laughs> GG bet. Yeah, we've got There's uh, odds. into the favor of Fnatic, though. Um, that is interesting after that last game. I mean, I guess that like going into the second one, you yeah. still need to win. Yeah, I mean, Talon are still this place where it's like, you know, they're the bottom of the group. So I get right. the, the odds that are like that. And it's at Fnatic. They still need to win. They want to get upper bracket because uh, if you don't know, you get points. Yes. All right. We do something more than just the cashola here at PGL yeah. Arlington. You get DPC points. And DPC points take you on a little all-expenses-paid trip to Singapore. Bow, 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 bow. The finest hotels and dining. <laughs> and anyway, uh, you go to play in TI. What's that line? And so that's what they're trying to do. Oh, God. What's the line? I'm trying to remember. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? That's the line, right? What's the you know what I don't think about? they said that on the prices right. Oh, I was thinking of something else. It was like the, the mixtapes. Do you remember? No. The old school mixtapes. Oh, God. The old school mixtapes? What? Somebody else. I, I had a know. cassette player. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Canada, right? What? <laughs> you press the button. The Drake thing wasn't around the, back then. That's, no. that's the problem. <laughs> I was still on Be Kind Rewind. Okay, I don't yeah. know what that is. You don't have to pay a toonie in case you take a movie back, not rewound. That's right. That's right. You boomers out there know what I'm talking about. Am I right? The yeah. toonies. You guys are in the chat right now like, what? what's the save <laughs> symbol mean? What is that strange thing, the square? Who knows? I had Spider-Man on a floppy disk. That was my first video game. This, there's a lot of questions that have been uh, laid out here in front of us. And uh -huh. some answers soon to come as we're already ready to hop into the draft. Game number two, Fnatic facing off against Talon. Let's hop right on into it. Please. Uh, <laughs> please. Please. 
please, I beg. I think they're torturing us. They're like, well, so. we like to see a couple of heroes first. <laughs> we switch over, actually. That's so. probably true. Yeah, yeah, you guys have to deal with us for a little bit. Man, I bet they'll probably ban um, Death Prophet and Puck again, though. Like, if I just had to, yeah. had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. Don't it, fall over That there. would be my guess. Don't fall over that. If I just fine. had to. All right. Well, let's let's think about Fnatic. So, oh, I have to do one more guess. Yeah. Okay. One more. Well, in like five seconds, they're gonna run out of time. <laughs> so, so, probably Warlock. Because yeah, we said that like too. if Dubu had his Warlock, they could have stopped some of those initiations. Oh my god! Oh, oh. Look at this. That's amazing. Uh, well, you know, sometimes you just you got it. Some people don't got it, but uh, luckily I got it. What were we even talking about before then? I don't even remember. Uh, my Spider-Man floppy disk. Ten seconds yes, remain. that's the one. Yeah. Great. Not a great game. Actually, every game was terrible. Five Shout out to Ski Free, remain. though. That game ruled. All righty. Uh, yeah, we're taking a lot of time on the bands here. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, we, we're at this point that... It, the group stage where you only have a few matches left, and I think you can actually zero in on your opponents a little bit more. It's, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, otherwise, like, you can prepare for your opponents, but you don't have that same dedicated time that you're going to get later in the tournament, especially when it comes to the bracket, where you can tailor uh, your plans a little bit more you know, perfectly as to how your opponents like to play. So maybe now, taking a breather, they're, they're trying to think, like, okay, what, what really messed up our Ten plans last game? And I definitely agree right. with the Dawnbreaker being removed Fun because nice. she was Fun like this big pick. wall that just yeah. came down when they tried to advance on the map. It is true, and that created this, like, huge problem for them. Um, now, the one thing about it is that they also, you know, have sort of been able to... You talked about that earlier series that they needed to play up against um, in their match uh, against Liquid that they played, remaining. right? That was their earlier uh, series that they had to play through. And uh, to me, at Five least, when I'm looking remaining. at this, I feel like there's been a big change-up that they've uh, seen. And it's been, like, trying to copy this meta that's been developing. Mm -hmm. Chen is top tier. Chen, these Warlocks, Fanatics you know, we talked a long time ago about what was going to be the effect of the salve changes, and we're seeing it now. These sort of passive regen heroes that can still maintain sustain in the lane. Whoa. Yeah. Nice one. Thank you. You sound like someone who spends their time reading a bunch of children's books, too. You know, I did for a while. Ten <laughs> <seconds> <laughs> well, Fnatic, they're going to answer back here Dazza. with the Tusk and the Dazzle. Speaking of the sustain, there's the main guy. Radiant team and uh, Tusk will likely to be the four. I don't know if we're going to get some flex to like a crazy mid or a position three, but uh, it Fnatic certainly could happen. I'm sure Jazz is bad. willing to bring it out, but it's the KP Brewmaster. That's, that's an OG player hero combo. For as long as KP's really been around in the pro scene, this is a, a hero he's gone back to before. And that's a hero that's consistently gotten better. A hero that now, some people say, might be a little broken from time Ten to time if you can remaining. get into it. Now, there have been a couple Brewmaster games that we've seen where it's gone really Five awry, and more often than not, that's when they can just ensure that the brew doesn't get the split off, and that's when it feels real bad. Y you do need that. Yeah. Uh, that, as well as, I think, uh, really fast-paced lineups, I still think the hero struggles versus... On the one hand, you can fight before items. That is true. However, you you're a little bit weaker, so you have to split a bit earlier. Um, your split doesn't last as long. It's a little bit shorter. The ability is not as powerful. And bad. then you have these long cooldowns until you get the Aghanims, until you get into the Refresher. And so sometimes the, the early game Brewmaster can be a bit rough if you don't stomp your lane. And you just saw a hero that can sometimes... I feel like there's a lot of untapped potential there with all of like his different stances Ten that he gets and yeah. trying to min-max that sort of invoker status. We're going to get to that level with him eventually. Five um, remaining. But I'm wondering if they're just going to stick the Chen in there with the Brew to make sure that he has a good lane um, and then they can take that, you know, top tier one tower pretty early. We have seen some teams try that, which has been pretty cool. I think OG has done the same thing where they've put Taiga with the Chen and put it in that position four role, played in that lane, yeah. Even, and given him position four uh, potential as well. Uh, you don't necessarily have to like go all the way to like dedicating that much time because you just need that early farm, right? You like get the mech up right. on the Chen, then Radiant you can give some more space back. to your position four so Zephyr can get a blink dagger on whatever hero he's going to be playing. They're just assuming it's going to be a blink hero. I'm, I'm kind of down with it. Well, I, I mean, agree. I see a Chen, I see a Brewmaster. I, I'm thinking my four would, would like to have a little bit of initiation to help out with. Could be a uh, a Wind Ranger game if I had to take Ooh. a random stab of a good position four here. I like with Brewmaster and Chen. What about the Shaker? Are you starting to believe yet? I, I like Shaker. I think Shaker's a great combo with the Chen. I do think it's very player specific. I think you need that Ten big experience like Zinku and uh, Seb have been showing for the Ws. I think Wind Ranger is essentially just like Five an easier version remaining. when you get the Shard with the Gust. 
you like you know you're just running around you're kind of safe versus tusk with the wind run yeah shackle's still busted shard's broken but it's uh from maybe not necessarily something that i've seen a, a lot from zephyr i'll say yeah it's uh, team pick. an interesting Force one to oh that changes a lot that sets the tempo for the rest of this draft yeah the viper ban into the bristle pick so yeah <laughs> yeah are we going hoodwink sounds good to me yeah, speaking of position fours, that uh, I like with it, some decent initiation with the break. It's it, it's not the best Ten break. I know sometimes it feels like versus like Bristleback, especially with it with the whole idea like the Viper one is just so much more effective. You know what else though is that they might just be able to avoid him and like lift him over and over again, right? That also sounds pretty good for Brew. Yeah, trying to trying to avoid him, kind of like when you're playing against an Ursa or something, you just want to nullify the hero as much as possible. Yeah, but the Wyvern will be taken now for Talon, so. A uh, good amount of seconds, defensive remaining. abilities with a cold embrace against all that physical damage from the bristle. And, of Five course, if you start remaining. getting to that Aghanim Scepter late game scenario, this hero hits incredibly hard, and you can hit your teammates just as hard Yeah, uh, with one ulti. I kind of wonder if this is Bryles. Ooh. Oh, sorry, not Bryles. Makoto. Sorry, I'm, I'm swapped around here. But uh, I, I'm wondering if this is going to be for Makoto because y you look at uh, first step bristleback. I feel like that would be really strong. Right? Yeah. Some percent base damage, getting that online earlier with the Arctic Burn. The only thing I'd wonder about is if Tusk could snowball him in and get on top of the Wyvern. But you'll probably have like a four staff or something else like that at some point and can keep that distance. Could even be uh, KP potentially playing it as a three and they could run the position four Brewmaster too. Whoa. That, that could definitely... I actually think they have quite a few options here. Okay. You don't need to... Uh, to go for like the total base level here, just because like Wyvern Chen support duo is a, a little, a little meh to me at this point in the draft, at least. I, I don't see anything that makes it look that valuable. Yeah, it's fair. I, I think that uh, I I feel like there's been a lot of times Fun where I've seen Wyvern time. versus Dazzle because um, they kind of do not the same type of things, but I, I feel like Wyvern could be a really good answer against Dazzle back when it was actually pretty good. One of my favorite plays of all time is remembering a, uh, a cuckoo moment where he was playing Dazzle and he graved himself remaining. and then the Wyvern ultied him as he was graved. Five seconds it was like the most next level thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, <laughs> he knew that he was going to come in and get cursed and he just graved himself randomly. That's, uh, that's the cuckoo. It's a cuckoo special. Uh, Ember, though, comes out here. So that'll be for Makoto. That's, yep. We're throwing that on him. Can't get the pucks. We're going to get the Ember special here. That probably puts, again, this this Wyvern Brew 3 4 situation can occur either way. So we'll see how it goes. Probably going to be a Brew 3 and a Wyvern 4, more than likely. But we'll let them figure it out as the, the draft progresses. Now, our counter pick after the Wyvern Ember Spirit picks will be the Necrophos. So a scary right. sight for a Brewmaster. Might need a, a Glimmer brought out here from one of these heroes to try and help out versus that. But two uh, very similar play styles between the Bristleback and the Necrophos, right? The, the way they like to like sit together, push together as Ten a unit, all remaining. of the Shadow Wave and the heals being there from Dazzle, boosting up, reducing some armor across Five the board. Hmm. Remaining. I, I will say that it feels pretty similar to what we saw last game, too. I mean, Fun Bristleback, Nets. Lone Turn Druid, obviously very different heroes, but kind of similar philosophies. Uh, and that one didn't work so well. Well, I mean, this is also the, the absolute classic in terms of a hero counter, right? Like, we talk about this yeah. all the time. We're like, pick Ember, ban Necrophos. It was yeah. like, it was seen as this massive, like, game ruin encounter. It was considered unplayable. So you think it's Bryle? Could the mid lane be so free <laughs> in the year 2022 <laughs> that Necrophos versus Ember doesn't even matter? Yeah, it's even. It's an even matchup. 60-40. <laughs> <Just> 60-40 <laughs> <laughs> at best. Oh. I don't know. Like he's, uh, you know, Ember's looking pretty hot these days. Uh, there's also been a lot of innovations with Ember's builds, and I think that when you get that Ten situation where remaining. you know a hero is consistently thought of as the counter pick, mm -hmm. these hero Five spammers like Makoto, remaining. they come up with answers for it because they run into it over yes, and over they see. again. It's like that your razors versus the Queen of Pains and pubs and whatnot. Yeah. You know what? I was actually hoping for the Darks here for your sake, buddy. Oh. I thought maybe. No. It looked pretty solid, right? Same idea. They just have a tricore of doing the same thing on their heroes. I Tri will say I kind of hate playing Darkseer into Brew. That mass to spell hurts, but True. it would have been a good True. game in, in spite of that. You just pick up oh, all the No one ever casts mass to spell anyway. We always talk about <laughs> it. It gets used twice the KP whole game. KP does, okay? And twice the whole game. KP does. They're too busy invising and finding the backline. You know, they don't have time for the dispel. He remembers. 
Radiance yeah, does. team pick. That's good lad. Speaking of which, that's a nice dispel against the Necro, too. That's going to be important later. Yeah. Got to watch out for that one for sure. TA, Band, along with the Faceless Void and the Timber. So who's the Aura Carrier? Should we... Uh, I meant for Shall we Morphling? For, well, I mean, just for a talent. So we get our hero here. Yeah, remaining. that's fair. You know? Th need a win. Need another W. 23 Five Savage. Five seconds remaining. What's his hero? Yeah, What's his maybe. iconic go for the W hero? I feel like you just go for something simple here. You go like a jug, maybe. Although jug against Necro is always bleh. But I could be getting down for that. Well, it's a C game. How about Medusa? Oh, of course it's terrible. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> Medusa, TV, you know? I mean, Dark Seer Band. We should have seen that one coming. Oh, that's a fair point as well. Yeah, the, the classic. Um, well, along with Timber. Yeah, geez. All right, so benefits to the talent draft, great objective pushing uh, when you have the, the TV out there. Something that Ember does really lacks on, remaining. but uh, Bruin Chen and TV can do a bit more. What you got for me, bud? I know it. He Five knows it. He can sense remaining. it. Oh, Where are we sending everybody? You want, you want the, uh, the jabs, Necrophos? Listen, you, you put any but Bristleback anywhere but Terrorblades lane, and they own. Necro versus TV, fine. Kunkka versus TV, fine. I like I like the the necro off lane kunk of mid though. Mm, DP's banned, Timber's banned, NP's still in. They they could NP end into terribly though. Yeah, but I mean I'm, I'm thinking like Fnatic in a box, you know. Right. Okay. Uh, Underlord. Ooh. Oh, Underlord is that our hero? Can that I get a, can I get good. an Underlord? Underlord does sound pretty good. They already have damage issues, I think. I like it. I think we're going Underlord. Oh, God, this is my... Okay, this unironically, I was actually going to say this. I was going to say this because I was like, you know what? It actually looks like another good Coddle game. I'm down. Oh, no. Because they have the bristle, right? Yeah, it's and, like, true. I, I, I didn't know they would run this three, though. Oh, this is hype. I'm down. I'm Interesting. in. I actually like it. Jabs, again, he does this all the time. Like, his teammate loses with a hero. He picks the next game and they win. That's why they're 1-1 <laughs> in the whole group stage. This is the jab special. He's like, oh, do I have to teach you guys how to play every hero? These North American stand-ins. Oh, wait, we have to stand for this. Yeah, what are you doing? I was going back to the camera shot to look all pretty. Do you want to come back to me for a second? Oh, no, I mean, Lyrical like, sitting. That's, I mean, that's not I good. Just, why? There. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. That's good. We'll, we'll, we'll just go into the game. You're being goofy. Ten seconds. You well, little, you know, it's the last goofer. game of the day. The heroes are all picked except for Jabs. He's, he's taking a sweet old time remaining. here. He's like, did you guys really just pick me Coddle? Is that what happened? Yeah, I mean, he's the he's the captain, so in the drafter. Well, so I think he knew that was happening. You know, he's got a uh, he stepped away from his keyboard for a second. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> AFK during draft. Exactly. Wouldn't be the first time we've we've had that happen. So. All right. So why is this game going to look any different than the last game? Complaints of the last game. Difficulties of starting fights. Yep. They have Snowball. That's slightly easier for, for DJ compared to Avatos. It's a big commitment, though, which has its own issues. Uh, other than that, their, their fight start is, again, relatively weak. Do you think you have to dodge the TB out of the, the Coddles lane? No. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. I see what you're saying. Yes, I think that the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's not going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you have to dodge, but it's... It sounds bad. It's not going to be enjoyable. Yeah, you, you definitely want to try and go versus the bristle if you can. So you can try and abuse your high armor versus the quills. But then you're going to have a whole other host of issues because one would assume that the dazzle is also going to be there, which is also physical damage. But uh, if you die level one, that can still be pretty rough, especially because they're going to bring the tusk too, right? So if you try and get this mismatch where you, you take the Terrorblade into the bristle, they're almost assuredly going to have DJ just run where wherever the dazzle is for the level one, try and get the kill. And then you'll start the bristle off on a good start in the lane. Yeah, what if they huge brain it and said tomato mid? Prepare that way it's either battle. necro or coddle in the, the terrible lane. Well, we'll see if their brains are that huge. Really I mean, if that just you might be really bad also, really but, you know, you I can dare to dream. He's already got his entire item selection. He knows his motto for the Vanguard Soul Ring. Is the casual cloak, boots, and an axe. Okay. Happy Great. Man. That's what he's doing during the draft, you know? That's uh, <laughs> Jabs just goes around to the computers of the stand-ins, and he yeah. just shift cues their items that this is all you're allowed. This is your shop. Don't click anywhere else. You know, it is, it's a remarkably interesting scenario. 
uh, the, the, this whole like dynamic that they've got here. And I I'm, I'm, would <laughs> love to hear the comms at some point and just how they think about Dota and if they talk about it together, all that stuff. I think a lot of it um, and their success through this group stage is also about a little bit of the freedom of the other three players. There's basically no pressure on them. Yeah. They like they're, they're they trying want. their hardest, of course, I'm sure. Like, cause you know that's how we all play Dota. Like, don't even kid yourselves. Right, and if you're at a major, it's only gonna happen. Like, you can't not do that. Yeah, and so there's this, uh, this like nothing to lose mentality that these stand-ins have for them, and they're of course stand-ins of uh, incredible caliber. So. I could even say they might be TI level players, perhaps this year. That's right. The battle TI begins. level players, and we do see men out. And Talon going to pick up two of the runes and actually get the third. Yeah, and so they're going to have 20 Savage uh, <laughs> down that bottom lane. And then this does at least mean you won't get like the triple uh, right. for the level one. They're going to try and like attack you. But uh, yeah, a frustrating lane. We, we've seen this before in the past where these Keeper of the Lights versus the uh, the Terror Blade. It was something that we like run in pubs and stuff. And the upside, sure, you can bully him out of lane, especially if you're like sniping and you don't have good vision in the lane, which they don't right now for the Radiant. They, they don't really know where the Coddle's going to be angling from because they don't have a ward in the lane. We used to see this a lot. Like, kind of like right where Jabs is standing now, you'd often put an Observer ward to watch yeah. where they went, like, left and right and stuff like that um, after pushing in the wave so you had an idea where the next angled shot was coming from. But it's a Terror Blade, so you'll likely just see him go to the jungle early, and that's one of the benefits of this hero overall, right? Yeah, and in the meantime, you sort of at least have a little bit of a, a helping hand coming from... Hyde, who is, uh, you know, going to be able to consistently give out that regen, um, takes Divine Favor even first. So not opting to pick up one of those creeps, wants to just make sure that the Terror Blade uh, doesn't get into sort of danger zone as far as HP is concerned. I love one it feels so bad, though. Yeah, it really isn't good. <laughs> it feels terrible, but yeah, no other real options, it seems. One of the things that we did see in the last game that I didn't talk about was Late game, Chen picked up one of the uh, heal tree, the uh, heal creeps, mm -hmm. and it's the 15% extra health regen application. Yeah. So you're even getting that out of those those creeps as well. Such a value for the those like, mid game. Games. Well, as the bottom lane devolves into the exact same thing they did last game, it's splitting the lane. Uh, right. we, we take a look up top here. Is uh, a little bit of that level two bully onto Zephyr, right? Still so level one. So Dubu finds his moment to really pressure. Put the damage in the end. Won't get the kill, and now the turn. Cool. Take a nice little chunk of damage there, keeps the punishment on, but won't be able to find the kill. You know, this is the thing. Like, it, for all the teams that are out there that haven't been playing against Fnatic, that dual offlane, it just causes so many issues. Like, I, I want to go through and study how they do the lane pulls, what they do in different situations, because it feels like they've just worked out something perfectly for Fnatic. Yeah, it seems like Jabs and DJ pretty much always get off to a good start. Right, including last game, even though they lost. But uh, up top, Dubu Courier just now arriving. He needs to really make sure he doesn't lose this, by the way, with how much regen's on Radiant's it. But he does manage to secure it there. So no uh, no forward vision there from Zephyr. I think trying to catch those Courier kills. And now they're going to regen back up and continue to bully back these two heroes. And Tomato uh, off to a totally fine start. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the counter dun, dun, dun. has been happening. Dude. <laughs> It, it, this is what you're talking about. And yeah. This is why so many people would just ban out the Necro against the Ember. It's still strong. Yeah, clearly still has a lot of benefits. I mean, you can see he's gone for two points in the Flame Guard, so he runs in, he's burning, he's doing his thing. He's also still just uh, having to deal with the uh, the Harp Stopper Aura the entire time. And he's going to come on in Prial. There's a whole camp there. Makoto does not want to give that one up. Gets it all built down low, and then they finish it off. Is up top. Ah, thanks for the help. KP being brought down low as well as Zephyr, but they'll throw out the Arctic Burn, try and get some extra deeps off onto Tomato, although maybe in some trouble. Zephyr won't go for any more on Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Makoto is basically playing Phantom Assassin in the mid lane. He's uh, sliding for last hits from a distance, and his brow just waves at him. So. <laughs> This is pretty much the lane right there. Brow gets the tower high five. Makoto Oof. not giving it to him, by the way. What are thoughts on that? Uh, you know, if you're feeling like this, it, it, it sort of to me shows you're feeling a little bit upset about the situation. I mean, to be fair, you did counter pick an Ember with a Necrohost. I really don't think you deserve a high five. No, definitely. Like, congrats, you bought Relic, you know? <laughs> know what I'm saying? It's another Metallic speed coming out. I like this. DJ making the long wraparound there, trying to find Hyde. And 
does spot him. Not sure what he's planning on doing here. They're just gonna walk hand in hand. <laughs> just go down the stairs together too. That was super interesting as DJ makes the long run on down back to the lane. Yeah, but is this breakup really working out for Fnatic? I feel like they're not getting that pressure on 20 Savage you might hope for, as uh, he's just in another meta right now. Oh, that's good. Shard block into the blast. Okay, yeah, that's pressure. That, that's uh, that, that's what you're looking for. That's the first blood. DJ picks it up. He took a wrong turn. Oh, he might get punished for this. There's a couple battles going on. KP up top as well as the snowball away from bottom. DJ low. And Hyde gets the finish. Can Dubu also close down? KB got to miss uphill. Yeah, that would have been enough. Yeah, I think he's good. Dang. Nicely played. <laughs> High quality miss, Micro. Not Meanwhile, micro, but. Zephyr is uh, up with some, some shenanigans here, huh? There you go. Getting that wave in that right spot. Perfect. Okay, but they got their first kill. Uh, that's desperately what they needed there because you're you're drafting this Coddle as an all player to put this pressure on, right? And then you want to get really active around the map. You want to be like running with this core Coddle and trying to just uh, get a faster tempo than last game. Like, last game even itself was pretty quick, but they were held back a bit by the Lone Druid. And Tomato not able to join a lot of those situations. That won't be the case this time. They're going to have the Coddle to enable him as well as just the fact that he can come online and, and join a bit sooner. And in the meantime, not going to join sooner, then Ryle can start to make a lot of plays around the map. Shards trying to burn through that flame guard. They're going to use the glyph now as numbers are brought in from Talon. It's six minutes, baby. Six heroes mid. This is every game. Yeah. Without fail. It's going to be a haste rune for DJ. So he's going to run down bottom. 23 Savage, only 600 HP right now. Okay, look, look at Jabs. He's right clicking. He's right clicking. He's whittling them down, you know? He's thinking about it's it. It's all part of the plan. Illuminate Blast oh, pushes yeah. him into it. Nicely done. And, well, the haste rune, it pays off. Oh, where's my easy button? Let me just slap that thing down there. <laughs> Jabs, nicely done. KP. Up top. I mean, he is taking a beating here as well. My God, Warpath. Fnatic turned up for game two. They they are stomping these lanes. Warpath hits, man. Where, did, where does HP go? It's no longer there. I mean, the, this these lanes have looked really rough for Talon. All across the board, everybody's behind. Yeah, 27 will come right back to that bottom lane. I'm sure considering jungling pretty soon here, but even the jungle won't be safe, of course, with a Caudal and a Tusk. Those are very quick rotators. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's not really anywhere to go. Like, you know, Ryle is pressuring towards mid. This tier one tower is going to take a beating, and top's already gone. I mean, Makoto is being so out behind his tier two tower, damn near. Ryle is a bully. That was his last raindrop, too. DJ Radiance hanging out in the area as Tomato comes on in, starting to take some Ancients. Did Makoto. you see that bait by Makoto? He has that ward and he pretended he couldn't see Tusk. Yeah. Well, they are still going to find a kill. And then so did Hyde. Hyde also <laughs> pretended <laughs> that he didn't know that they were there. This, yeah. this is all next level plays to set up for something huge in the future, I am sure. It's a lot of pretending. Yeah, he's very good at it. Ryle's <laughs> not going to go for anymore, but already gets the first stack up. Those Reaper Scythe kills. KP in the meantime, gone for this build that we've seen time and again out of the Brewmasters of the Urn first into Spirit Vessel. If I'm going to be honest, it's amazing this game, but I am very worried that they're not going to be getting charges that often because these fights are looking kind of rough. Dubu, though, will be punished a bit. Makoto ends up getting that final touch. Yeah, still no Scythe here either, so they can't get the punish from Makoto. He got a lot of damage from the Shadow Wave. Zephyr doesn't have another Arctic burn. There is nowhere for him to go here. Snowball, everybody get inside. Tomato, the one that claims the final kill there. That was actually close. Yeah. If he had got the roast stomp from the multiple units. Oh, it would have been nice. middle tower is under attack. Fnatic at this point, uh, even better than last game. Looking strong, but you have to keep this momentum rolling on your side. And uh, they, they should have the ability to do that. They have the Vanguard done. The boots now finished up for Tomato as well. You know, not really uh, an exciting item for a lot of heroes, but for Bristleback, back, that's a pretty big deal. As they keep this pressure around the mid tower, Scythe and 30 seconds, two Spear Vessel charges ready to go here, and Tomato has joined. So onto the tower they move, and Jabs wants to keep bullying 22 Savage, trying to slow down this comeback kid on the team of Talon. 
anything they can do to sort of throw a thorn in his side is going to be solid play. And, you know, it's nine minutes right now. They're about to lose all of their outer tier one towers. Normally, you have these heroes like Wyvern that can slow down this push, but it's just coming on too quickly right now for Fnatic. And Bryle down low. They nice. will have the dispel afterwards. That was Stunned crazy. up chasing Bryle. Where's the dispel? They got him. Is it enough damage though? Hurricane pulls him back in closer. Bryle down low for the turn, and they find him. Chen is gonna die, and with the snowball inside, he might live through that. Bryle's gain all the region in the world. They're still KP great. trying to stop it. It's not looking like it's enough. Makoto turns on them all. But Talon do not have answers. And Tomato, he's just a monstrosity. Jabs that blinding light to push back the initial split was actually crazy. It, it did so much work for them in combination with the shards to block the path. It really slowed down the initiation that they had on to Bryle. And then even the hurricane wasn't enough there too. The, the big heals, the snowball save after. The whole time, Dubu was there with Grave as well. And he was always in range. So he managed to hold that for a very long time and had a lot of trust that DJ was going to have that save. This, this game is, is kind of falling off the rails a little bit right here. Fnatic uh -huh. getting absolutely everything. They got some stuff, though. It is past 10 minutes. The Tomes have come out. That's allowed the recovery here for the Wyvern. You get a, a Tome out there or, or the Chen as well. Now five and a half. So maybe Hyde can uh, try and get into that hand of God and maybe find some turnaround potential. Makoto has a lot of work to do here. And you can see that he understands that. He's farming some rather precarious spots trying to farm these waves. Get in towards that maelstrom and DJ just hunting is sitting with Tome <laughs> and ready to dude. level Waller's punch and punch. Dude, he's watching the remnant timer. I guess he got a second one, so it doesn't matter. Oh, he ran out. There it is. Walrus punch. Can they get him, Makoto? All right, Makoto's playing yeah, a cool He's still a cover. secondary remnant, so yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, don't look now. Okay. Terrorblade has gone for no, a don't tell somewhat me interesting item. I don't belt. want to look. And is he it, is. Is it Armlet Dagon? No. I know that one. No. Oh, he's got Midas. Yeah, he's got Midas. Uh, he does manage to TP out of there, but Midas and uh, about 900 HP. I mean, can you blame him? Well, I feel like he, got he needs something big. Oh, no. Caught in again, Ryle chasing the roots. And there's Curse afterwards, a kill onto Tusk. But no, oh, the Grave is there. They can't bring him down. DJ living, but a final kill comes out from Makoto. So the Sleight of Fist. Oh, it's a tempting chase. They have the, the Spirits there from Brew, but I think they just want to wait. Wait till they're full power again, maybe with another Curse. Perhaps get a Smoke Out chance there, so. You know, th this is normally the phase of the game where if you've got a 4K gold lead at 12 minutes, it feels almost impossible. Um, and Fnatic definitely have the lineup that can sort of keep that snowball rolling, but after all the craziness that we saw last game, I do kind of wonder if, you know, maybe Talon hold out a little bit longer, use some good bruise splits if they can catch them on the unawares. But I do think it's, it's going to be tough. It's so much harder this game, in my yeah. opinion. It's going to be really tough. They don't have that same damage as well. Like, coming through with the Batrider especially was massive for them. Uh, like, what's their big damage? It'll have to be in Makoto, but he seemed to have a hard time not getting caught in these situations, especially when we hit 15 minutes and presumably we get the shard on Dubu. Yeah. Of course, I say that he's uh, just purchasing a fluffy hat, so My it might be a while <laughs> uh, until Dubu's up there with the shard. Radiant he's been group grouped up a lot this game, right? Just kind of following around, not getting a lot of solo space, not, not pushing out any, uh, any waves by himself. Nice play yeah. to get those creeps out of there. Yeah, the, the Dubu sort of modus operandi oh, look at this, like though. it's not getting gold. They're smoking at jabs. Any wards here on Zephyr? I'd love to see an OBS place in this area. There's a hard kill to get, but KB forced to pop towards him right away. Zephyr. Oh, okay. They turn, but jabs taking a beating. Moves forward, looks for the finish. They have the winner's curse, and with Terraplane moving in too, they. Well, Grave now. Chase looked for more. Stun with the Hurl Boulder, and a couple more punches. They don't get him. Jabs walking away. Oh, that clap. He thought he had him. Oh, it feels bad. And now Jabs, he's going to turn instead. Solar Bind. Run forward. KP, they're hanging on to the punch. They're waiting. The taunt. Oh, no. The Walrus Punch is finally there, but KP, they save oh, okay. the Reaper Scythe. Okay. You gotta get those stacks up, you know? Jeez. They, I mean, they spent everything. Bruce that was a good split. meta. Middle tower is yeah. yeah. It's a good move, though, I'd say. Going there, trying to find something, right? Town, they had the right idea. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, fair. You have to make desperate plays in these situations, right? We just sit back and try and farm it out. You're going to lose. So, it's true. Try and find something. Well, and on the other hand, you do have a hero that kind of can only do that farming and holding out type of dynamic with the... Uh, the old terrible. He's there. good at it, though. Uh, you he's know, that's, <laughs> that's his jam. Well, Mata's jam is just literally running at people nonstop. Fnatic go together. There's an Aghanim Scepter coming out at 14 minutes. He is so far. Well, I reckon they could uh, head towards a Roche if they wanted to at this point. That seems to be exactly where they are. I reckon. I reckon. There's a Hyde Chen jungling in, on the dire side. Very nice. Got to find that bounty rune there. And uh, it's oh look, even as the harpy scout, I forgot about her. She's still existing huh, up on that cliff. That's nice. We had one of them in uh, one of the games the other day, but yeah, not often seen. Harpy scout. Uh, Aegis onto Tomato, and if they play their cards right for Fnatic, this could be an Aegis that. Comes close to ending the game almost. Yeah, it's pretty tough to go high ground this early in the game. Uh, it's also difficult with like the first ages, so I, I assume they won't. But at the same time, right, I, I could understand a situation where Talon keep trying desperate moves and end up just like floundering around a little bit, losing their heroes. It's also a game where we're not expecting Talon to GG out early. They no. will fight to the bitter end because if they lose this, it's very likely they're getting eliminated. I believe. Yeah, it's uh, not like one thousand percent confirmed, but it is. Every win just counts as so much. DJ, stun, oh. Yeah, that one hurts. Brile, appreciating what DJ is doing there. And this is underrated aspect about Bristleback as well. A, a total siege engine on this hero. When, when you're able to just like spam nonstop, like you see with Agnum Scepter, it keeps the Warpath stacks full. And look at that big damage he hits for it. And you just wail on these towers. And if no one comes to stop you, you just keep on going. Attack. You got a tier one tower and almost full HP in that top lane. Sure, I see a couple raiding heroes up there, but frankly, my dear, <laughs> give it to him. That's good. So again we go. Like that. Three to ten, but that is not really telling the full tale of how dominant this game number two has been for Fnatic as that tier two tower is gonna drop and immediately the rotation down bottom, Fnatic will go for that tower as well. But tries to pull on in the Terrible Illusion. Mato's completely alone here, but with me, just like it's that's fine. Yeah, maybe I'm going to beat a bad fight or something here is, uh, Talon, they're just hunting for neutrals. They're, they're trying to find these items here. We've got ourselves an essence ring now for KP. Get all the tier twos that I can. Illuminate blast number one. Blinding light after. And Zephyr will dodge the second Illuminate. Yeah, no pan there. Didn't like, go for a TP or anything like that either. Heads up play. So Terrorblade has been trying to keep pace with Tomato's farm and does have a Manta style done. Again, like, you can imagine a world where these heroes start to come online, and if they're given enough time, it might actually work. And you can see that's why Makoto's keeping these lanes shoved out, even when it's back up top. His body Jets. online. Oh, no. Oh, that's a bad one. That's a big pickup up top. Oh, yeah, no. that's, a, that's a rough guy. Makoto not able to get away. Jabs absolutely wrecking. They do throw down that winner's curse, but can the rest of the creeps get here in time? Couple punches, they use the split, but Jubu right on top of him. As a save, the snowball after. It's chasing the fire panda. Moves on forward, the save, the heal. Jabs backing out. Jabs in trouble, but Jabs, he walks away. He gets so freaking low, about 40 okay, HP. Not the quad again. charge, and it's not gonna happen. No mana and KP, he's desperately just trying to finish him off. It's just a replay of the bottom fight where they attempted their gank kill on the jabs, they couldn't do it again. Push is the absolute limit, the teamwork to come in there and survive everything for my jabs. And that's all after he killed Makoto, who's trying to get this Ember somewhere where he can contest them. Listen, it's not the Terrorblade, okay? Terrorblade is still alive. Terrorblade's Midas, it's, it's, it's farming, he's going. He's trying to get to that Scotty Trent. It really is. If there's a will, there's a way. I think. Well, uh, we'll put that to the test here. 
because uh, I'm sure there is a will here, but they need this win so badly. 7k gold lead. And trying to push oh, out Makoto. those sides. Gonna perhaps run into jabs again here. Jabs just fearless. As he goes for the ulti. Uh, does not have the recall yet, oh. so. Ooh, 23 seconds. That's his motto. Also still no hex on Dubu as he runs into Makoto. Yeah, could have made a pretty big difference. Uh, shard is what you're talking about there, yeah. Yeah. And uh, BKB will be the next item for Jab. So going to get at least one defensive item before probably going for the Scythe, I would imagine. It would make a lot of sense in this game because you just need to catch. I mean, Brewmaster, Ember, and Terrorblade are all these heroes that if you don't get that perfect lockdown, something bad happens. True. So but Scythe is right. extremely good in these situations. And to the rest of his teammates, like, how are they trying to lock down this game? We've had the Lotus Orb for protection there from the Necrophos, opting for the Boots of Travel as well so they can keep the crunch on, just because Terribly can be sending out these units to push. Chen can do a similar thing, where Ida has just been, like, jungling a lot and getting some farm, catching waves out here. So uh, map mobility is going to be a way to try and shut down these annoying plays that Talon are going for at the moment. And Reaper Scythe out. They got him again. I mean, you talked about it. You talked about the strength of this as a counter, not just in the late mid stage, yeah. but even in the later mid game fighting parts. But BKB done, same timing for the Coddle and the Bristle. I guess he still got it, huh? Yeah. That old Necrophos. Still pretty good. Pretty good. Jabs forced to BKB here. Well, they don't have one of those for Terrorblade. Zephyr, also nearby, Radiant's ready to save him, but they are starting to collapse on Fnatic. DJ snowballs in, but 23 Savage does look to get out of there. Ryle in the meantime <laughs> does K not even need it. Look at KP up here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he gets the TP out. Trying to make whatever space they yep. can. All right, Jack, don't bite him. Get a sight. <laughs> Come on. Am I crazy? I feel like Scythe is so much better. I mean, I get Dagon's cheaper. Himself. He told the kill the Terrorblade illusions quickly. Make sure he doesn't farm. Yeah, that's true. That's a good bonus. Also, just kill the Terrorblade. How many times has he just been like a tiny bit of gold away from, or a tiny bit of damage away from finishing him off? The other argument against it as well is that like, it's not like he can solo kill just because he has a Hex, right? That's when Hex feels really strong, so it's uh... Dagon 5 then Hex. There you go. Well, he needs his E-Blade first. True. Yeah. At the rate they're going, it, I don't even know if he's going to be able to get to that point. I mean, he definitely is. <laughs> if this game keeps going that way, it's going to be over very quickly. This is a tough spot to be in for Talon. As they've done a lot of very good stuff, though. I they will have. say, like, they've, I'd say, died less than I would expect with, with some of these plays, particularly the way 23 Savage has been playing. Feels like he's, he's really just been... Uh, a natural at this. Up top hide, able to TP up before Brow can get there with the scythe. I do wonder. Oh, Zephyr, 23 Savage, they're going for an aggro play here with the Chen army. Interesting. They're baiting it. Interesting. Right before Scotty he TPs out. Yeah, now. Th this was looking bad. Okay. Like, this is not good. Maybe. Maybe a chance. TPs out, gets away. All right, winner's curse down. KP is uh, back to the Ancients. Unfortunately, they do have a ward here. Yeah, they can see that. And Spirit Vessel charges still sitting at a premium. There is that shard as well, of course, on Dubu now. So, all right, does he split or does he not? What do you think? All right, well, he's definitely not splitting. Oh, no, there's the Hex. The nice. stun, and he is going to go down. I don't know if he's actually gotten a Spirit Vessel charge because they only have three kills. The game just has not gone the way that Talon envisioned it. But they know what their potential win condition is, buying time Ancient. for this Terrorblade to come online. And then destroying the enemy Ancient. That's the one. Yeah. Scotty is done for Terrorblade. And he looks to be going for Shadowblade next, actually. That's DJ, actually. Uh, I like 20 times going Shadowblade. OK. Yeah. Seems like a good idea. Sounds nifty. Try and find something, right? Get the Silver Edge for the Bristle. We got our necessities here. And as you said, DJ also going for it here. So we got Come two heroes opting for that item, do we? I guess the big play that you have to do is just hope you can find like a curse on Coddle or something. Yeah. 
And if you can manage that, then the lack of BKB might not be as bad well, for TB. Here's the thing. Hit me you up. You see. Winter Wyvern versus Bristle, okay? Yeah. When Bristle gets the Agonims, okay. all he does is spam the whole game. Right. Okay, so you're not going to catch some curse where he's low Warpath stacks. That is true. Once you get the Aghanim, so it's actually a terrible item versus one. No, I'm just kidding. I, so I, very good versus Wyvern. But hey, at least he'll be in full damage when the curse happens, even if the Wyvern's initiated, which true. wouldn't happen. No. No, that's, uh, that's not what probably is going to be happening here. And we got some hairball action, too. Look out. Even more ways for him to be at top stacks. Do need to be wary here. Jab, smoke breaks. DJ does it too. Hide, spotted, gonna get punched. And we'll see if the Dagon comes out. Doesn't look like it. Or will they use the Reaper Scythe on that one? The other thing that's pretty annoying to deal with is for Terrorblade, uh, remember, a poison touch just kills all of his illusions. Dagon, jump through, dead. Yeah, that was one of the more interesting parts about the, uh, the Shard on Dazzle, right? Just being able to clear all those out. Pretty yeah. Cool. As Tomato going to hit his way onto the tier 3 tower, feeling very confident with four minutes left on this Aegis, that it is time to go. Teammates nowhere to be seen, but uh, no real worries missing for Tomato. They do not have a repositioning ability unless they're going to go get themselves a lot of birds, and we can hurricane them <laughs> back to the tier 4s. The dream. Yes. Might be what we need at this point. And Aghanim Scepter is still so far away for KP, he's going to end up selling a Spirit Vessel. Yeah, probably. I feel, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, it might happen. It's, it was pretend that was never there. It's it's a tough one. I mean, this game, it's just... When, when this type of a lineup starts off like this, this is just kind of rough to recover from. 18 to 3. Tomato still feeling confident, standing up front and center. All the heals behind him. Jabs, spamming out the Illuminates, dealing 500 damage a hit. And big heals on Tomato as well. And 23 Savage, just not really anything he can do. They find KP off in the woods. He just wants to get home to help his team with the push. It's not going to happen. They can't get the defense in time. That is going to be a Metamorphosis used but not really anything done afterwards. KP has reached uh, James Bond status. That is true. Yeah. Zero uh, kills, zero assists, and seven deaths. It's, it's, it's hard. Ryle turned upon, walking forward. That Sunder, that was, that was not enough. And meanwhile, Silence throws on out that hairball, doing some damage, but all of the illusions dead by Dubu. Oh, God, that shard really hurts Terrorblade a lot. Bit of an issue. That's a tough one. Mid tower gone, mid racks gone, and I don't think Fnatic are leaving. I don't know if they have enough damage here, Trent. But he's running out of mana. I, is, oh, actually, a coddle. He, he shocked himself. Yeah. Jeff's like, you, you're after. Tomato continues to take a bit of a beating. The heals coming out soon, though. Both from Bryle, from Coddle, and from Dazzle. Yeah, trying to juice this guy back up here. And meanwhile, they, they do not have 23 Savage. He is way up top at the moment. Yeah, pushing out those other lanes. Silence now. On to the Ember. Reaper's Scythe is there, oh and I mean, Ember is dead. He had a PKB. Yeah, he, he did. He thought he was going to live through it. He's like, I can't use it right now. It's just it's not going to work out if I do. I, I don't want to pop it before this age is spent. And now Tomato's just waving and saying, what are you guys going to do now? And no buybacks. Oh, look at this. Look at this. They're coming back. They want to Savage. They want to make sure he can't TP. One last chance. They're hoping. Bryle there right next to Tomato as they keep the chase down. 23 Savage in the woods is chased and doesn't have a place to go. He's so sad. DJ is right there nearby, slowly, steadily whittling him down. The Dagon is out and, well, DJ right on top. They dodge away though, okay. Oh, no. oh but Bryle shows up afterwards. Disarm tries to TP. No, it's not gonna be enough. Godlike Bryle as Terrorblade falls. He does have buyback, but I mean, we all see the way this game is going, Trent. Yeah, and uh, Tomato still has age just another 40 seconds here. I think at this point they're probably willing to, uh, to knock that off him. It is indeed going to be claimed, but two full lanes of Raxes. 
Three to 21. Will it happen? 23 Savage buying back to join the fray. KP just wants to get an ulti off. Oh my god, are they really backing to farm? What are you guys doing? Hey, there's no more Aegis. That's true. Well, That's hey, true. You know. Wait for next Aegis. Everyone's back alive. Radiant, they're going to smoke out Talon. They want this. Yeah, they take a nice little Illuminate Blast, but Talon All fighting right. until the very bitter end. All right, we got eggs on Zephyr. We saw the damage it was doing to this Bristleback, All right? Dagon, level four. They need to find somebody. Again, for Talon, this is everything. This is their tournament life. Oh, they ran. They didn't engage. Tomato, it's too hard to take that fight, it feels like. But no more Aegis. DJ caught for a moment. Starting to build up some stacks. 23 Savage chasing forward, looking for the kill, and they find it. They take down one, but can they get any more? 23 Savage Sunder. able to survive. Oh. Where's the Sunder? He gets it on the illusion, stand alive just barely. Winner's curse, now on a cuddle. Jabs in trouble, and can they bring him down? Oh my god. The turn. Makoto. The damage. And they do it. Dubu, Dubu almost dead. Ryle in the meantime, Chase with Zephyr on top Bra of him. Bra the strength of Talon. Let none say that they can't do it. Oh my god, they left Tomato alone, lifted him in the air for a nice little jaunt, but now they're coming on home. The chickens are coming home to roost, Trent. Will they be able to find themselves a dinner? Tomato TP's away, and just barely able to get Okay, out of there. so the way they play this fight is pretty damn genius. Oh, now they have a Wraith Pack Aura, too. Ooh. Okay. That could not have gone much better for them, right? Pretty much everything that you need on that checklist of stupid things that they need to win a fight happens. They catch DJ first, <laughs> all by his long, his long time isolated. That means he's not snowball saving anyone. So that's no, save number one, down, right? Then we go over here. The Dagon attempt with the kill of the Scythe. They don't get it. That's check number two, a whiffed Scythe. They need that into a Sunder, plus a curse on two heroes. Actually managed to get it while the control from KP in the back is keeping the other heroes busy. Then they somehow get jabbed to that last hit. I can't believe he died there. That was so fortunate for them. Then while controlling Tomato, they kill Dubu. Just like he said in the draft, this idea of the Brewmaster to be there to toss up the burst of that comes to fruition here 30 minutes into the game when they're down 20k and they find themselves a fight win. This is unbelievable. I, I can't believe that they actually managed to win that fight. And now we're going to look back into the, the real game where we're sitting um, because the graph, I mean, again, not a huge switch over, but it was at 0%. 99, there's a chance. Where there's a will, there's a way, Trent. We found that will. It took a while. I like how it went all the way up to 2%, and they were like, nah. You <laughs> yeah, know? For a second there. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It's more than zero. And uh, part of the reason was none of those heroes had buyback, and part of the reason for that was because there was still a tier 1 tower left alive. But... I don't know if I've ever seen a comeback bigger than this, if Talon could somehow manage to make it happen, but could you imagine? It, it is pretty insane to see a uh, 5 here wipe at this point. So I guess uh, KP died when we watched all that, huh? Yeah, he, he, he went might, down. He, He's back up, though. Okay. He got abyssaled and then into a walrus punch. So there are some pretty terrifying items here. We, I mean, we have Does overwhelming blink into abyssal on Tomato. Does he sell the spirit vessels? He finally got charges. Four of them. Dude, oh, it must be so tempting. I know. Uh, if you wanted to. Nah, he he can't. I don't think he can do it at this point. You need it. Everything possible. They got to get it. And Roche respawning in a couple of seconds here. Still 19k gold lead. He could sell his arcade. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, how many fights do they really need to win to win this game? And. I feel like it's like two or three still, but... Are you talking about Talon? Yeah. I feel like it's like six. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like, All right. They need okay. to do that a lot. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> don't right. don't get your hopes up here. All right. Now, mind you, if there's like buybacks and stuff and it's like total, oh, yeah. complete oh, five-hero wipe disasters again, maybe just like three. Okay. But normal, even impressive kind of amazing fights, they, they still need so many. And well, now we just stack it up a little bit more here. Willow Wisp. That's where we went, huh? Talon. They run into them and they find their target. Makoto off the gate, but the hand of God is there. The turn. Trying to take down DJ. It's not quite enough. Winner's Curse will not stop Tomato for long as Zephyr is dead. Buys back immediately afterwards. Willow Wisp. Trying to take it down. Reaper's Scythe. Not quite enough damage. Hex the wall. The illusion's gone sunder. It comes out in time to keep him alive a little bit longer. Cold Embrace, 23 Savage still standing tall, but does he have the damage he needs? Silver Edge hides him for the moment, turns now on to Jabs, Jabs with the Grave is there. KP trying to chase, he's been chasing him all game, but it's not gonna be enough. 
They can't find the kill. They're so low. Oh, they wanted it, but it's not going to be there. Makoto? But maybe Makoto with the cleanup. Can he find them all? Good silence. They buy back now on the Necrophos. Makoto living, rooting, trying to get away, but one more punch is going to do him in as the Ember will finally be slain. Buyback is there for Makoto to get back into this one if he wants to. There was a buyback spent as well from Brile. So th this is that long road of, of some potential here for Talon if they can find these skills. But obviously at this point, it's, uh, it requires something amazing, so something incredibly ridiculous, such as that last five-hero wipe that they managed to find. And now it's Brile, the one who did just buy back in the base. Okay. And Tomato moves in there. A couple more punches, Hyde is low, but the mech is out. Trying to walk away. Snowball after. And the Hex is there. Still no Metamorphosis. They buy back on the Chen. And with KP back up, just go to Wisp. They're actually okay for now. It's so hard for them to play these fights. Well, the Wisp is out. I mean, in the fight near the, the Tier 2 mid, well, at least where it would have been, uh, Tormenti Savage barely got to play. He, he was just will o -wisp over and over and over again. Don't look now, but he disassembled his yep. arcanes. He sold them. I love that. Just got to get a little bit more gold. <laughs> KB has the Aghanim. So we're going to have two splits now, up and available. And this is going to give him a lot more options in terms of controlling these supports in the back as well as Tomato. If you can make it work somehow on Talon, this would be the stuff of legends. But for the moment, I mean, it's, it just feels like an insurmountable hill to try and climb. Granted, buyback status coming back off cooldown for Terrorblade has still a, a long way to go in terms of how big his inventory can get on 23 Savage. Also, the levels can start to become a bit of an issue uh, as the, the game goes on. How about this uh, next round of neutral items? If they uh, could get out there, you know, got to complete the ones they have first, but there's about to be 37 minutes here. Radiance uh, smoke. Has Looking been to see if someone's coming to their high ground. The defensive smoke. An unusual tool. True. Make Radiance sure that they don't just get jumped on by the bristleback at the start. They start it, that. find it. Makoto dead. And yeah, okay, they get jumped on by the bristleback at the start. He is broken. Has to back away. 23 Savage. As they retreat for the moment, they have a lift up onto Dubu, but that's the end of it. So Makoto dead. Metamorphosis used. And the Chen gone. You can see, Fnatic, how important this is, wanting to secure that upper bracket status for themselves. And again, this is a team that's sort of on the verge of, you know, being able to ensure that they're going to TI. Will it happen? Tomato, they turn. Oh, he didn't get the break onto him, though. Went too early, hexed and gone. And with that, they called GG Talon. We knew it was coming, but there was a moment there where it could have been something else. Fnatic take the second game, it's another 1-1 one, one series. They just keep doing it. Fnatic, the 1-1s. One, such, such an impressive team as well. And again, bouncing back after a loss in game one of uh, where they're just basically playing the same strat again, but a little bit more coordinated, a few more options there. Right. Very impressive. I, uh, I felt like there were so many moments in that one where it was just like, Talon, none of the draft went the way that they hoped it would after the laning stage, and they were just never able to recover. Mm -hmm. um, but man, that leaves us in some some sort of hazy areas as far as what the actual brackets are looking like. There's still yep. one more day of Group A action that needs mm -hmm. to be played, and we'll figure out what the all the different permutations are. We already know that there's no tiebreakers in Group B at the very least. True. That's all set in stone. You can check that out. I'm sure on the mainstream they're going to be discussing that as well. Uh, but we got options here on, on Group A. So who knows where that's going to go? Yeah, who knows what's going to happen? You know who knows? Who? The people that are watching this tomorrow in the future. That could be you. Uh, more action to come uh, in the next couple of days. Arlington Major going to continue on from all of us. Hope you had Thanks. a wonderful Thanks one. Thanks for watching, Dota. It's the best. We love you all. Thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Games are great.